watching? Looks like there's one watching. It's probably me. Jeep. Jeep even. How you doing? What's going on? Justin? Is your name Justin? Just Tin Man, Justin, Pam, Garth, how you doing? Casey, Joe, how y'all doing tonight? Okay, Jeep, I kind of thought so. Grace, how you doing? Peggy, Linda, how are you? How is everyone? Doing well? Okay, good. Molly, how you doing? Good to see you. How are you all doing? It's good to see you. You haven't seen me in a while. Too, too uh, cold in Kentucky, is it? Well, Garth, when I was out on the ice there on Wednesday fishing, dude. Oh, Pam, did you watch that, um, uh, my fish fry? It was cold getting that fish, I'll tell you. But once we were in the hut, it was real warm. Uh, I'm good, Donna. Yeah, staying warm. You can see I'm in a t-shirt here, right? So, uh, not bad. Secret, there you are. Good. Good, I'm all right. But I have been taking a break. Call me Teddy. Okay, Teddy. We will. How you doing? Yeah, we've hardly had any snow at all here. Uh, we still got uh, bare, uh, like if I look out the window over here, I can see uh, see the grass. There's some snow, but the, you can see the grass, which is strange, strange for Canada here, you know. Strange. Being in the minus thirds up here in the north. Where are you at, Donna? Roughly. I'm good, Teddy. Uh, you know. It's been winter, and you know what? To be to be honest with you, I, I've been taking a break uh, from my YouTube channel, and like I needed to put on a full, uh, put on all the binders, all the breaks. I had to just stop and take a break. There's Scrappy Cat. Oh, it's Thunder Bay ish. Okay, cool. Yeah, oh yeah, minus thirty up there. All right. Uh, so Donna, can you uh, translate that, or anybody in the chat? translate what minus 30 Celsius is to uh, Fahrenheit for our American brothers and sisters, please. That would be wonderful. How you doing, Mike? It's good to see you here. Oh, Joe says it's like minus 18 uh, Fahrenheit. Okay. There you are, Stuart. How are you? Uh, see Stuart here in the chat. Uh, he and I were just uh, taking a walk over in um, uh, Osaka, Japan. There's a, another YouTuber out there who just, all he does is he takes walks around uh, Osaka, Japan. Harvey was there too, actually. Harvey Black here in the chat. We were all over there. Hey, Cashew. Uh, Garth, yeah, I have been just kind of modding lately, and to be honest with you, um, some of those channels I've been moderating on, I haven't even been saying hello. I've just been sitting back and doing the mod thing. I just needed to take a full step back and uh, take a big old break. You know what I mean? Hey, Jeff, how you doing? Chilly Minnesota. Well, stay warm, Jeff. It's cool up here, too. Hey, Melissa. Siri says uh, minus 22 F. Woo, daddy, that's cool. It's cold. Yeah, I'll tell you guys. Like, I think we had a, I think we had a high of minus 14 here today. And I'm just on the uh, shore of Lake Ontario. So that's real cold for, for this area. It does get colder, but um, it's, it's the coldest it's been this winter. Balmy minus 17. Isn't that nice? 
Do you know what, Donna? It, it would have been really nice uh, on Wednesday. Uh, Wednesday, uh, I was out on the lake fishing with my buddy Dan, and uh, it was like uh, minus 15 Celsius or sort of 5 uh, Fahrenheit that morning when I woke up. And when we got out on the lake, the sun was up, and the sun, yeah, sun was out. It was great. But the wind, if there were no wind, it would have been absolutely gorgeous. But I'll tell you, once uh, once we got in the hut, sat in there for a little while, uh, we could take our jackets off and, you know, just hang out, no... Uh, like in t-shirts if we wanted to. It was it was pretty cool. And the fish were on. We were pulling them out one after the other. It was great. Yeah, the sun sure is nice, especially come here this time of year, right? Oh, I hear you on that, Julie. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, it's supposed to be uh, supposed to be cold. So, well, you know, the vortex is on us, right? Hey, Becky. No, Scrappy, we didn't even have a little fire uh, inside the hut. Now, I have been in fish huts where uh, you know we've run a little Coleman stove or something like that for a bit of heat, but uh, not so much. Uh, no, we didn't. We didn't have to. And to be honest, in this hut, there was no room for it. You know. It was just uh, enough room for a couple of chairs, our uh, little bag with some fishing rods in it, and, uh, and you know, of course, the hole in the ice, right? Phoebe Ratcliffe, I, I saw your uh, comments on, I think, two other videos uh, that you made, and I haven't had a chance to get back to them, uh, but hello, how are you, and welcome. What's up? We're just uh, here to talk about um, the importance in finding balance, all right? Linda, how are you? Good to see you and welcome. Yeah, Joe, you know what I mean? Like, uh, okay, uh, for me anyways, you know, it's different for everybody and, and you know, like how you approach things and, and stuff like that. Or like for, you, for you, a lot of you guys, you know, I moderate on a ton of different places, big channels, small channels, doesn't matter. Linda, you like that? You like that shirt? That was a gift from my uh, children for Christmas uh, a few years back. And, to be honest with you, suits me to a T because I am extraordinarily polite. But, yeah, I had been, um, I had been moderating so hard and running at my channel so hard uh, for, like, a year straight. And, uh, you know, it was just... It was all getting too much, you know. Uh, like, I love to support other channels, small channels. You guys know this. Um, and so you support them and you try to follow them. And it kept me up all hours. And it was starting to consume all my time. And, uh, you know, I came to a, a realization. Hey, Lori, are you at uh, Mom's yet? Prepper studying, how you doing? I came to a realization that it's like this is consuming all my time, and um, I'm beginning to neglect other things. So I had to put a full on brakes on there. Not so remote, Alaska. Welcome. Now, if anybody wants to talk about cold, please ask not so remote, Alaska, uh, what the temperature is up there. Silhouette Park Farm. There you are. How you doing, Bibby? Wait a second. That's not Bibby. That's Adam and Nettie. And it's probably 30 degrees down there. You've been out in the boat fishing. Nice. Nice. That's awesome. I hope you had a fantastic day. It wasn't too hot. S. Moore. How you doing? Welcome. Okay, so Prepper Stedding made a video. All right, and you posted it to YouTube? That means Prepper Stedding has a channel. That means one of my moderators needs to post it. 
We, we know how this is done here. We know how this is done. Great Lakes, how you doing? 35 Celsius, goodness gracious. Okay, Silhouette Park. All right. Uh, there's someone here in the chat uh, was just saying it's minus, almost minus, minus 35 Celsius up in Northern Ontario here, okay? So you have a, uh, a 70 degree Celsius difference but, uh, just in the chat here from uh, Silhouette Park Farm down in Australia over to uh, Northern Ontario. A heat wave of 15, okay. Ugly even, welcome. Donna, how you doing? Uh, uh, big bee preps, yes, that was a, a perch we were catching. And I believe uh, they're called yellow perch. Uh, but, but they're kind of a striped type thing. Uh, very, very nice meat. I did the uh, fish fry tonight on it, and the eating was freaking fantastic. Oh, it was amazing. And that tartar sauce, if, if you see the uh, tartar sauce I made in that video, it's uh, outstanding. Hey, whiskey woman. Bullfrog, there you are. Oh, dude. Yeah, dillweed, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If anybody doesn't know uh, Bullfrog uh, Swamp Homestead, go give them a look as well. Lost, there you are. Yeah, uh, the, the fish was amazing. It was amazing. Yeah, if you try that tartar sauce, you'll never, ever buy it again. Outside in a t-shirt at 15 uh, Fahrenheit. Well, good for you. Uh, Laurie, you're at your parents. Okay, that's good to hear. I'm glad you're there well and safe. Do you have a flea bag on your head? Thirty-five, yeah, that is warm, isn't it? Hey, Brett. Uh, see, Broussard uh, Homestead is here, uh, calling in from the firehouse. Welcome, Brett. It's good to see you. Southern Bell, there you are. Is in shorts during the walks earlier. Oh yeah, dillweed is in my preps as well. I, I I love dillweed. I keep tons of it around. Well, not metric or, or imperial tons of it, but I keep a lot of it around. It's probably the biggest uh, herb I have in in my uh, in my spice uh, spice cupboard. Like I got bags and bags and bags of it because I use it for a lot of things. It's very very versatile, and it's extremely good for you. So yeah, I just wanted to, to jump up and uh, talk about the uh, the importance of taking breaks and, and stepping back and finding balance. You know, we can't let uh, we can't let certain aspects of our lives dominate other aspects of our lives to a point where it creates an imbalance, where you're neglecting certain areas or anything like that. So. So what I had to do, and what I wanted to do, I, I wanted to take a break this winter anyways, um, just because there's some things that I want to do and, and uh, pay a little bit more attention to, concentrate on some more learning and education. Um, so I wanted to take a break for that. Um, but I, I found not, on, not only did I need a break to do that, but I needed a break just to step back and have a little bit of a reset. You know what I mean? Take a little bit of me time and, uh, you know, reorganize, regroup, get my brain back to even. Is any anyone concerned about the way things are going with the country? All right, well, seeing as your name is South Florida, I'm sure you're talking about uh, the United States of America. Um, I'm worried about the globe. 
Jandera, you like that? Give it a try. And thank you. Appreciate that. Welcome, by the way. Uh, Tyler's going live to play uh, Prepper uh, Jeopardy. Maybe uh, you can plug him in the crowd. Well, you know what? Lost product. You have a wrench. Why don't you put up uh, the link to uh, his his uh, channel? I know he changed his channel name. Lost. Uh, so if you could help us out with that, that would be fantastic. Dillweed was another name for dumbass. <laughs> No, no, no. Let let that one go. That that's okay. That's all right. I'll uh, I'll allow that. As a matter of fact, uh, I'll pin the message. There we go. Oh, Canada's definitely going down the flusher. Oh, it was a great fish dinner, the Patriot. It was delicious. Absolutely delicious. Now, I usually just have mine with a little bit of lemon. Uh, but sometimes, like, I, I like a, uh, a tartar sauce when, um, you know, especially for, like, uh, if you do a beer batter on a, a fish, something like that, like an English-style fish and chips. I love some tartar sauce on that. So I thought I'd make, uh, make some up for that... Um, perch that I made there and it was it was fantastic absolutely wonderful give it a whirl you'll never buy um, tartar sauce again so do we have a link to Tyler lost or Looking for the lost product. Uh, okay, so the lost product is saying uh, Tyler Woods Bushcraft, sorry, Tyler Wood Bushcraft is going live to do a, a prepper Jeopardy, which is always fun. It's just a fun evening, relaxed, and you know, it's a good chill time and a bit of a good time to test your prepping knowledge. Um, but I don't happen to see a link to. Uh, his new channel, because I think he changed his name. Correct me if I'm wrong, Lost. Please, if you would. Tyler is now camping adventures. Harvey, could you uh, hammer up a link for that, please? That would be wonderful. Yeah, he did recently change his name, and he's been going through a bit of stuff, and, you know, uh, you know, God bless him. Hope he uh, works well through it. Um, you know, it's not always easy when people are, are trying to work through things. So if we can have their back, there's Les. Hello, hello. There you are. Welcome, Les. How you doing? Camping adventures. Yes, yes. Thank you. Awesome. You guys, you guys rock. Great. That's awesome. Yeah, so that's probably where I'm going to head uh, once we're uh, done this live stream. I hadn't planned on a live stream, and uh, you guys know I don't typically do Friday live streams. So, uh, S. Moore? All right. Uh, S. Moore is asking for uh, anyone who prays to uh, keep them in their prayers uh, to help heal their back pain. So, uh, consider that done as more, at least on my part. I will so. I, I think it showed, Lost. How you been doing anyways, Les? What are you up to? I haven't seen much from you ex besides from last weekend when you and Regan were, uh, you know, cutting up. Look at the prayers here coming. Isn't that nice? There you go, Esmore. Lots of prayers coming to you. You on your way, Bell? It was great to see you. Always great to see you. Stay well and safe. And I'm sure you'll be warm where you are, so. Nerd even. 
Nerd. I'm sorry to hear that, Joni. Um, very, very sorry. My condolences. Look at you, Harvey. You, you, oh, look at you. You're just going on it. All right. All my other moderators, they need to get on that now, too. Let's get some love happening. Link it up, dudes. You guys know the ones. Hey, how about... Um, let's keep... Uh, there's a couple of channels. There are three, four channels I want to keep in mind. Okay, thanks, Bell. Uh, I'll have a look. Uh, I haven't I haven't had a chance to see it yet. I posted it, and then I went right over to Ed's and uh, been moderating, so I haven't had a chance to look at it. But I appreciate that. I appreciate you, and I will go have a look. Oh, that's a good one, Harvey. Really, nerd? <laughs> now you're just being an a-hole. Not an a-hole, but you know what I mean. Now you're just cutting it up. Now you're just having... Bullfrog, what are you doing, man? Holy crap. Thank you, man. I appreciate that super chat. Wow. Hey, seeing as we're on that topic, why don't we see a link for Bullfrog? All right. How, see how that works? Not that you need to give a donation to have your, your channel uh, link posted here. Not, not at all. That's not the way this works. Um... But there is a few channels that I would like to uh, continue to shout out and hold up. Um, one of those would be uh, From Kate's Kitchen. Hey, Christy. Welcome. Uh, no, I don't. We don't do sweet tea up here, uh, Phoebe. Um, and my years of whiskey are well behind me. However, I do make my own rum. And this is some uh, rum and ginger ale with uh, ice in it. Native and Diva. There's a nice one, nerd. Look at you guys go. Yeah, from Kate's Kitchen. That'd be a great one. Beautiful, Harvey. Okay. Now, there's another channel that I love, and that's Sean in Alaska. He's not prepping. He's not off-gridding. He's not homesteading. He's just kind of all of it. He's Sean in Alaska on a chunk of land, living in a trailer. And he's looking to build his, uh, you know, his home, and this and that on there, so. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Jandera, yeah. Uh, Dusty Data, that's another one. Absolutely, yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Well, we've raided so many wonderful, uh, wonderful uh, houses and households. And uh, Klingon, a uh, princess. Uh, uh, I'm not sure Ed is here. Homestead Oz, there you are. Wow. There's another channel we can see a link to. Absolutely. All right. Now, there's a really tiny one. Uh, Southernmost, welcome. Hello, hello. Good to see you. Yeah, I love Sean in Alaska. He's not specific about prepping or anything like this. He's just a guy up in Alaska just trying to live. Uh, hang on a second. Wait a second. Yeah. Somebody allow that? I don't know. Uh, uh, someone post a Northern Girl Hobbies link. Uh, thank you, Bullfrog. For some reason, we can't see that, or maybe if it can be seen, I'm not sure. But uh, Northern Girl Hobbies, yeah, that's another good one. We need to hold that girl up. But there's a brand new channel, guys, and they're tiny, tiny, tiny. And I, I just kind of want to give them a shout-out. I, uh, I looked at their channel a few weeks ago. A uh, very, very small channel. I think they had nine subscribers on there, and I think I was their tenth subscriber um and i think they're out on the uh over toward the east coast of canada uh it's a very small uh channel called uh honey badger homestead now their their videos are uh not great 
That's okay, Les. You do what you need to do. You say hi to Teresa for us, okay? Hope you guys are both well. Honey Badger Homestead, okay? Now, I, I checked out a bunch of their videos, and to be honest with you, the sound quality wasn't great. It was, like, really quiet, so you had to turn it up a bunch and stuff like that. Um, but the content is fantastic. Uh, really, really good content, and uh, I think, uh, you know, there would be an interesting channel to follow because they're, they're a young family just getting started with homesteading. Uh, up here in Canada so you know we have their whole adventure to watch and and their entire journey to hold them up so so yeah honey badger homestead if one of my awesome blue moderators could uh, could do that hickory crop there you are honey badgers wait a second we were just talking about you there's Honey Badgers in the homestead, uh, Honey Badgers Homestead in the chat, guys. Why don't you give them a nice hello? We're just talking about you trying to uh, bust up a link to uh, share your channel out, Honey Badgers. So, and we were talking about the volume uh, on, on your, your videos, but that's uh, something you'll work toward. That's great. It's good to see you in here. Ava, welcome. Nerd even. Well, I've been taking a break, brother. You see the title of this? It's about finding balance, right? Oh, well, thanks, Oss. I appreciate that. Appreciate that so much. And I did need a break. I really, really did. I had to totally take a step back, Janny D even. And uh, just to, to regroup, do some uh, personal education for my furthering uh, of myself with, uh, oh, we're getting raided. Who is it? Who is it? Who's doing this? Is that 101? That's got to be 101. Yeah. Yeah. There's 101. All right. Beautiful. Let the love shine on. Thanks, 101. I appreciate that. Look at this. Love you guys. I'm not even going to try responding to any of that. I know how it goes. Just goes, wee! Look at you guys go. All right. Well, that's my cue. I gotta have a break right here. Look at you guys go. Look at the good work you're doing, 101. Look at the good work. Good to see you. And thank you. I appreciate this room raid. Uh, <laughs> this is great. Look at it go. Wee! Look at you guys go! Wow! Man, you guys are getting good at this. All right, you guys obviously have some practice here now. Yeah, man, you guys must have a good few room room raids under your belt. This is wicked. Wicked awesome. Look at the love. Look at this love. Hey, man, we're here sharing out uh, channel links and stuff, too. You know what? Hold up, hold up the smaller channels. Hold up your brother and your sister. That's what we talk about here, right? And so we're talking about the positivity of taking breaks and, and uh, finding balance. So, um, you know what? There's a, a big bunch of love that helps swing the weights of balance. That is freaking fantastic. Love you, brother. I wish I could see everybody in there. You know, it's just, it just goes too fast. You got to kind of throw your hands up and say, meh, all right, let it roll. Love it. I think 101 um, called the, for the rally of the troops there, guys. I thought I saw that. Uh, I could be mistaken. If that's not the case, you know, uh, follow your leader there. So it's his raid. Comrade, there you are. I see you. Eric, I see you in there. Retreat. There's the retreat button. Yeah, I see it. I usually use a. A different word, but yeah, retreat. Yeah, there he goes. All right, go on back to 101 there, guys. Uh, 101's calling you for for you to go back home. I, no, I'm not saying go away. 
<laughs> I'm just saying he he's saying this raid is done. <laughs> Thanks, one on one. I appreciate that. That was beautiful. You guys rock. Thanks everyone uh, from one on one for coming uh, coming over and just uh, putting some uh, positivity on our Friday night here. You guys rock. Wow, look at you guys. Thanks so much, uh, Hawk uh, Mars, and appreciate that uh, super chat. Thanks so much. Look at you guys. Eric the Red. Look at you guys. Wow. Very, very nice. That was awesome. Yeah, I got, uh, I totally got, <laughs> hey, so uh, I totally got raided. You were here when I got raided. This is cool. Thanks so much, guys. That was freaking awesome. Now I know how it feels uh, to be raided. Like the first time I got raided uh, by, uh, it was Montagraph on Christmas Eve. It blew my mind and I didn't even know what to think. You know what I mean? So I, I didn't really get it. But then I started, uh, uh, much love to you, brother. I appreciate it. Yeah. No, no, no. Keep doing it. Yeah. That's the way to do it. Nice job, man. I appreciate it. Thank you. 101, yeah. If anyone in my chat doesn't know uh, Prepping 101, um, if one of my moderators could please put up the link to his channel, that would be fantastic. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah, so now I know I really get the uh, concept of what it feels like to be on the receiving end of a raid because I've been mostly on the giving end of it, and that's that's awesome. And 101, it's good to see you uh, doing uh, doing raids like that and holding up your brother and your sister. That's awesome. Sixty-three times. That's it, Harvey. You're slacking. Oh no, no, I know. There's just certain things that are are held for for review or whatever. I I totally get it. Totally get it. Uh, thank you, Prepper Nerd. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, if you guys don't know Prepping 101, anybody in my chat, go check him out. Um, he's doing some uh, some good work over there, okay? Sheila, there you are. Isn't that nice? Wow. Wow. That was awesome. Who set that up? Who, who suggested that? All right, now, who was it? Who was it? It doesn't even matter who it was, you know? When we do raids, somebody suggested it in the chat, and and we go, right? And if we get a jerk on the other end, well, we can't always predict that. But if we get a good guy, then woo, you know? Uh, especially if it boosts their... Uh, I'll show that. Uh, all right, somebody else just got that. Thank you. Thank you uh, so much, uh, Tina Rather. I appreciate that. Ramona Perez, welcome and thank you. Look at that, the love is still going. Wow. Oh yeah, if anybody doesn't know Hickory Croft Farm, look at what they're doing, guys. That's another channel I want to hold up. Pinball, there you are. I'm in, we're in the middle of a raid here. I'm, I'm in the middle of being raided by 101. <laughs> if anybody doesn't know Pinball Preparedness, Please put the link up for him, that good sir. I hope you're well, and uh, you and Mrs. Pinball are well and warm this evening. It's cold up here, Pinball. Yeah, yeah, we got a, totally got raided by 101, which was fantastic. It was great. We were here talking about uh, finding the balance. Yeah, totally fun. We're sitting here talking about finding the balance in, in uh, you know, between life and YouTube and prepping and stuff like that. And then, boom, we just got hammered with love. So, that's pretty cool. There it is, Honey Badgers. Let's see Pinball Preparedness's uh, link, uh, please. If one of my awesome uh, moderators could do that for me, that would be fantastic. Because he's great. Uh, from the Panhandle of Texas, Richard... Uh, Prize. Well, welcome. It's good to see you. Thank you. And I uh, hope you're uh, well and safe. I hope you're warmer down there than we are up here. I know it's cold everywhere. <clears throat> so what are we doing to detach uh, this weekend? Scrappy Cat just asked. What are we doing to detach? Um, for myself, uh, because it's going to be so freaking cold, uh, you know, we've, we have the uh, Vortex coming down on us 
uh, I plan to stay indoors and I'm, I'm just going to regroup. I'm going to reorganize some of my preps. Uh, I'm going to inventory some of it. Um, I'm going to be uh, doing some more education and, uh, you know, just uh, chilling out, taking a break. Like I'm still taking a break and uh, so that I can move forward, you know. What's everyone else doing this weekend? Well, Ramona, that's awesome. Uh, thank you so much for that. Yeah, it's going to be a chilled out, relaxed weekend. Um, you know, I don't know if any of you guys saw my video, but I had a nice fish fry this evening out of the uh, fish Dan and I took out of the ice on Wednesday. And, uh, oh, Pinball, you're, you're uh, going with the gardening. Yeah, we're still a couple of months early here for that. But, uh, no, I totally get it how, you know, how it goes for you guys. But uh, we can have frost here up until the 1st of June. So, you know, things are a little shifted time-wise. <clears throat> Excuse me, time-wise for us. Taking it easy and knitting, Becky, that's good. That's a productive way to spend your, uh, your time. Sunday is your birthday and you're not doing anything, Mrs. Lost. All right. Well, um, I will wish you an early happy birthday at Mrs. Lost. Definitely at least a month later. Yeah. Yeah, Pinball. I'm not even thinking about um, starting anything just yet. Staying indoors and working on laundry. Yeah, that's a good way to spend the time. Nice. Uh, oh, Liberty Bell. Hello, North Shore and everyone. Um, Welcome, welcome, uh, good evening, and it's good to see you. Uh, welcome back, thank you very much, I appreciate that. And Fridays aren't, aren't my usual time to go on, it was just, uh, I figured it was due, you know, like, sort of, I think I, uh, I think I owed people a bit of an explanation, like I, I just kind of vanished a little bit, and I mean, to be honest, I needed to take a break, I really did, just to get some balance, rebalance myself, find the areas I was neglecting because I was beginning to neglect uh, things in my life, right? Tink, there you are. How you doing? Uh, everyone say a nice hello to the tinkerer's wife. Very lovely lady. Boddington even, there you are. Jandera, 98 there. Goodness gracious. Uh, okay, you're planting all the uh, seeds but, uh, before before the last frost here in BC. Oh, for 10 weeks indoors. Oh, okay, I see, I see. Uh, we're going to do some canning, even though it'll be warm. Well, it's winter here. It's winter here now, and um, this is actually the perfect time for us to do canning up here now like it's it's a little goofy because uh you know we usually do that when our gardens finish up and uh you know it's not that time right uh but as far as you know in the summer it's hot and it kind of sucks to be canning indoors uh terry there you are it sucks to be canning indoors when it's that hot right unless you have an outdoor or a back kitchen or something you can do that Uh, but in the in the winter time up here, when it's you know minus degrees, uh, it's great to uh, you know uh, light up your pressure canner because it, it, that'll conduct a whole bunch of heat into your house, right? Oh, pinball! We had a fantastic afternoon. You know, let me tell you this, pinball. Okay, so. Dan and I got out there and, and uh, you know, we chopped a hole in the ice and, and we put the, the hut over top of it and uh, put our chairs down. We finally got ourselves placed and, and, and sat down and got our rods down into the water. And we could, we were in, we were on a, uh, on the top of a shoal about, uh, hey Val, we were on the top of a shoal about, uh, four, in about 14 feet of water. And it was as clear as could be. And it was a sand bottom. You could see right to the bottom. And the fish started coming in. 
after we started walking around, once we settled down a little bit, the fish started to come back in on that shoal. Because that's kind of how they congregate. It's a natural channel and they land up there. And uh, Sean in Alaska, there you are. We were just shouting you out. If we can see his link again. Actually, Sean, you can put your own link up if you want to. We're just talking about the, I was fishing here on uh, Wednesday. So we were on this shoal, uh, about 14 feet of water. And on either side, we're in sort of 60 feet of water. And it's just a natural channel they, they come up on, and they, they land there, and, and they hang out. We could see down on them. Uh, uh, absolutely uh, south, yes. So we could see the fish down below us, and we were using minnows and, and a, a very, very small, uh, lightweight uh, jig to, to drop our stuff down to the bottom. So... Um, we could see all the activity. We could see the big ones coming in and the little ones playing with the, the bait and this and that. And so we were taking them out and taking them out and taking them out, the fish, and just throwing them out on the ice, right? Uh, and then, you know, after after the first half an hour when every fish started taking my, uh, my minnow, I was like, well, this, screw this. I'm just going to throw my jig back down in there because they seem to be hitting... It doesn't matter what. Every time you put it down, you pull a fish out, right? So I fished for the rest of the day with a naked uh, jig, a naked jig head. No minnow on it, and I still had lots of luck. We had big, we had some nice big perch. Um, we put all the, uh, of course, all the little ones and um, all of the brute stock, any of the really, really good big ones, we put all those back just for, you know, fishing karma. And, uh, no, we had an absolutely fantastic day on the ice. And, uh, you know, as far as actual fishing time goes, um, the South Florida uh, video on what, can you remind me, please? The naked jig. I'm not dancing. No, I'm not dancing, pinball. No, 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 no. That would take way more rum than I'm willing to drink. <laughs> uh, but yeah we had an absolutely fantastic day out on the water and we caught those 57 fish in uh, actual real fishing time probably uh, three hours and we threw back probably as many as we caught it was just a uh, it was non-stop action so it was it was very very cool it was uh yeah yeah that's called catching absolutely um, just an amazing, uh, day out on the water, a, a great, uh, chance to get out of the house too, because I mean, these lockdowns and all that BS, like I'm so freaking done with it. Um, you know, uh, just to have the chance to get out of the house and do something like that. It was just, uh, you know, a very welcome, uh, break that I needed, uh, just a chance to go out and do something else. Forget about everything. Have a bunch of fun with a good buddy. You know. Uh, camping adventures. There you are. Let's see if we can uh, see another link uh, uh, for Tyler's channel there. Camping adventures as well. Uh, uh, Tyler, are you uh, doing a Jeopardy this evening? Yeah, go check out Hickory Croft Farms. They've got uh, a new video up of their indoor uh, uh, grow room that they've set up. If you guys don't know Hickory Croft Farms, go look at them. There you are, Jacob. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. I'm just, uh, I was taking a break and I'm starting to get back into making some videos and, and things like that. Okay, Tyler, well, I appreciate that. Uh, you know, when I'm done with this, I'll uh, head over there and I'll, we'll join you. Uh, so for anybody that doesn't know uh, Camping Adventures, that's uh, Tyler. He used to be uh, Tyler Wood Bushcraft, and his new name is Camping Adventures. And he's going to be uh, running a uh, Prepper uh, Jeopardy game this evening. For anyone who's interested in joining, you can play right from the chat. Northern Girl, even. Have we seen a link for Northern Girl? Well, you got a wrench, Northern Girl. You can plug your own channel if you want to. Jandera, there you are. Uh, 
what a uh, prepper Jeopardy is. Okay, well, um, Jendera, it's like, have you ever seen the uh, the TV uh, program? It's like a game show type thing called Jeopardy. Uh, but it's about prepping skills. Pinball for minnows. Thank you ever so much. I guess we're even on the apron then. Thank you ever so much. Hey, Pinball, that... Uh, that was a great uh, Borscht uh, video that you and Mrs. Pinball did, and I think Mrs. Pinball did fantastic. So, yeah, it's just a game of Jeopardy. It's, uh, it's a lot of fun, and it's just a nice, relaxed time. It's, it's kind of like a question and answer. It, it's sort of... Jeopardy is one of those uh, game shows where it gives you the answer and you kind of have to ask the question to be correct and if you ask the wrong question it's kind of wrong so just makes you kind of think in reverse type of deal it's it's a it's a bunch of fun that's where i'm headed after here anyways just because it's a, a relaxed time a small channel it's not busy you can engage in the chat and, and you can play the Jeopardy from the chat too. You don't have to jump up onto a panel or anything like that. You can play right from the chat. Yeah, it's a fun time. I've, I've been over there before and, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's great fun. Exactly, Garth. Something like that. Something to that effect. Um, yeah, that's a, that's a great idea, Jandera. So, his name is so new, I barely remember it. I'm used to Tyler Wood Bushcraft. Camping Adventures. If somebody can get the link to Camping Adventures, that would be wonderful. I'm already subbed over there. It's just that he just he changed his name, right? So, I and I'm not. And it, I think he did it yesterday, or the day before, and so I'm not. Uh, book even welcome book. We're just talking about uh, the importance of taking a break and supporting the brother and sister, and we're actually talking about Jeopardy. You know, uh, camping adventures. Uh, we're gonna have a link here. Oh, the link is right above you there, uh, book. See camping adventures there that Harvey uh, Black put up? I'm going to go over there after here, and uh, we're going to play, like, Jeopardy. Ramona Perez. Yes, exactly. You're going to head out, Tank? All right, well, it's good to see you. Uh, thank you uh, for coming. Uh, stay well and safe, okay? And stay warm. All right? Is this polar vortex? Dude, <laughs> it's gross. Anyone have a good movie suggestion? Uh, well, the Book of Eli. Always a great movie if, if you hadn't uh, seen that. just That's just a... I can't find it in my resources. Otherwise, I would go watch that, but... Uh, JP, that's the way. That's a gift it'll keep giving. Look at that. Let's see another link to the Honey Badger's Homestead. And Honey Badger's Homestead, I want to encourage you to um, tidy up your videos just a little bit, uh, but only so far as the sound goes. Your videos are good, but the sound is a little quiet, okay? And I think you're going to have an awful lot to offer uh, to people. So that's one of the reasons why I wanted to plug your channel. And, uh, you know, hold his sister up. So, yeah, all the encouragement. Yeah, Book of Eli is an apocalypse, uh, post-apocalyptic thing. Or no, I have Book of Eli. 
Yeah, Book of Eli is good. I love that movie. The Road. I like the Book of Eli a lot more. Oh, thanks, Regplex. I appreciate that. And you know what? It, the fish was fantastic. It was absolutely delicious. When I go, mm, 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 on video, I'm, I'm not faking that. You know, the, not at all. Delicious. The so road is good, but it's depressing as hell. Yeah. Yeah, the Book of Eli is a little bit more uplifting. Michigan Mom, there you are. How you doing? It's good to see you as well. Oh, Gladiators, are, uh, that's an awesome classic for sure. <clears throat> All right, looks like uh, Honey Badger's getting some subscribers. That's great. You guys are awesome. Um, everyone have a look at what Harvey Black's saying there, please. Uh, Wildman307. This is the 11-year-old boy's uh, channel who helps disabled children. That uh, That is a wonderful thing. Guys, please uh, check out the channel Harvey is recommending, Wildman307 Outdoors. Please and thank you. Down on Boddington, you're nearly at 500. That's awesome. <clears throat> That's great. That's how this is supposed to work. The Ark. No, I haven't seen that. Fargo is an amazing movie, Phoebe. Oh, yeah. I love that movie. I don't know how many times I've seen it. There's tons and tons of them. Yeah, well, do you know what, Michigan Mom? We're only really just getting started with winter because we haven't had a bad winter. It's been mild and no snow, at least here where I am. Like, I can still see the grass. You know what I mean? Not in all places, but... I can still see uh, grass here and there. We haven't got whomped by snow. But you know what that does? That makes me worry a little bit about the uh, spring uh, water table. You know, is there going to be enough water? You know, because we're supposed to have a bunch of snow up here. And that creates water for the water table for the, you know, plants in the spring, right? So, uh, you know, it... it when we have that shortage of, of winter water or snow laying on top of the ground, um, it almost leads me to think of, if it, especially if it gets really hot first thing in the spring, makes me think of drought, you know? And with the last couple of years, the way the crops have been going, drought is the last thing we need. Where are you at, uh, JP? Uh, roughly. It has been very mild until this week. Yeah, southernmost. Absolutely. Even up here. Yeah, very curious, uh, Hickory Croft. That's exactly what I'm thinking of without uh, all, you know, all the snow that we're supposed to have. Uh, yeah, you're getting uh, our snow, aren't you, Janie? Yep. Yeah. Ah, okay. Thank you, uh, JP. What do you think about getting uh, together for a, a live cookout with uh, all of us? Uh, I know it's cold up there. I'd love to get together for a live cookout with anybody. I love to cook and eat. Yeah. What do you mean, like a like a, a huge mutual live stream or actually crossing borders to get to the other to set up a cook station and cook? Got to be uh, clear on that. Oh, yeah, I, I could uh, love uh, food and cooking and, and sharing that with other people. Absolutely love it. If anybody doesn't know pinball preparedness, go check out uh, the Borscht. Uh, yeah, let's see a link for pinball, and go check out the uh, borscht recipe. His uh, 
His wife messed with pinball just did. Do you know what, Northern Girl? That's not a bad idea. Like, it's very possible for a lot of people in the States, because a lot of states are uh, smaller, and the traveling within is easier, right? Uh, but as far as crossing borders and things like that, it's a little less possible for us Canadians. So, do you know what? You make a very, very good, uh, interesting suggestion there, Northern Girl. And that's uh, maybe something we should explore a little bit more, okay? Yeah, I watch pinball every morning as well. <clears throat> well, when I'm working, I, well, I haven't worked in over a month, but uh, when I am working, I, I don't get to watch uh, pinball until I, uh, I get home from work, but that's typically the first video I watch when I get home from work, so. All right, Northern Girl, uh, let's talk more about it. I won't say send me an email because you know what that means, right? I'll get to my email, guys. I will. It's part of my winter thing. Yeah, Hickory Croft Farm could be in on that. You know what? Quebec Homestead might even. Like, she's nine and a half hours away from here. And, like, we're all a fair distance away. I think I'm actually closest to either Jenny D or Hickory Croft Farm here in the chat. I think Hickory Croft is in Ontario. Yeah, pinball's great. Canada is huge. Even just Ontario is huge, right? Like, what am I, uh, six or eight hours away from Northern Girl? Maybe more? The thing about it is, too, yeah, uh, Northern Girl, we've got to get a general consensus, and then we're going to have to find a centralized location that everyone can travel to so that it's fair for everyone, you know? Yeah, 24 hours, probably. Uh, maybe more, actually, JP. Yeah, says Florida, that's, you see, that's just it. Like, yeah, we're all brothers and sisters. But it's like, hang on a second, wait a second. There's a 30-hour drive and a border separating us, right? It's 18 hours to Winnipeg from uh, from where you are, okay. I think the border's still closed, Cleon. to be honest with you. Uh, I hear they're supposed to be letting up some of the restrictions up here, but... Uh, yeah, I don't think the border's open yet. Bob and Doug McKenzie. <laughs> well, that's an... All right, if that was your education while you're growing up, you might as well go watch the entire series of the Trailer Park Boys because those will be both very accurate um, assessments of Canadians. Not... We're the same as you guys, and, you know, we hate oppression and whatever else, too. Oh, thank you, Voodoo. I appreciate that. I haven't seen the news on that. I've been, I've been trying to uh, disassociate with the news and this and that for a while, you know. Well, Honey Badger out here is even further east out of here, uh from Ontario, then Quebec, you know, it's New Brunswick after that. And I believe they're in uh, New Brunswick or, or Nova Scotia. I think it's New Brunswick, but, uh, yeah, they're out over uh, more toward the East Coast. Yeah, definitely Canadian, eh, CB? Quebec Homestead, there's Mallory. How you doing, Mal? Red Green, yes, I remember Red Green. I just wish I had more duct tape. How you doing, Mal? How's you and Ben and the girls? It's good to see you here. You were just heading to bed? I think Tyler's got a, uh, a game show going on, a Jeopardy game going on. I'm going to go over and hit once we're done here. You're headed to bed? Okay, well, that, that's all right. Get your rest. I hope you're uh, feeling well.
you can't ever have too much duct tape. And you know what? Let me just bear with me a second. That's something interesting. It's kind of funny that this thing was stuck to the uh, bottom of a roll of tuck tape. But I'll show you. Now, this is a beer cozy. A very nice young lady uh, bought for me. And it says, I'm not sure if you can see that, uh, even duct tape can't fix stupid. but it can muffle the sound. So yeah, duct tape is great for lots of stuff. Wait a second, wait a second. Greenhouse? What did I miss? You got in a greenhouse, Mal? Zombie Camp Aurelia. I grew up in Aurelia. No kidding. I'll have to have a look at that. 15 hours to Ottawa. Okay, yeah, okay, honey badger. So you are out uh, in the east. Correct me if I'm wrong. Duct tape wallets, yeah. Yes, it is awesome. Duct tape is fantastic, but it can't fix stupid. Nothing can fix. All the education in the world can't fix stupid. Northern Girl Hobby got merch? Shut your whole entire face. We'll put your link up for your merch. Come on. You know you can do that here. Come on, come on, come on. Yeah, Canada's a huge country, right? Northern girl got merch. Zombie outdoors. Zombie outdoors. No kidding, even. I, I might even know the person who owns that. I'm gonna have to look into that. Thank you for the uh, intel on that. Much appreciated. The Great White North. It's not like that. Hey, Mona. They should at least find you handy. Absolutely. Girls in Kingston. Don't. Let's not revisit that. You can't fix stupid, but you can elect it to Congress. Oh, boy. That's beautiful. Nice one, peg leg. Yeah, yeah. There's plenty of universities to teach stupid. And once you're done there, they're very qualified. Very qualified. If it ain't broke, you're not trying hard enough. Congress equals oxygen thieves. Well, Joe Morgan... Isn't it interesting that uh, they call a, uh, a gathering of uh, baboons a Congress? I've always loved that. I just always loved it. You hadn't heated the uh, furnace yet, Mal. Oh, goodness gracious. What have you been doing? Editing? You making some vids? What are you doing? Congress, the opposite of progress. Roger that. Yeah, you gotta cook. Well, everybody eats, right? And it doesn't matter what genre of YouTube channel you come across, if it's a homesteading one or, or a bushcrafting one or a prepping one, everybody eats food, right? And the better the food is, the better everything is, right?
Yeah, pretty much, uh, <laughs> peg leg. Oh, I know that, Mel, I know that. You, you must have uh, forgotten about the cold, Mal, from your uh, overnighter outdoors. You, was, you said you were heating the furnace a lot. Wife don't let you in the kitchen. Well, kitchen is my place. That's my that's my playground, really. And, uh, I mean, the more knowledge you have in, in uh, your preparedness, like as far as smoking meats and, and, and putting stuff back, you know, if a bad situation really happened and you had to rely on what's inside your house, the smarter you are, the better you can eat, if, even if you can't leave the house. You know what I mean? Depending on what you put back and, and all kinds of stuff, right? So... And that's kind of one of my approaches uh, toward it is the food aspect and and doing it on, on the cheap, right? Like, uh, you know, a lot of you guys know I, I uh, don't have um, any freeze-dried uh, things in my storage. I'm not saying they'd be a bad thing to have. Um, to be honest with you, I would like to have some, but that's not where I'd like to concentrate uh, my dollar uh, amounts right now as far as my food storage goes I, I can get way more food storage out of my dollar right now by doing things the way i do them now by canning and, and um you know uh, uh dry canning or or vac sealing uh rice and long term term storage like beans and and whatever else so uh i just think for me personally my dollar value is spent better in um in other ways but uh I would like to have some uh, MB Heritage. How are you doing? Good to see you and welcome. I just think my dollar value is better spent uh, there for now. You know, like prepping is a journey. You can't just go out and do, you throw 50 grand at it and say, boom, there you go. Give me everything. Boom, I'm done. I'm a prepper. I'm good. You know what I mean? Renewable things, absolutely, Hickory Croft. Hey, anybody doesn't know Hickory Croft Farms, go check them out. Uh, I think they have a video uh, up or up and coming of how to make sugar out of sugar beets, okay, guys? It's going to be super important in a, uh, you know, in a bad long-term thing. How do you get your sugar? Well, go check out Hickory Croft Farms. They'll tell you. They'll show you how to make sugar. And I, I haven't watched that video. I just saw that it was uh, going to premiere. Um, and I, I'm not sure if, if it has premiered yet or not, but uh, I will watch it. Because that's uh, going to be some very, very good information. Oh, you didn't miss a whole lot, uh, Bibby. We're just talking you know, food and uh, prepping and importance of taking breaks and balance and things like that. Uh, okay, Hickory Croft. No, don't, don't, uh, don't give it a second thought. Now, has that uh, video premiered yet, or or is it set to premiere still? You've, you've got a wrench here. You can go ahead and plug it. Why don't you leave a link for it so the people can find it? It's how to make sugar from sugar beets. Yeah. Okay. See what Mal is saying there? Uh, Quebec Homestead. She's uh, saying she preps for the year, then starts over. Right. And I mean, I came up on the farm and, uh, we always had a year's worth of pickles and beets and, and canned things uh, down in the basement on the shelves, along with a couple of big chest freezers. One had a, a whole cow in it. TJ, even. Really? Wow, lady. We just, uh, one of my awesome moderators was just putting uh, your link up there not uh, too long ago. Welcome, TJ. Hey, everyone give uh, TJ Preps a nice welcome here. How you doing, girl? I liked your uh, chicken uh, canning video. So, yeah, so we're just talking about all things preps and we're talking food and 
Uh, hey, TJ. Uh, look at Hickory Croft Farm up here. Uh, they got a, a video coming out. If you don't know them, Hickory Croft Farm, uh, a great uh, small homesteading channel. Um, they got a video coming out how to make sugar out of sugar beets, okay? So that's going to be a real important one, right? So that's a channel we need to hold up. Right. Okay, so Hickory Croft Farm has the link to the premiere, and it, it hasn't premiered yet, I don't believe. I'm not sure. I, I couldn't say. If it has, I haven't uh, had a chance to watch it, but I am going to watch it. Oh, yeah, you guys want to learn some stuff? Go over and see TJ. I hope you're well, TJ. I hope you're warm down there. I hope the polar vortex hasn't got you yet. Um, look at what Honey Badger Homestead is saying right there. Grow stevia for natural sweetener. Absolutely. Yep. Honey Badger's Homestead is a very, very small homestead. Just a few uh, subscribers. Go check them out, guys. Their videos are going to get better. And, um, yeah, that's another channel we need to hold up and support. For sure. For sure, for sure. Because I think they're going to do good things. They're just getting started on their homesteading uh, uh, journey. So we'll be able to watch the entire thing and encourage them and help teach and learn from them the whole way through. Just like uh, Sean in Alaska. You know, he's just getting started on his journey. Uh, you know, with being off-grid and solar and getting his cabin built and his garden and chicken coop and everything like that. He hasn't done... Uh, He's got the driveway in, basically, so that's going to be a good adventure to follow. Mal, what, what's the temperature up there? Oh, you're on your way? Okay. Just stay well and safe. Uh, say hi to Ben and the girls in the morning. And I can't wait for that coffee to get here. Thank you ever so much, sister. I, I won a, uh, Mallory over at Quebec Homestead there had a, uh, oh, like a, a, a contest that had, had prizes or whatever one night. So I, I got in there and uh, the, one of the questions was asked and I was the first to answer. So I won it and it was a, a couple of bags of Tim Horton's coffee. So Mal texted me earlier uh, this morning and uh, said uh, she's just putting it in the mail. So I got a couple of bags of coffee headed toward me. Thanks so much, Mal. I appreciate that, and I appreciate you. Ooh, a bag with goodies. Ooh, I love goodies. Are you on your way, Sheila? All right, well, thank you so much for stopping in. It was good to see you. Joe, you're on your way. You stay well and safe, okay? Stay warm. Night, Mal. TJ. Okay, hang on a second. All right, everybody stop the chat. TJ's got a question. All right, TJ. This clock over here is set to 1 minute to 12, okay? Now, when... You know, I had some girls help me out, and they, they put that clock up there for me. And when they put it up there, I asked them to set it at a certain time, which I kind of had to help them with because they didn't read Roman numerals. So I had to teach them a little bit, and they finally got the, uh, the clock set to the time that I wanted it set to. All right. Now, it's set to one minute uh, to, to midnight. That's for a reason. It's my doomsday clock. Now, I just advanced that clock a couple of weeks ago by 20 seconds. It's a doomsday clock, you know? Like, there's one of those out there, right? A doomsday clock? When, when like, the time is getting nearer and nearer? Well, I guess as each day passes, the time is always getting nearer. But I'm not always going to keep bumping my clock forward. But it's, it's like one minute to midnight, always. It's, yeah. Yeah, we're, the doom is near nigh, so 
That's that's what that's all about. You see that? That's what it's telling you. It's one minute to midnight, so you know we're late into the eleventh hour, right? Make it go backwards. <sighs> Northern Girl Hobbies. If I could do that, I'd be the richest man on the planet. I would love to make that clock go backwards. You know, less close to doom or, or whatever the evil plan that they have is for us. Because trust, I don't think it's a godly plan or a good plan. Maybe that's part of the problem, Hickory Croft. You know? Well, not so remote Alaska. Maybe for those who don't have their eyes open or, or who aren't awake. With that, I will agree. Because with those of us who do have our eyes open and who are awake, you know, we're not getting stupider. We're getting smarter. We're seeing they're doing this. They're doing this. They're doing this. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. They're doing this. So, while well, holy crap. We need to do this because we can see that they're doing this. The other people that aren't looking, they're just like, where's my stimulus? And playing their video games and da-da-da-da-da or whatever, right? Or don't want to think about it, got their head buried in the sand, whatever. Yeah. Go toward the light, Northern Girl. The light and the heat. My only re regret is not uh, waking up years ago. More years ago than I did. Roger that, CB. Okay, Garth, um, you know what? Um, I do agree with that. Uh, however, you know, uh, that's why we're all trying to hold the other up and, and, and wake the, the other up. Because the more our message can get out, the more people will hear it. And hopefully the more they'll wake up and... Uh, not be too young to care. You know what I mean? Because uh, things are going to get dire for everybody. I mean, can't hate on you, Buck, for being whatever temperature it is where you are. But we can certainly dislike you a little bit for rubbing it uh, in our noses. Preparing is a part of find, finding some balance, absolutely. So we need to continue to do that, and we need to focus on that, you know. When everybody's busy all crazy talking about silver, don't forget about your preps, you know. When everybody's uh, crazy talking about China, don't forget about your preps, right. I find that within this community, it, it's uh, it's not really funny, It's it's just a thing that I notice. Okay, it's like everybody within the community that, that posts, uh, like all the content creator, uh, creators, they all kind of do everything at the same time. Like when, when people are doing stuff about silver, everyone's doing stuff about silver. If everyone's doing stuff about China, everyone's doing stuff about China. You know what I mean? And in the midst of all that, I take it for what it's worth, but I, I try and maintain the balance and just continue the prepping because of what's going on. It's like, okay, now this is the problem. All right, well, let's prep because of that. Now this is the problem and everybody's on that. All right, well, let's prep because of that. This is the problem. All right, well, let's prep because of that, right? I try not to follow necessarily what the problem is 
because my entire goal is to prep anyways. So, uh, like, don't get me wrong. It's it's important to talk about current events and, and things like that because those are the reasons that we prep, right? Political issues, absolutely. Very good reasons to prep. You know, did anybody see any of the craziness over the last year? How crazy things have been? With all the uh, rioting and burning and looting and all that crap? Like, what the heck? Val, reach out to those close to you. Keep your mag close. Well, thank you, Liberty Bell. I appreciate that. Very nice of you to say. I just, I'm me. I see things how I see them. And I don't know any other way to share them than... Like just opening my mouth and saying the words, you know? Craziness? What craziness? Harvey. Nothing crazy here. Just dealing with the madness. Uh, Bodea installation videos. I'm not sure what that is, JP. Who else in Canada is in the chat? Uh, well, Hickory Croft is here. Uh, Mallory just went to bed uh, from Quebec Homestead. Uh, Honey Badger was in here. Uh, I think Janny D's there. I think she's over in BC. JP, there we go. JP's out in BC, I think. Yeah, there's a lot of Canadians in the chat here. Fellow Canucks, as it were. Hey, TJ, you there? TJ still here? If TJ Preps is still in the house, young lady, I uh, did a video. There you are. Okay. I did a video for you yesterday, I think it was yesterday, on um, how to use a coffee press. I saw you uh, on um, Heather's uh, live stream. You were up on the uh, the panel there, and you were, you got to wandering around your kitchen looking for you know, like what you're going to do for dinner, right? And you had a coffee press there in your hand. So I did a coffee uh, press video on uh, how, to, how to work it and all that for you. Or for anybody who doesn't know how to use one. So I thought I had two coffee presses because, yeah, French press. Uh, two is one and one is none. But when I cleaned them today and, and went to put them away, turns out I don't have two. I have three. Because, <laughs> you know, I guess three is two and two is one and one is none. I don't know. Oh, my God. So anyways, if you want to learn how to use a coffee press, it is a very good video. It's not that long, and it's super simple to use. Super simple. Well, hope you're well there, TJ. What's your temperature like? Are you guys freezing down there? The, the polar vortex is going nuts, guys. It's not like crazy, crazy nuts, but... Susan, yeah, that's all I use. I use it every day to make my coffee. Edmonston. Oh, okay. I've had some interesting times there. And no, I will not share. 43, okay. Well, that's comfy. Do I have a video on how to dry or smoke venison? No, I don't have any videos on venison as yet. Uh, I'm not a hunter, per se. Like, I know lots of people who hunt, and I hunted years ago, but uh, I haven't done it in a good long while. 
<laughs> polar vortex to book club. I'm sure uh, all of our friends in Australia could use some polar vortex too. Goodness gracious, at 35 degrees. Ribs and flounder. Ooh, daddy. Okay. The, all right. Uh, suggestions. Yes. Uh, South Florida. Hang on a second, guys. I'm going to pause this chat. I uh, just want to address South Florida here for uh, for a minute now. Okay. Hopefully, uh, or whatever, if, if, you, uh, if you've ever done much with ribs, I don't know, there's tons of ways to do ribs. You know, you can just, you can um, make sure you take that uh, silver skin off the inside, right? And then I would rub them with mustard, like just plain old yellow mustard, you, nothing fancy. And then uh, hammer, uh, now the mustard is just to make your uh, dry rub stick to it, okay? Stick your dry rub to it. And I would grill them slowly over a long period of time. And then, once you're done with that, I would take them off the grill. Are you going to put any smoke to them? Like, um, I would take them off the grill, uh, probably rub them in butter. Like, it's a process to do ribs. It's a good long while. Now, the flounder shouldn't take too, too, too long on the grill. I would suggest you do it way, way, way toward the end of when the, those ribs are done so you don't dry it out uh, because uh, yeah fish will cook in a matter of minutes flounder if you wanted to you could marinate it in some um, you know your oil of, of your choice plus some kind of vinegar but but not too too long you know like the longer you have acid on a piece of fish the acid will kind of cook it sort of quote quote cook it or, or it'll um coagulate the proteins and make it feel like it's cooked but but yeah you could just you could paint some uh, italian salad dressing on it really and then grill it without uh without any marination whatsoever but your ribs yeah that's a that's a that could be a whole big thing about the ribs do them long and slow. Do you know what I do for my ribs? It's kind of a hack. I, um, I'll i take my ribs and I'll just, uh, I have a standard uh, blend that I use, SPG, salt, pepper, and garlic. And I'll just shake that on there on both sides. And then I'll put it in a pot with like an inch of water in it. And I'll steam that on a very low uh, setting for a couple of hours uh, in the oven, in a pot. And... Uh, then I'll pull those out and I'll just uh, paint some, uh, you know, chicken and rib sauce or whatever. You know, if you, if you like the, uh, you know, the hickory smoke one or, or the, uh, whichever uh, sauce you like. Just paint that on, put it on the grill, finish it up there. Easy, easy. And you can have uh, your grilling done for your ribs and your chicken or and your flounder sorry done in the same amount of time you don't have to go for a long period of time using up all that fuel on your grill whether it's charcoal or, or uh, pellets or, or whatever it is that you're doing and uh, you know those ones you do in the pot come out very very well Oh, yeah, garlic ribs. Nerd, yeah, you know, exactly. There's tons and tons of ways to do to do ribs, right? Hey, I got a smoker, too, I smoke ribs on, you know? There's lots of ways to do it. It depends what you want to do, what kind of time frame you have to work with, um, and what you want to achieve, what you're willing to spend on fuel, you know? It, uh, it can matter. Mesquite and hickory. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Now that's, uh, I'll usually use uh, hickory smoke when I smoke my uh, pork hocks. I, uh, I really appreciate a, a nice hickory on my pork hocks. And when I'm doing something like turkey, uh, I'll use a pecan wood.
oh, hickory craft. That's not some uh, somewhere I've gone yet. Like, I I do smoke a bunch of my own meats, but I haven't gone to bacon yet. Uh, okay. Um, do you know what? Yeah, just find a nice salad dressing that's got the balance of the oil and... Uh, and uh, vinegar and herbs and whatnot on it or just uh, olive oil uh whatever vinegar you like like say maybe some uh, malt vinegar or or uh, red wine vinegar make a, a little dressing out of that with some herbs in it and put it in a little blender to make sure you wise it up a little bit so it emulsifies and then just paint that on and then just put it right on the grill A side dish for uh, for ribs and fish. Side dish for ribs and fish. Well, side dish for ribs would be a, a classic um, coleslaw. And for fish, uh, like a you know a nice um, like rice pilaf or or uh, saffron rice complements fish really well. Balsamic, yeah, absolutely. Got to be careful with balsamic, though, but because it's already, a lot of times it's already rendered down a little bit, and it can um, scald or uh, blacken quicker than uh, you might want. But yeah, 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 it's absolutely a thing for sure. Macaroni salad, yeah, classic potato salad. Yeah, add a little mustard to your, uh, to your vinaigrette for sure. It helps emulsify it. Cornbread. There you go, Klingon. What's my favorite thing to smoke? Uh, cooking. Um, prepper nerd, to be honest with you, I think it's probably turkey thighs. Because they come out so juicy and so moist and so succulent. And there's so much you can do with it. You know, it's a dark meat, so it holds, there's a little bit more fat in there. It's got more palatability. Um, there's more uh, flavor to it. And uh, they're really, really meaty. And there's just a ton of stuff that you can do with it, right? Beans, yeah. Beans is a great side dish for that. Smoked beans. You know what? If you're going to run the smoker, put some uh, some baked beans on there, too. Absolutely. Yeah, ribs, beans, fish. And, you know, maybe some uh, coleslaw on a side of a uh, of mac salad or whatever. Yeah, absolutely. Sounds fantastic. Or if, uh, you know, somebody uh, wants a more interesting salad, like maybe a broccoli, uh, broccoli and bacon salad, you know, with some smoked chicken in it or something. Yeah, smoked turkey is fantastic. Becky, you on your way? All right, well, it's good to see you. Thank you for your, uh, dropping by and joining us. Lovely to see you. Balsamic on spinach. Yeah, balsamic on, on asparagus. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Oh, you can't stand the dark meat, South? Hey, not everything is for everyone. You know, you're a white meat person. Then, uh, you know what? If you're a white uh, turkey meat person, make sure you use your injector. Stuff that full of, uh, you know, uh, chicken broth or, or uh, you know, whatever your... Uh, Whatever your liquid is that you want to do, plump those up. Do them. Uh, don't cook them too fast because uh, you know you dry out that uh, that white meat pretty easy, right? Yeah, I'd like Liberty Bell. Exactly. I wish somebody could just dr uh, drone in some of that stuff here right now. I'll just go get my card. I'll hold it up in the air. I'll wave it around. Make it go beep and and yeah, let the drones come in. Dropping that stuff off here, right? Yeah, German potato salad is real nice. Green bean salad, there you are. Personally, as far as, uh, you know, beans go, I love yellow beans. I am a nut for yellow beans. Nut. Green beans, I find a, a little bit more stringy and chewy. Then the yellow beans, the yellow beans, they're just, uh, they're just so, uh, well, they call them wax beans, right? Because they're 
kind of waxy. They're really easy to chew and they're good. Waldorf salad. That has apple and walnuts in it. Squeaky beans. Hey, what about cheese curd? You ever had cheese curd? Squeaky cheese. Yeah, anything with garlic is good. Cherry. Garlic on a flip-flop. Yeah, I need to get some pole beans, too. And all the rabbits uh, eat my bush beans. Last year, hickory crop. So I'm, I'm planning to do pole beans in containers so that they're up off the, uh, the ground so the little bunny rabbits can't get them. Snare them. Can't snare them here in the city, girl. I wish we could, but I mean, we're going to snare a damn little bunny like this. I'd have to just throw it in the ditch or throw it in the garbage. Chinese long beans. Yeah, some of them are huge. Hickory croft. Yeah, I want to keep them up off the ground. Because they got all of my yellow beans last year. And I planted tons of them. And I like I got like a little handful of them, so small, I didn't even cook them. I just brought them inside and I ate them raw. There's I, I got like seven yellow beans out of everything I planted. The whole garden eaten by a bunny. Well, they didn't eat my ridiculous tomatoes. I had crazy tomatoes last year. Right? <laughs> Go check the vids. Like they're nuts. You know, I planted tomatoes over there, and there was tomatoes over here, but it was from that plant. You know what I mean? Eight feet away. I was getting tomatoes from like, yeah. Maybe I need a better trellising system. I don't know. The whole journey is a learning curve, right? Oh, you grow the noodle bean, huh? Valley on your way. It's good to see you. Uh, thank you uh, so much for dropping by. Did I keep my fish guts? No, Dan kept them to put on his garden. Mmm, cucumber salad. That just made my mouth water. Night, Val. Tomatillo's book. Okay, cool. Hope those work out well for you. Yeah, I'm totally going to revamp my uh, my garden. What's my earliest thing to grow? Um, I would have to say uh, cold weather stuff. You know, we can, we can get uh, our salads in like a uh, well, the earliest thing I would put in the ground is probably potatoes. Um, you know, just because they take a little bit of time to pop their heads up. You know, so you can kind of put them in a week ahead of last frost kind of deal. Uh, but, like, once last frost is done, everything goes in. But I think the earliest harvest is probably going to be, like, uh, you know, lettuces and things like that. Lettuces radish is pretty quick but i mean if it gets hot uh your radishes will bolt on you you know so you almost want to wait till fall to do radishes or, or late summer you know in a shaded area and i mean that's just me like i've got my own little microclimate going on in my backyard uh, the way it is and it's totally west and south facing. It's just a complete heat trap there. Radishes, two crops. Yeah, you can do spring and fall for sure. And, you know, if you're in different uh, different regions, you can get probably more than two crops. You started tomatoes and peppers two weeks ago. Wow. Oh, I hope they do well for you. Don't put the light too high above them or they'll go ahead and try and get leggy on you. Yeah. 
You're on your way, Tracy? All right, well, it was good to see you. Thank you for dropping by. I'm not starting anything for a, a month, probably. I may go get a cannabis plant here in the next few weeks. Maybe, maybe not. You know, when I get them, they're, they're like this big. So by the time I put them outside, hopefully they'll be like two and a half feet tall or whatever. No, radishes don't uh, transplant well. You, you want to direct seed those. Same with beans. You want to pretty much direct sow your beans. Because they don't take long to germinate. You know, beans are uh, actually very industrious with how they uh, sprout and uh, how they grow. There's no need to do those indoors early either. Um, you know, a lot of people, uh, Cherry, can leave those things in the ground into the winter as long as you cover them with some, some straw and such so that they don't get really frostbit. Um, you, you can harvest out of the, the ground all winter. Yeah, book. Yep. And radishes. Yep. Uh, make sure you don't have a risk of, of uh, frost and, and the soil warmed up a bit. Yeah, they don't do too well in, in the cold. You're right. Yeah, but once it's, uh, you know, once there's no uh, threat of uh, frost, their uh, uh, beans are definitely fairly hardy. They, they sprout and grow well with a fairly good success rate. Same with uh, peas. However, I have um, had success sprouting peas. Uh, indoors and then you know planting and transplanting but uh, I think they're like a bean and probably be best just directly sown well listen whiskey woman I'll tell you what don't blame me for your geographical location okay what can I say like this is a piece off of uh, this is a piece of medicine off of something I grew this summer, and uh, I use it to make medicine, medicinal gummy worms for pain relief for people with arthritic conditions and such. And myself, I don't use it a lot at all. I think I used it maybe twice last year to uh, help relieve a uh, a lingering back in injury I incurred at work. Hey, you. Um, yeah, like for some, we can grow it up here for whatever we want, whether it's recreational or, you know, I, I don't, I don't enjoy it, uh, for that myself. A lot of people do, and that, that's fine. That's their, that's a personal choice, right? I got nothing to say about that. Um, but, uh, there are a lot of people who I've actually helped got off of, um, you know, some prescription pills, prescription pain pills. And they ended up using uh, gummy worms and a hot tub instead of highly addictive liver killing um, pharmaceuticals. So, you know, I enjoy, I, I prefer uh, the naturopathic uh, things. How many acres do I have? I don't have any acres, none. I live in an apartment and I have a backyard, a tiny backyard. Uh, so I'm gardening in a tiny backyard, you know, I'm, I'm sort of urban homesteading kind of deal. And, you know, trying to manage it in a, in a tiny space and, and with a tiny, uh, tiny backyard, seeing what I can do out there. And part of, part of the reason why I, uh, one of the reasons why I started my channel is to show people that even if you have a limited area of ground soil around you, yes, you can grow food in it. And yes, you can have more personal sustainability without having to rely on others. You know, you can do more for yourself, right? 
How much can I grow in my yard? Well, southernmost, go back to uh, some of my summer videos and have a look at my tomato plants and the potatoes I grew in buckets and stuff, right? You can grow a bunch. You're from southwestern Ontario, hey you. Okay. Good day. Residence Homestead, how you doing? Yeah, I don't use any prescription pills either. I hardly take a, a, a Advil ever. Yeah, tiny spaces can be very productive for sure. And I'm just learning more about how to do that, right? Uh, your tomatoes uh, did so bad one year. Uh, you bought some at the store and, and uh, taped them to the plants. All oh, the neighbors were amazed. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, you sure can. I mean, uh, this year I'm changing things up. I had a bunch of radish in last year and... Uh, I either didn't have them in early enough or, or whichever, but they all, all of them bolted on me. And I had some lovely varieties in there. Las Vegas, how you doing? How you doing? Welcome. Uh, so I didn't have good success at all with my radishes last year. I, I probably should have just planted a fall crop knowing that my area is so hot. Uh, so lesson learned there. And uh, what I did last year too is I had like eight hanging baskets and they were all planted in um, lettuce. You know, you know like uh, I had uh, four, uh, hey Sandra, I had uh, four pots of Boston lettuce and four pots of romaine lettuce. Now, what I'm gonna change up is I'm not gonna go uh, be growing Boston again in those hanging pots, and I'm gonna limit my um, uh, romaine to two uh, hanging baskets. And the rest of it I'm gonna put into spinach because I can uh, harvest that spinach as it goes, dehydrate it as it goes, and put it back for storage. That'll last a long time once it's dehydrated. So, I mean, it's a learning curve. doesn't matter what your garden is, what your space is. Get into it. Put your hands in it. Learn about it. Learn from it. Make the changes that, you know, are, are good for you and you know, what you want to do. And, uh, you know, you, you should see progress there, right? Yeah, Voodoo, there's, there's lots of uh, great uh, benefits from it. Helps with glau glaucoma and uh, eating disorders and, um, you know, uh, skeletal muscular pain. Um, resonance, hang on a second. Okay, that's a great question. You know what? Uh, I wanna, I'm going to pause that chat here just for myself. You guys uh, continue to chat here. I'm going to pause this to remind myself. To answer, Re Residence Homestead. Uh, that's a great question. I'm going to show you. Just excuse me a second, guys. I've been on for a bit, and I want to have a potty break, so just bear with me. I'll be right back. I'm sorry.
terribly sorry about that. Very sorry. Okay. Um, so, a good member of the chat, Residence Homestead, asked, how do you store your spinach? Okay. So, I, I wanted to address that. Now, there are uh, lots of ways you can do that. I mean, you can um, pressure can it. You can cook it down and pressure can it uh, to, uh, you know, have it shelf stable for, I'll go out on a limb, not really, and say five years. Uh, but I think this is a better way. Uh, this right here is Swiss chard, okay? Now, what I do with this is, um, you can see it's just dry in a, uh, in a quart uh, mason jar. So I just, um, I, I take uh, my chard and uh, I just put it in the dehydrator. Dehydrate it until it's crispy and then throw it in the jar. And then, I mean, you can just uh, pull some of this out and uh, you can toss it into a, a soup or into your spaghetti sauce or anything like that and, and use it like that. And that'll store for a very, very long time. You know, it's been, all it's been is uh, dehydrated. So all the nutrients are still in here and uh, they're preserved there. And like, I mean, you can vacuum seal that too if you wanted to preserve it even further. You could probably oven can it or, or um, use your, uh, your food saver to uh, vacuum seal that for an extended uh, shelf life. Um, and that's exactly what I'm going to do with my spinach. Um, I'm going to store my spinach the exact same way. I'm going to dehydrate it, and I'm going to uh, dry can it uh, this way. So I hope that answers your question. And I'm sorry I missed a whole bunch of chat. No, this one, I just screwed it on. Because if it's going to be one of those things, uh, like for your uh, using pantry, you're going to be opening and closing that lid all the time. Now, you can vacuum seal it every time you want, every time you use it if you want to. But, uh, you know, if, if you're going to be making a soup and a spaghetti sauce and this and that here and there, you're going to be into that jar all the time. It doesn't really matter if you... Uh, if you seal it up uh, that well or not. Uh, like, I mean, you could store it in a smaller jar. You could, you could put it in, in a pint jar to have a, a smaller uh, volume available for you. And then you can go ahead and, and vacuum seal or, or whatever the, uh, you know, if you've got other amounts for longer term storage. And it'll be just fine. Yeah, dehydrated green powder, absolutely. You can blend that up, throw it into a smoothie. Basil and parsley, absolutely. Garlic, yep. Yeah. Oh, it stores just fine. Yep. Yeah. yeah, resonance. It stores very well. Now, if you oven can it, you know, the oven canning process, the heat uh, application may deteriorate from some of the nutrients from it. So I would probably lean toward suggesting um, using your vacuum sealer to, to uh, you know, put, put the vacuum on there for a longer term storage rather than uh, applying the heat to it. So as to maintain the nutrients as well as possible, you know. So I'm definitely changing up a whole bunch of my uh, lettuce and baskets next year, or sorry, this year, into um, spinach. So what, is, what else is everyone else going on? What changes are you guys making this year in your gardens? Or in, in towards your preparedness or, uh, you know, whatever aspect of... Uh, What new things are you doing? I just have a crappy dehydrator. It was just like the $40 one at uh, Walmart. It's a little round one. It's got five trays with it. Uh, I, I don't know the brand name of it. It doesn't really matter. It's the crappy $40 one. Um, 
uh, but the good ones, they're big and they're square and they have like 10 trays in them and they're significantly more money. However, they do work very, very well. Uh, and I, off the top of my head, I couldn't uh, tell you what is a good brand name. However, there is somebody here in the chat who can tell you. I swear. All right. Who can answer uh, Mary Shiro's question as what is, is a good brand of dehydrator? The Excalibur. Thank you, uh, book. Thank you. Oh, right, Hickory Croft. That's a big question, right? That's awesome, Resonance. Yeah, keep using it. Do you know what I like dehydrating too? Mushrooms. I love to dehydrate mushrooms. Find a sale on them, chop them up, throw them in the dehydrator. You know, rehydrate them and put them in, a, in an omelet or into your spaghetti sauce. That's what that's one of my favorite things to dehydrate really is mushrooms. So easy book. It's so easy. Just put them in there and uh, let your dehydrator go. It doesn't matter if it goes for three days. They can't get over dried. You know what I mean? Um, however, um, uh, fancy tip that when you do rehydrate them, the stems can be a little bit rubbery. Wolfang, hello, welcome. It's good to see you. Uh, so if you if you don't want that, uh, you can just pull the stems off and just uh, chop up the caps and uh, dehydrate the caps. The Boddington's just putting your dehydrated mushrooms in a jar. Bravo. That's awesome. Casco. Hang on a second. Let me, I'll, I'll go uh, have a look at um, just a spaghetti sauce in the dehydrator for the first time. Okay. Uh, that should be cool. Um, snark. But I wouldn't suggest, it, like if there's meat in there, I wouldn't suggest it would have a long shelf life. Like it is fine to take out into the woods for a couple of weeks and rehydrate. Just make sure that all your noodles and your meat and everything, everything is all cooked dehydrate all of it and then pack it into bags and then when you take it out into the woods you can just pour hot water over it and and rehydrate it for sure but yeah dehydrating meats uh it, it will extend uh the dry shelf life on it for a good while but uh you know you gotta make sure if, when you cook those meats you gotta rinse all the fat off spaghetti sauce leather yeah man, that might be a kind of a thing yeah Can powder uh, mushrooms uh, too. Must get them super dry. Yeah, you got to get them super dry. Absolutely. And I mean eggs. If you've got a dehydrator, uh, get those uh, fruit roll-up trays and dehydrate your eggs. Grind them into a powder and they'll store in a jar. No problem for a year. But make sure they're super dry. Key, dehydrate. Get the moisture out. Oh, herbs and sauce. Gotcha, gotcha. That should dehydrate fairly well. Will you grind it into a powder or uh, just like break it up into chunks or like for storage? Yeah, I've been putting a, a, bu a bunch of meat up too, uh, Mary. And you know what? Uh, this last year here was my first year uh, on canning. Powder bacon. Really? That's cool. Oh yeah, uh, they work for sure, uh, Hickory Croft. And I mean, once you got powdered eggs into your stores, like obviously you've got flour too, I'm sure. And if you have flour and eggs and water, you can make pasta, right? 
or scrambled eggs or, or uh, eggs to uh, put into your baking or anything. I haven't uh, done any pickled eggs yet, uh, book club, but it's on my uh, agenda here for the next couple of weeks. I have a, a carton of eggs that's kind of starting to get old, so I want to uh, preserve those. Lime water, yep. Yeah. Yeah, store your eggs up to a year in, in lime water. Definitely. I haven't done that uh, myself. I don't have any chickens or anything like that. But There you go. Boddington has videos on, on uh, making the powdered eggs and such. Like There's so many people with uh, such great information that... Uh, See how easy it is to call on, right? Mustard pickled eggs. I, I've seen recipes for those, but I haven't tried them yet. I haven't tried it just yet. I'm for me. I'm gonna go for like a dill pickled egg for my uh, my first pickled egg. So we'll see. Yeah, yeah. Freezing them is a, 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 a thing for sure. However, the shelf life isn't as long as. You know, typically try and do the, the longest or the easiest sort of uh, storage we can do. But uh, yeah, uh, for a lot of us, we're, we're trying to go for the longest duration of, of shelf life we can get out of something. Especially if, you know, you've, you've got a, a hen house that's producing like 10 eggs a day and you're only using six a day type of deal so you're always left with a uh, surplus of four what are we going to do with all these eggs right so you start talking about pickling them or dehydrating them or whatever the case may be right well, lady wolverine welcome uh welcome to you from arkansas did you get any of that uh freezing rain and slush what not happening down there ask a prepper is the Alaska or Alaska for powdered bacon? Uh, you see, that's the thing about it, uh, Hickory Croft. A lot of people don't know who buy their eggs in grocery stores. Those eggs are already a month old, you know? So eggs do really store a long time, like just in a, in a cool place. You've heard uh, to uh, can only use fresh eggs and not store-bought washed eggs store that way well for pickled eggs you mean uh, for full circle oh you're on your way Liberty Bell well it's good to see you here uh, thank you for joining us um, I hope you uh, stay well and safe. stay warm uh, with this polar vortex we've got going on here The powdered eggs for long term. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, glassed eggs, yeah. Now, I, I know myself as a, you know, having had a culinary background, that when you boil an egg and peel an egg, if they're new eggs, you're going to have a crappy time boiling those and the membrane is going to stick to it. Hey, Ben, how you doing? And, and you're going to rip that egg apart and, you know, when you're going to do boiled eggs, it's better to use older eggs because that membrane will separate from the, the egg white a lot easier. I learned that early on in my culinary career.
Oh, for the water glass has to be fresh and not washed. Gotcha, gotcha. Nose picking. How long can gasoline be stored? Uh, doesn't it create sediment within? Um, it tends to separate. You can store gas for uh, six months, but if you put an additive into it, I understand you can probably get two years out of it. Uh, it's it's a, a type of fuel stabilizer. It could be called where you are. It could be called stay bill. Okay, book club has it right there. Stay bill. Yeah. That's a, a fuel treatment that can extend the, the life of your fuel and uh, help it not separate. But rotate out your gas anyways, you know. Uh, rotate out your stuff like, um, you know, I rotate out the batteries in my, uh, in my smoke detector and my uh, carbon monoxide detector. I do that with the uh, time change. If you're in an area where we have time change, hey, faithful prepper, welcome. It's good to see you. Maybe we can see a link to Faithful Prepper. Actually, Faithful, you've got a wrench. You can put your own link up if you want to. Plug your channel. Did you, Lori? Did you get him the coffee to go with it, too? That's awesome. Now, just go check my video and... Uh, you know, you'll know how exactly how to use it. It's so easy. Just take the thing out, stuff the coffee in it, put the water in, give it a stir, and put the thing on top. Um, yeah, right? Uh, Prepper Book Club. Like, do it on, um, you know, whatever occasions that uh, you guys have for yourselves that makes it easy to remember. If it's like, uh, you know... Um, uh, say Christmas and um, 4th of July, use those two dates or, or whichever is easiest for you to remember. So like when, like for me, when it's the, the time change, I just go ahead and I rotate all my batteries. And uh, if I have fuel stored, I rotate it out. Oh, thanks, Wolf. I appreciate that. That was a fun time, Wolf. What a nice day that was. It was cold, I tell you. We weren't on a whole lot of ice, Wolf. We were only on about six inches of ice. So it's a good thing we didn't drive the, the truck out there. But there were a few huts around us. It was a very nice time uh, of ice fishing. We weren't sitting there hardly a minute without, you know, one of us pulling a fish out of the water. It was great. Um, that was perch. Uh, I believe it was yellow perch, Wolf. The residence, yeah. Um, that's just it. Like, uh, you know, TJ pulled one out, out of her cupboard there uh, the other day, and uh, I'm not sure if she didn't know how to do it or, or if uh, there was people in the chat who were just making comments. They didn't know how to do it or whatever. So it's like, okay, all right. Seems like a lot of people don't know how to use one of these. So I just popped up a video because that's how I make my coffee every day, right? I don't. Uh, I gave away all my uh, electronic uh, coffee pots and that years ago. Uh, but uh, freehandly made, there you are. How are you doing? It's good to see you. I've seen your name here in the chat earlier. I'm not sure if you were there or if I'd missed you, but hello and uh, good evening. Welcome. It's good to see you. Um, we used to do some uh, pike and muskie fishing uh, when I was younger, uh, but a pike or a muskie isn't really a fish you want to deal with, to be honest with you. Honestly. Bibby, you on your way? All right, well, it's good to see you. Thank you so much for joining us. Stay well and safe, okay? Cowboy coffee. I'm not sure what cowboy coffee is. Wolf? Is there something in it besides coffee? or I've got some Baileys in the other room. I could probably put that in there, but the morning time is way too early for Baileys, I'll tell you that.
Oh, well, uh, Free Handley, I'll tell you, there's some great, uh, great channels here in the chat. Like, uh, you know, look to, to some of the ones that moderators are, are linking up. Hickory Croft, who just posted here, great channel. There's lots of good channels in here to learn from. So uh, just tons and tons of knowledge. What coffee to get? What kind of coffee does your dad like, Lori? Oh, um, don't get a fine grind. Make sure the grind is a little coarser, okay? Because fine grind is not necessarily recommended. But if you do use a fine grind, like I do, you will get some silt and sediment into the bottom of your coffee cup, which I don't mind. You just don't drink that last little bit. You just dump that out and rinse it out and you get yourself another cup. Uh, cowboy candy is awesome on uh, a cracker. Oh, well, cowboy candy, that's, that's a different, that's, that's jalapeno peppers, not, that's not coffee. Klingon? After five outdoors in the house? Well, Welcome. I hadn't seen them. I was probably too busy rambling and answering questions. I can't always see. Uh, you know, that's part of the problem of uh, hosting a live stream is you can't always see all the questions sometimes. And uh, I apologize if I missed anything. Yeah, get a coarser grind, but make sure it's the flavor that he likes. And I mean, you can get any flavor of coffee bean that you want, but uh, a fine grind is not recommended for a coffee press. Uh, cheesecloth, yeah, you could you could do that, I guess. Oh, thank you, Hickory Croft. Uh, do you know what? I've learned over time, like I, I have been doing live streams for, uh, well, uh, since probably September. So I've gotten used to... Um, how to go with the flow and, and I mean, uh, address the questions and, and sort of jump from one question to the other and not necessarily ha needing to catch every comment in between because sometimes the comments in between, that's chat going on inside the chat, right? So you just learn how to uh, sort of screen it and... Um, and then, you know, you do have to take a chance because, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, you have to take a chance to say, oh, I'm sorry. I missed some chat because I was doing this or that. I'm sorry I can't see everything. And that's, it's just a thing, you know. Uh, Residence Homestead, uh, you do amazingly well. Uh, oh, well, thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, thank you ever so much. That's very nice of you to say. Lori has a flea bag on her head. She sure does. She always does. Well, after five outdoors, I appreciate you being here. Sorry I hadn't said hello earlier. Uh, like I said, I can't see everything in the chat. I'm, I'm sorry I hadn't uh, said hello earlier. But welcome. I appreciate uh, having you here. Yeah, it's going to be a new skill set for sure. And that's something, uh, Hickory Croft, uh, because you're fairly new at doing this, that's something I want to advise you about is learn how to do it and don't feel bad about, like, if, if you uh, go through it quickly. A lot of, I see a lot of newer channels that when they're live streaming, they feel the dire need to read and address every little thing, even if it's somebody saying, I've got a flea bag on my head. You know what I mean? Um, don't feel obliged to do that. Look to the questions. Make sure you have... Um, or make sure you ask your uh, people in your chat to put the questions in bold so that you can see them. And then any other chit chat uh, in between that, maybe it's just chit chat inside the chat and people talking amongst the, uh, the other, because that is a huge thing. There's always five conversations going on inside the chat when there's one conversation going on inside the screen, right? So don't, don't forget that too. Nadine Wheeler, what? That's my daughter. Hey, honey. How you doing? I miss you too, dear. I got something for you. 
I miss you. We need to get together, you and I, young lady. Okay, if I miss any chat right now, um, I'm going to go ahead and apologize because my daughter is in the chat. And uh, I will be addressing her um, exclusively. Sorry, guys. Yeah, um, yeah, we need to get together. Uh, mask or no mask? Damn the masks. We need to make some worms and stuff, young lady. How are you? How are you? How is your brother? I hope you're both well. I'm so done with this frickin' lockdown business. Uh, go check one of my earlier videos, uh, Wolf, uh, at the beginning of this. I, I burnt the mask at the beginning. All right, Ben, that, that's a, a great uh, a great pointer for storing gas. Uh, gas without ethanol will store longer. Yeah, because there's nothing to separate, right? All right, honey. Um, well, uh, got to let each other know when we're available. I haven't worked in over a month, so it means I'm available but also broke. So... Doesn't mean I don't have food, though. I've, I've prepped for food, so we can still get together and eat nom noms and, and uh, do some fun stuff. Hey, you guys. I think Nadine Wheeler has a channel, too. I think it's mostly about gaming, but maybe if one of my awesome moderators could put a link up to her channel, maybe we could blow her numbers up a little bit, hold up a little, a little sister... Guys, we're all up about holding up a brother and a sister. There we go. Boom. Look at nose picking. Wow. We caught tons of fish. We caught lots of fish. So it's shaking, uh, young lady. What would you eat today? Somebody drank your beer. It's probably that uh, a bad cat of yours, Wolf Fang. Available but broke. <laughs> well, like I said, I haven't worked in five weeks. I don't know if it's the dang Rona or... Wow, Wolf, that was quick. Did Merlin go and get you a beer? Or did he drink it? Merlin probably likes beer. Nadine must have bounced. Down under, there you are. Nadine, if you're still here, what did you eat today, young lady? Oh, there you are. Broccoli with a bunch of spices and some spaghetti. All right, cool, sweetie. Yeah, and just, uh, you know, bust me a text. Uh, faithful Prepper, I have two. Two beautiful children. My beautiful, beautiful uh, daughter is in the chat here. Her name is Nadine. And this is her brother. And I'm blessed to have both of them. Patriot Sandwich Maker. Sandwich, even. Bang, sandwich. I could use a sandwich right now. You showed up just in time. Malachi, how you doing? Pamela, how you doing? Vitra, hey. How's it going? Grilled cheese. Uh, do you know what, Lori? We are over on uh, Colin's uh, live stream last night, you know, uh, Kincaid Outdoors. 
And Johnny Harper got to talking about his grilled cheese throwdown. Somebody did. Somebody did. So there's going to be a whole grilled cheese freaking bunch of videos happening. You want some ice cream? Okay. So do you want the uh, uh, the uh, jalapeno uh, ghost pepper ice cream? Or, or do you want like the uh, bacon caramel car bacon caramelized onion ice cream? Sweeney's Creek, there you are. Did we just get a sudden influx of uh, people into the chat here? Or? All the Aussies just getting out of bed? What's going on here? What's happening? I'm sorry, honey. Hey, we've made some stupid grilled cheese, haven't we? And I think that's what I'm going to put on the docket for. I'm going to make a, like a grilled macaroni and bacon uh, grilled cheese. An inside out one. Yeah, yeah. You, like get really stupid on it. You know, if you want to go grilled cheese challenge, you might as well throw down hard for what it is. All right, honey. Well, next time uh, we get together, what do you want to what do you want to cook? What do you what do you feel like cooking next time? What do you want to eat? Last time, uh, Nadine and her uh, her brother, my son, uh, Nate, got together. Uh, we made. Go ahead and tell them, Nadine. What do we make? I'll tell them. It's easier for me to say it than for you to type it. Uh, we made um, homemade chicken parmesan, like from scratch, all hammered out with all the right stuff and in ingredients and and homemade fettuccine alfredo. And they were both the best of either. I've ever had anywhere. Ever. It was fantastic. Lori, pick up some cheese when you go get the coffee. No, oh, what would you do? Uh, Pamela, uh, for your girlfriend's birthday, the uh, chicken parm? Sorry, Mary. What can I say? This is what I do for my, uh, my children or anybody that I love. Ooh, breakfast or dinner? You want to do that with pea meal and such? Ooh, I, yeah, I can show you a nice time with that. Mm, 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 mm. Beecher's got a pineapple for you, honey. Oh, for your son's girlfriend? Homemade. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Waffle fries. Ooh, daddy. Holy crap. What about waffle fry poutine? Now you're talking, you know, there's, there's a couple languages we can talk from one border to the other and, you know, put some bacon on it. Maybe just a drizzle of maple syrup on that caramelized bacon. Oh, God. Yeah. Grilled cheese with bacon and syrup. That's, it could be heart attack worthy, depending on how much you eat. And yeah, you know what? You might as well eat a lot of it. Grilled cheese, Colby Jack, provolone on sourdough. Um, you know what? That That's a thing. It's, it's uh, way better than uh, gov government cheese uh, and, you know, crap. Bomber Steve's got something to say. Good to see you, North Shore. On again, sharing the love. Hope all is good. Did you eat any of those perch? Bomber Steve. I ate some of them uh, during the video. And they were freaking delicious, my friend. Freaking delicious. Maple syrup in your beef jerky recipe. Dude, look at the big brain on book. Uh, all right, I'll go have my coffee down there in the morning, Laurie, and I'll I'll give you a wave. 
Um, I've never had grits, to be honest with you. It's, you know, see, the thing about food is uh, it's very regional, and we just don't get grits up here. It's just not a, it's just not on, on our menu. It's just like um, biscuits and gravy. It's not a thing for us. Uh, Bomber Steve, I think this was yellow perch, to be honest with you. And, oh, uh, absolutely freaking delicious. Out of the ice, wow. Oh, Greer. Yeah, Greer uh, sandwich. You know what? Greer is especially uh, well used on uh, the French onion soup. Oh, daddy. Oh, yeah. Where am I? I'm I'm on the north shore of Lake Ontario. I'm I'm freaking north. I'm north, and I'm on the north shore of Lake Ontario, about an hour east of Toronto. Ladies and gentlemen, in case you don't know, grilled Velveeta cheese sandwich. Dang, Roma, Ramona. I'm not so sure about that, but I won't. Discredit the Velveeta there. It does have its use and purpose. I'm sorry. I'm missing a whole bunch of stuff here Raclette raclette raclette. Hmm It sounds familiar book Go ahead and refresh us. Go ahead book Grits are a southern thing um, And everything is regional, you know, like it doesn't matter Yeah, just go ahead and allow that uh, one of my moderators, please, from Bomber Steve. Or I'll do it. Yeah, uh, Nadine, if you're still in the chat, uh, give me a, uh, shoot me a text tomorrow, hon, and uh, we'll organize a, a time where we can get together. I would love that. I miss you. I don't know how to make grits. I hear you use lard. Oh, you're on Lake Huron, uh, some of Michigan, and you got grits there. Okay. Well, it's just not a... I'm sure we probably have them here, but it's just not... Uh... It just has never been on my menu. I just It's not something I've come across to... I would love to try them. You know, it's not like I... know about them and and dislike them it's like i don't know about them and i'd be curious to try them you know i, I don't have a i don't have any um resistance into trying other foods it's just you know what's regional in our area that's pretty much what i kind of stick to because that's what's available Well, don't you stick some uh, lard on the griddle to, to fry those grits on, or? I don't know. Like, I really don't know. Well, Pamela, you need to get yourself a plate. Down under, okay. All right, well, it was good to see you. Uh, yeah, get your, get your stuff plugged in and charged up. And, uh, you know, you stay well and safe and, and have yourself a good day, all right? Grits topped. Anything topped with an over-easy egg. Yeah, put an over-easy egg in, in my frickin' uh, moccasin. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, sandwich. See, I don't know. Yeah, grits is a, a mystery to me. I don't know. I just don't know them. Uh, stay well and safe down under. Ah, oatmeal, you just have to pour water over it. Now, if you're smart, you add sugar to it, maybe a bit of milk, and uh, dehydrated blueberries or something, or some honey, you know. Exactly. Oats is a mystery to a lot of people, right? Eggs, uh, chorizo, uh, homemade uh, tortillas. Yeah, mm, yeah, that's a thing.
Billy, don't you call me this evening. Actually, you can call if you want to. A weekend lar uh, barbecue live stream. Okay, um, I'd like to be able to figure that out. Yeah, that would be cool. Kind of like cream of wheat. Yeah, yeah, it's one of those, I don't know about that area kind of deals, right? What do you mean? What do you mean, Billy? Amanda and Crystal are watching? All right, Amanda and Crystal, if you if you two are watching tonight, and if it's time to go to bed, I will wish you a, a very good evening. Good night, Amanda and Crystal. And if everyone else in the chat could say good, a nice good night to Amanda and Crystal, that would be very much appreciated. All right, Whiskey Woman. Anyone? Oh, books on it. There we go. Come on, guys. Oh, it was uh, it was super tasty. Very, very clean white meat. Very, very clean. Delicious. And out of the water, uh, uh, ice, fresh as can be. Thanks, guys, for saying goodnight to the young, young ladies. Appreciate that. Yeah, very, very clean white meat. Delicious. Delicious. You know, and to be honest with you guys, like, uh, you know, you, you saw me make the, the tartar sauce. For any of you guys watched that video. The tartar sauce is fantastic, but I think it's better kept for like an English style fish and chips. Uh, for this perch here, just a little squeeze of lemon. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Cold water perch. Cold water pike even is, is one of the best uh, fish I've ever eaten to be honest. And like, don't get me wrong, I love pickerel, but uh, I think cold water pike is one of the best fish I've ever eaten. All right, so what's everybody's plan for, for tomorrow? We're coming into the weekend. Uh, I don't fish a whole lot, to be honest with you, Ramona. Uh, if I do fish, I prefer to trout fish. I, uh, like, I, I do like some salmonoids, but the salmon itself I find very, very strong for me. Uh, I prefer a trout way over, uh, a salmon. And I'm, I'm not talking about a, a lake trout. I'm, I'm talking about, uh, you know, a speckled trout or whatever. Oh, hey, no worries, Billy. That's quite all right. And you young ladies there, you know, you, you got your good evenings, okay? So don't give Pops too hard, uh, hard a time and, and, you know, just go to bed and, and have yourselves a nice sleep and uh, a good rest, okay? Stay warm and safe, girls. Day of rest. Very nice. Bible and relax. Good. Perfect. Driveway is a sheet of ice. Okay. So you're not going anywhere. All right. Very good. Getting the truck worked on and uh, doing prepper haul. Ooh. Very nice. Then working on a garden. Whoa. Yeah. Garden isn't even in my vocabulary right now. Oh, you had a nice steak tonight. Faithful. Very, very nice. Sunday tomorrow, uh, you're making relish. Ooh, nice Sweeney's Creek. Uh, is it going to be just like a regular sweet relish, or are you going to make a dill pickle relish? Come on, come on, come on now. 
Yeah, knee deep in wild foraging. Last shed wars challenge this weekend. Oh, okay. Wow. Residents, okay. Very good. See, if I have some salmon, I want to smoke it. I want to smoke it and uh, glaze it with maple syrup. That is like meat candy, that right there. Oh, yeah. Smoked uh, smoked trout or salmon glazed with maple. Ho, 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 ho. Uh, okay, Laurie. Uh, you know, well, I'll keep you uh, in my prayers. Cutting up 30 pounds of tomatoes, salt overnight, then uh, cooking uh, up relish tomorrow. Wow, bomber. Nice, Steve. Yeah, it's just, that's unfathomable to me here. It's minus 15, right? It was hate fishing, actually, uh, to be honest with you. It was just a fantastic day. Uh, you're going out to the bush and chopping wood? Okay, Bill. Going to try and stay warm. I plan to stay in this weekend. Just do some organizing around and, uh, you know, some more education. Getting some preps on. Like techie type preps. What do you get if you cross a kangaroo with a sheep? Not sure. Honey Badger's gained 16 subscribers tonight. Is that right? Isn't that wonderful? Love that. Bravo, guys. All right, Honey Badger's. Okay, now we're starting to do our part. Hold up our brother and our sister. Do your part, and uh, when you make your videos, just talk a little bit louder so we can hear you. Don't get me wrong, I turned the volume up on your videos, uh, but uh, yeah, that, that'll help. It's, it's just a little thing, right? Yeah, maple glazed salmon, absolutely. Ten thousand step goal, wow, very good. New incubator, very good. I'm not sure what a woolly jumper is, but okay. Enjoy that. <laughs> You're welcome, Bill. If the girls liked it, then, you know, that's good. Okay, Faithful Prepper. It was uh, good to see you. Thank you for dropping by. Stay well and safe, and have a wonderful weekend, okay? Stay warm. Well, here it is, sandwich. Big polar vortex. So everybody needs to stay warm. Yeah, Ben, you see, I don't know anything about grits. Like, nothing. I have, uh, like, I, I, I watch a lot of uh, Food Network uh, programs and Stuff like that, and I just, I just don't have it mentally here for grits. I would have to be shown by a grits aficionado, right? Happy Valentine's, Billy! Big old kiss there, brother. You see, if anybody doesn't know Ontario Homestead, maybe we can have a link to that. Billy's a great guy. He's got a, a lovely family, and uh, you know he's doing his homestead uh, down there in southern Ontario, raising hog and bees and. A nice uh, a greenhouse with a wood stove in it, and he's got a lot to offer. So if we could see a link to Ontario Homestead, that would be wonderful. Help hold up our brother. 101, really? How you doing, brother? Welcome. It's good to see you. We're just having a big old chin wag about the stuff. And just talking about, uh, you know, what we're all doing tomorrow. It's we got the polar vortex going on. How are you spending your uh, tomorrow or, or weekend 101? 
if anybody doesn't know uh, Prepping 101, maybe uh, go ahead and put up his link and um, give him some support, too. Our cabin in the woods, even. No way. How you doing? Good to see you. Look at you guys go. Look at my moderators. They're wonderful. Yeah, Ontario Homestead. Billy's great over there. Although he does drunk call me sometimes on a Tuesday, and we end up talking until ungodly hours. And, uh, yep, that's Billy. I love him. Look at you guys go. I don't even have to ask for it. You're going to see to get better internet tomorrow. Hey, you know what? One <laughs> you know what? 101. That's a great prep. <laughs> and, you know what? Well, we, we prep for the things that we need. Just as long as you stay warm in this polar vortex, dress up if you need to go out or if you need to do it over the phone or whatever. You're good, right? Oh, come on now, Billy. Behave yourself. Vitra, you got 69 subs? Maybe we could see a link to Vitra's. Maybe you'll get some more. What, was it all choppy or something? Or were you like a circle of doom? 101? Like, what, what, what's up? When you go back to past lives, you can't find the chat. Let's go back on, on links uh, on some of them. Huh? You know what? Sometimes they show up and sometimes they don't. Depends how fresh uh, the live stream is. You might have to wait a little bit, like a day or so, until you can find it. And then, you know, sometimes it, it just it doesn't show up. It, it, it's weird. It is a little weird. Oh, Hickory Craft. Well, you know what? If, if you're on your way, uh, that's uh, awesome for you to uh, have come and joined us. Um, I've been watching your videos, and you guys are making fantastic videos. So, uh, if anybody doesn't know Hickory Craft Farm, maybe we can get a link to them before they head out. And uh, go, go support those guys. They're a, a good, uh, growing, smaller channel with fantastic information, guys. Uh, we need to uh, hold up. Uh, those brothers and sisters for sure because they've got a wealth of information to share you guys are awesome oh uh, by the way uh, 101 thanks for the raid much appreciated You've been doing good with those raids. I was over on, um, I was hanging out over at Broussard's last night when you raided over there. And I had never actually been in a chat uh, when it had gotten raided before, in like in somebody else's chat. So that was pretty cool. Uh, don't give it a second thought, Hickory Croft. I, I hold up, uh, you know, brothers and sisters that I see, I, I deem worthy of that. Like, and you guys, you guys are it. Oh, it helped the numbers of Broussards uh, last night. Actually, they went from three point three to well over uh, three point uh, three point five. So, yeah, they they uh, crossed the milestone for sure. Uh, it was great, and uh, it helped my numbers too. I've got. 378 likes on this uh, chat, and there's like 44 people in here, so it, it helped on this one as well, so thank you very much. It's much appreciated. Yeah, well, you know what, 101? Um, it's just what, what we do. We just hold each other up in a, in a way that uh, we do, you know? And it doesn't matter who it is. 
Like, uh, I'll hold up Alaska Prepper the same as I'll hold up you or uh, um, Honey Badger Homestead in here who's got or who had 10 subscribers or whatever when we started this stream. I'll hold everybody up the same way. As long as they got good uh, content and something to offer, hold up your brother and your sister. And I appreciate that you're doing the same thing. Um, and I think we all should, right? Like any of us who end up getting any number of subscribers and have actually begin to have a voice that people will listen to, we need to shout out these other channels that have great content. We would be remiss if we did not. You rated Bear Independent last night? <laughs> Bravo. Well, if you did, uh, if, if you guys are talking, tell him I said hello. And tell him I love what he's doing with the Grindstone Ministries. And do you know what? Uh, 101, you got a wrench there. Can you uh, go ahead and throw up a link to uh, Bear Independent here, please? Or any any one of my uh, awesome moderators can please do that Uh for us. Bear Independent is a wonderful channel. I don't get over there a whole lot. Um, I do from time to time. Um, but I'm like, I'm really freaking busy with everything else. So, uh, but yeah, absolutely. The Grindstone Ministries. If you guys don't know Bear Independent, uh, he's got an organization called Grindstone Ministries and um, they go out of pocket, free, no charge, feather and down, welcome. Free, no charge, out of pocket. They go in like build structures and stuff for places who rehabilitate uh, people who have been enslaved in the sex trade, like children, right? So, Go hold up Bear Independent and his Grindstone Ministries. And maybe we can have a link to the Grindstone Ministries as well. Because I'm sure there's, uh, that's probably a, se a separate uh, link to that. Uh, yeah. If you're going to support anything, support the rehabilitation of those who have been uh, lured into the uh, sex slavery. Support the rehabilitation of those people, please. I think that's the best cause ever, to be honest with you. Feeding people is good, for sure. Rehabilita uh, rehabilitating people who have been enslaved is better. One's not better than the other, but, you know. Thanks for dropping in, 101. I'm glad it. Uh, I'm glad you did, so that uh, that could be mentioned. If that's the only thing that happens uh, from you dropping in here, then that's pretty much the best thing that happened in my day, because that channel and name should be shouted out. See, there's. See, that's it. A little channel like me can shout out Bear Independent. Hold him up, because he's got a good message, like one of the best messages. Right. Uh, good day again. Only moderator on Gray Man. Oh, okay. Oh, that's quite all right, Oz. Uh, don't give it a second thought. Uh, you know, we all have things to do, and uh, it, honestly, don't give it a second thought. And uh, welcome back. It's good to see you. I appreciate that one one. Yes. Wow. That's a big cause. I think more of us uh, should support. Frickin' Billy. I said you can call, but call after. Ontario Homestead here in the chat. He's calling me here. 
he hung up or something, or maybe his kids got a hold of the phone. I didn't shut it off. All right, well, you're back to Gray Man. Tell Gray Man we said hello. We love him. Maybe we can see a link here for Gray Man. Hold up that, brother. Maybe, yeah. Maybe, no. Oh, Sweeney's Creek, you're on your way? All right, then. Stay well and safe. Uh, oh, uh, yeah. enjoy that relish. Yeah. I'd actually like to be there making it with you. If it was air conditioned. We're a big fan of air conditioning up here. And it's not 35 degrees all the time. Gray Man's got merch. Hey, North. Hey, North. Yeah, man. What do you want? Gray Man got merch. He sure does. He sure does. That's a pretty funny joke. You know what? Ark's got pickle juice. Guaranteed he's got pickle juice in his truck. Probably got it in a sock. No, for shit's sakes. All right. You gotta let it ring longer than that, Billy. Oh, there it is. Hang on a second. Billy's on the phone from Ontario Homestead. Hello? 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 How are you? I'm well. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm fantastic. How are you? I'm living my best life in a pandemic. <laughs> happy plan. Happy pandemic. Happy pandemic. Yes. All right. Well, so uh, just so you know, I've, I've got you on um, speakerphone, and I'm running a live stream right now, so everybody can hear you. Yes. So if if you'd like to introduce yourself. My name is Crystal. Hi, Crystal. Hi. How are you this evening? I'm doing very well. What are you doing? I'm actually hanging out with Bill. Oh, say hi to Billy for me. I love Billy. He's in the other room. I can't really. I didn't mean right now. I just meant over the course of the evening. Oh, okay. And I'm sitting next to Amanda. We're actually watching uh, Modern Family. Oh, okay. I'm not sure what that is, but awesome. Well, TV show, but, um, so yeah, you actually made me blush, and Amanda, too, when you did the shout-out to Goodnight. <laughs> well, that, that would have been my whole chat that did that, because everybody said goodnight to you. I know! <laughs> Well, it's not my fault. Billy asked me to do it. I'm still giggling about it. Billy asked me to do it, and I love Billy, so, you know, I thought, okay, there you go, girls. Good night, that was, ladies. That was pretty important. Thank you very much. You're more than welcome. So what are you doing tonight? Oh, not much. I'm just in the middle of hosting a live stream. Oh? Yeah, not, not, a, not a whole lot. Nothing important. <laughs> you know, the the members in the chat don't mind, I don't think. I'm not sure. Nobody's told me I'm uh, a nobody's told me I'm a goof yet, so Oh uh, no, I don't think you're a goof. I think you it's okay. Do I wanna hear a joke? Yep. Yeah, yeah, what's the joke? Why did they make glow in the dark condoms? Why did they make glow-in-the-dark condoms? Um, I don't know. Why did they make glow-in-the-dark the condoms? So gay men can play Star Wars. May the Force be with you. Is anybody defending them? I'm really sorry. <laughs> 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 I love you. <laughs> 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 
That wasn't bad. <laughs> Your lightsaber, you yeah. My entire weekend. <laughs> yeah. So are you guys having fun over there? Yeah. Yeah? We're having a few pops. <laughs> no. We um, haven't watched Chick Flicks yet. <laughs> we demoed two bowls of popcorn. Heavily salted, lots of butter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was mm -hmm. down earlier making pizza. <laughs> it smelled like we were having a stroke. <laughs> Nobody was on. We're good. I, I had a nice fish fry tonight. A uh, nice fresh perch right out of the uh, out of the ice yesterday. I'm a catfish girl myself. Well, we saw a catfish, but we weren't fishing for those. That's okay, I'm just live streaming you. It's all right. Is everybody having fun? You, you know what? Yeah, we're all actually all enjoying it. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, no worries. Uh, listen, thanks for the call. I appreciate you. Um, and I'm glad you guys are having a fantastic evening. That's awesome because I love Billy, you know, and uh, if, uh, if you guys are having fun, he's having fun, everything's good. Uh, I'm good with that. Yeah? Sure. Why not? So, I'm a, I'm a first-time uh, virgin learner. That's what they call it. Um, so what's your channel about? So what's what, what, what? What is your channel about? Oh, my channel. My channel is about, uh, like, preparedness and, and just, like, uh, you know, being being uh, ready in case uh, anything goes wrong, uh, that you have the ability to to not starve and. No, I don't have my garden in yet for the person that just asked. Uh, <laughs> I can't see the comments. Billy's just asking. I can't see the comments either. I'm trying to interact with the phone and. But uh, but this is sure fun. Um, no, I'm, I'm, I'm very much in the, like, readiness with Billy, like, I'm a PSW, so, um, we've gone over the gauze and the scissors and making sure that we have all those things, they're very much up to date, and the sutures and all that fun stuff. Well, the medical aspect is super, uh, a super important, uh, part of your preps, for sure, right? But once you got it covered, you got it covered, right? Now, when you're... Yeah. When you're talking stuff about food and ongoing food, you know, once you got your food put back, you got to use it and rotate it out. Um, I mean, and then your food yeah. runs into your livestock and that has to be kept. And you get, if you got birds, you get eggs and, and, you know, birds have an attrition of life. And, you know, if you're raising pigs, then, you know, they, they have a time when you want to knock them on the head. I have learned how to herd pigs to go to slaughter. Um, <laughs> Billy is very educational because um, I am very much an animal lover and typically if an animal dies, I am one to cry, but I actually understand the concept of, you know, we all need meat until it gave me to Luke. <laughs> Poor little cow. <laughs> yep. I was a little devastated, but... Um, you, you, when it comes to Billy, uh, yes, we've, we've done the food readiness, we're doing all of those things, chickens, the cows, the greenhouse, the garden, everything. So. <laughs> Do you know what? I have some instructions. Okay. Good night. There you go, Billy. <laughs> she's going to hate me for that. If I ever meet her, she's going to punch me right in the face. <laughs> oh, shit.
I know that, Billy. Listen, don't you let her punch me in the throat. But that was fun. That was a good time. <laughs> hey, Billy asked me to. You can see it right up there in the chat. It's, it's right there. Hang up on them. Please, dear Lord, hang up. If you ever loved me, Sean, hang up. Uh, and like I, I, I consider a, Billy a, a guy, I could rely on him or he could rely on me. So, I mean, uh, uh, Billy, don't let them punch you in the throat either. <laughs> hey, Billy said hang up on her, uh, Sandwich. Come on now. You can't pin all that on me. Yes, I did it, but only on Billy's request. Uh, bro code, 100%. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, if he's not around when she's around, i got to have to wash my throat if she's, like, swinging knuckles. I gotta be ducking and such. Billy, keep the girls well and safe. Tell her I'm sorry. Tell her it was you that did it. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna call her back and tell her it was you. Screw you, Bill. Hang on a second. This is a bro code, but only to a certain point. You just got punched? All right, well, I'm going to make a phone call to make sure it happens again. Yeah, here it comes, Billy. Wait, wait, wait. Wait a second. How do we make this thing work? Let me figure this out. Telephone. Here we are. We're in the telephone, Bill. It's coming. Don't you shut our phone off. All right, just hit the dial button. I'm going to put this on speaker. Hello. Hey, lady, how you doing? Good. All right. So I just want well, I just wanted to call back and apologize. Um uh, with the utmost hope that you never punch me in the throat, okay? Well, that's good, but it wasn't me talking to you. It's good stuff. Yeah, well, uh, you, know. you you can do your best to extend that message to her or just put me on speakerphone. Yeah, punch in the dick. Punch in the dick? Yes. yes. Well, some I people... I don't agree with bro code. That's such a gimmick. Well, hang on a second. Some people like a punch in the dick, but I'm not one of them, all right? But, you know, you just got to figure out which person likes it and which person doesn't. Right? Life is a big long... Oh, <laughs> Billy didn't like it, did he? Okay, everyone, Ontario Homestead does not like a uh, punch in the dick. Uh, just, just for the record, uh, that's at uh, three hours, uh, four minutes, and 26 seconds. All right. Punch in the duck. Okay, so anyways, I just wanted to call, call and apologize uh, and hope I never get a punch in the throat from one of you ladies because it was Billy's... I'm throwing this right back at Billy. He told me to do it, to hang up on it all. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, I mean, I followed the bro code first. Um, bro code is a gimmick. We're all people. Make your own choices. Do you know what? Bro code is definitely a gimmick, especially if you're, like, gushing blood out of one of your major arteries and you need your medical officer to help you out. Mm hmm So I just wanted to call up and smooth that one over. You're fine. In case I'm ever bleeding out, I don't want I'm one of you to... I, I don't want to... <laughs> I don't want one of you to saunter slowly up to me, watching me bleeding out, saying, huh, look at that guy. 
He's bleeding out. Put the fucking gauze on. Get the tourniquet. <laughs> I'll help you to the best of my natural born abilities. I know, I know. I just want to call and smooth things over. You're fine. You're good. Awesome. All right. Well, have, have yourselves a fantastic evening then, all right? You too. All right. I, I will say... I will say then good evening <laughs> this time instead of just hanging up like a dick. Okay. All right. Good night. <laughs> Take care. <laughs> That's awesome. You got to do that, guys. You got to do that. You got to smooth over your shit. Even if a dick like Billy. See that guy, Ontario Homestead? <laughs> Sorry, Billy. Had to. It was in the duck. You got to punch in the duck. I don't know how phones work that well at all. Actually, Billy, really. It's like I know how to use it to make a phone call. And I can put you on um, speakerphone. Or I can text you and then take a picture and then send it. That's what I can do. So, yeah, that's... Um, my limited capabilities with that. That was a lot of fun. It was enjoyable. Little interlude. Oh my god, Billy. Uh, yeah, we probably should, to be honest with you. Uh, that would be like bed lemon mayhem, I'm sure. If you and I got together and live streamed together. I don't know. I like the idea, though. Don't get me wrong. I do like the idea. So has anybody out there got any pickles? Somebody said they were making pickles this evening. Uh, no, someone said they were making relish. Pickles, pickles, pickles. We want pickles, need pickles. Boom, look at Harvey. Sharing up the love. That is freaking awesome. Harvey rocks. If anybody doesn't know Harvey Black, go check him out. He rocks. Just saying. Gherkins for the first time even sandwich. Did you put on a sandwich? Sandwich? What kind of sandwich was it? Sandwich? Or did you have them with a sandwich? Beside a sandwich? On top of a sandwich? Sandwich? Come on, sandwich. Yeah, they're, they're a little sweeter, aren't they? On the side with a sandwich. What kind of sandwich was a sandwich? Come on. Come on, come on. Need a sandwich style sandwich. I love it too, Harvey. I guess I have a channel. Uh, so I do it on there too. Turkey and cheddar with a gherkin. Woohoo! Now, did you have any lettuce or tomato on there? Come on now. Toasted wheat. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. Now we're getting somewhere. Mayo or mustard. Mayo or mustard. Come on now. Come on. Any onions on there? No mayo, no mustard. Oh, wow. A purist even sandwich. Wow. Much respect then. Pickles straight out the jar. My brother, Metal for Breakfast, a lot of you guys know him. Oh, God. He would drink the frickin' pickle juice. Dude, honey mustard. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm mm You got your phone back, Bill. Oh, nice. Congratulations. That, that's actually a uh, pretty quick recovery. Uh, good for you. A very quick recovery on that. So oftentimes, in a situation like that, that phone will be gone till tomorrow. Well, you, you know how it goes. I don't have to 
<laughs> I don't have to tell you, Billy. What's for breakfast tomorrow, guys? Oh, the beet juice. Oh, yeah? Mmm. Grits for breakfast. Dang you. All right. Sandwich. I'm going to have to... I'll go look at making some grits. Yeah, yeah, I know what you're doing there, Sandwich. Oh, I know, I know. Thank you. I'm, I'm just remiss uh, in the grits. Nah, it was fun, Billy. It, it was fun. Thank you, by the way. Yeah. The, hope to keep your ladies well and safe there. The kids. James Clone's got a, a different uh, name, don't he, Harvey? Cherokee Prepper or something, isn't it? Cherokee Survival? Chocolate chip waffles, even. You know what you can do with a waffle maker? Check this out, secret. All right. Now, you're, you're talking about chocolate chip waffles. So, mm, okay. Uh, due to some recent uh, immediate uh, quick deduction, shares to me the idea that you have a sweet tooth. However, those people who are a salty dog, go ahead and take your, uh, you know, your fine shredded uh, hash browns that you fry in a pan. Throw those in a waffle maker. <laughs> And then, put an egg on top of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get your big brain out. <laughs> Malachi's losing his mind trying to find a grits recipe. Awesome. Chocolate croissant and a mug of sweet, uh, sweet coffee. Now, sweet coffee. All right, up here... Uh, I take a, I'll, I'll take a cup of coffee, like from the takeout store, about this big. Uh, I think it's probably 16 ounces, and I'll say I want it triple, triple. It means three shots of sugar, three shots of cream. That's pretty sweet. Some places in the states, I hear they call that uh, sweet and light, or light and sweet, or whatever, right? Yeah, you're going to need a hearty breakfast on yeah, Billy. Yeah, for sure. Do you have any baked beans in there? Or what's what's on the menu, Billy? Come on, out with it. I'm going to be having pea meal tomorrow myself. You know some of my homemade uh, pea meal? I'm going to be having some pea meal, some probably over easy eggs, or I, I may just leave them kind of sunny side up and steam the top a bit. Have that over uh, English muffin. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Do you know what? Ugh, I should do it with fish. Got lots of perch in there. Mmm. Cherokee, uh, yeah, okay, Cherokee survival. I thought so. Thank you, Harvey. Oh, there's so much you can do with a waffle iron. Yeah. You got to think outside the box, guys. And you know what? You got to do that with your preps, too. Especially uh, with your food preps. You know, if you just store up some rice and beans and nothing else to help that out, it's going to be a real boring long time on those rice and kidney beans if you don't have other ways to you know kind of make that happen or whatever right so 
Food talk is, is really good talk because it can help expand our minds on how we store our preps, right? Sugar sandwich as a kid. I've heard of that, but I've, I've never had that. Well, do you know what? Rice and beans will have enough calories as long as you take enough in. It may not have uh, enough fats in it. Okay. Oh, beans for lunch. Nice, nice. Yeah, yeah. Like rice and beans is pretty much a complete meal because you got your carbs, you got your fiber, you got your protein in there. Um, but it is lacking in fats. Absolutely. So uh, sandwich maker, uh, that's a, a great, uh, a great point you bring up there. So you got to figure out a way to include fats into your diet, right? Healthy fats. Now that could be from fish or whatever else or bacon, whatever. I'm not sure how healthy bacon fat is, but screw it. In a grid down situation, butter on my bread is going to be a happy thing. Or, or bacon renderings, right? Spices and herbs, absolutely. Harvey, 100%. Beans always cause wind. Well, you got to boil them out first. And uh, that, that actually helps with that. Malachi, but yeah, beans, beans, a uh, magical fruit. The more you eat them, the more you toot, right? Brown sugar on toast with butter. I remember uh, when when my mom's married pops, and we moved out to the farm, da da da, da and so we uh, we moved out there, and it was just fresh, and we're living and doing this and that, and you know, it was an operating beef and hog farm so there was work there to be done and the first day that uh we were left alone with pops you know we were outside in the morning doing our chores whatever it was on a farm and he's like okay all right well it's lunchtime. we best go in and have lunch so he took us inside and he cooked up some lunch and it was beans on toast and my brother and i had never had that before and we thought it was freaking awesome. <laughs> so when mom came home from work, we were like, wow, dad's a fantastic cook. Right? And it was beans on toast. Seriously. Uh, and it was, it was, you know, it was something different to us we had never had before. And it was actually really good. Right? And then, of course, we went outside and continued to sh shovel cow manure or pitch hay or whatever it was we were doing that day, right? Or raise a tractor shed or whatever it was we were doing. But, uh, yeah, beans on toast is a thing. Oh, Lake Fairy Prepper. Maybe we could have a link for her channel up here, too. Uh, Phoebe, no, I'm not still alive. No, um, no, uh, just don't make eye contact, anyone. Nope, you don't see me here. Nope, I'm not live. Still, no. Yeah, Malachi, they, they can play the fart game, right? <laughs> Sorry, Phoebe. Welcome back. It's good to see you. And yeah, we we're just having a bunch of fun here and cutting up a bit. But lots of great information shared here tonight. Lots of wonderful people here in the chat. Lots of wonderful people in the chat with fantastic information. Which is why I love doing these things. Because the people we get in here, it's like, holy crap. It's like, really? Wow. You know? And they're smaller channels. When you go check them out, like Hickory Croft, right? That is a smaller channel that has a wealth of information. Just fantastic information. 
if you spend the time to go through their videos and take the time to hang out in their live streams and stuff like that, uh, absolutely uh, a fountain of information, right? Better fart than sing Love's in the Air. <laughs> well, yeah. If I had someone uh, to do that, I'd go eat some beans right now and then, uh, you know, maybe do a Dutch oven later. Anyone ever done the Dutch oven? I'm sure you probably have. And I don't need confirmation on that. Just enjoy that for yourselves. <laughs> yeah, just reminisce fondly on that by yourself. It's quite all right. And when I get the chance to do it, I will re reminisce fondly on it myself. Are you talking to me, Billy? It's S-H-A-W-N. If you're talking to a different Sean, that's okay. Uh, I don't have the StreamYard thing, Billy. I heard there's a free way you can do it, but I'm not sure. Uh, like, you know me, I'm not freaking techie. I'm about as techie as you are, Billy. Maybe even more techie. I went out and bought a freaking cord, okay? So screw you, Bill. Oh, Paragon Ridge Ranch, how do you do? Good evening and welcome. It's good to see you. Good to see you indeed. We've just been we've been on here a while, like uh, three and a half hours a while, and um, I was just thinking about uh, kind of winding things up. To be honest with you guys. All right, well, Paragon Ridge Ranch, do you have a channel? If you do, maybe one of my awesome moderators could bust up a link here so that we can share your channel out. Maybe get some more viewers and subscribers over there. Patriot 111% er. Yep, check them out. Uh, you know what, Phoebe, I saw your comment on that, and I'm not so sure. Because, all right, listen, all right, the comment you made, I'll address it right now. I'm, I'm not going to go back into the, uh, into the uh, video and answer it. I'll just go ahead and answer it right now. I was not half lit. That was fully lit. That was fully lit, still up. I wasn't, I didn't just wake up and was sipping on some... Uh, Bailey's or nothing like that. I was I was still up and completely lit. <laughs> uh, you know what? I can I can do readings on Sunday mornings if you guys want me to. Um, but uh, it would just be like a random one where I would you know kind of pick up the book and just blindly open it, put my finger in, and do one of those. And start reading. You know what I mean? I can do that if you want. Fully lit. Yeah, I was fully lit. Yeah, we can do that. Yeah, yeah Billy, you know what? Okay, so if you put the wifey on it, there's a, a I think there's a, a free way that you can do um, that, uh, um, what's that thing you call it? the live stream thing? Please, anyone, come on, help. StreamYard. I think there's a free StreamYard that you can do where, Billy, I think you can send me an email, and then I can go to that email, click on it, and then we can jump on and uh, do a live. Zoom, I don't, I don't have the Zoom thing. I've never explored that, but 
that's uh you know maybe that's a phoebe says zoom is a thing so okay but Streamyard is the uh, easiest way i know how to do it uh billy uh hit up broussard homestead uh ask brett how to do that free uh, Streamyard thing Gorilla glue. Oh my god. Uh. It's not that, is it? This stuff. That shit sticks to everything. Yeah, don't get that in your eyebrows or your hair or anything. But yeah, definitely not in your eyelashes either. Yeah. Could I do a, lo a love raid on Gray Man Prepping? Is, is he live now? We, we've got, only got 29 in here. I could. Sure could. Okay, everyone's asking for a love raid on um, Gray Man Prepping. So, uh, absolutely. Let's have a link. And, you know, if as long as uh, everyone in the, uh, the chat is... Willing to participate, yeah. We can go hammer down on Gray Man. What's he doing? Who's he got? Let me just go set it up myself. So I can go over too, okay. Come on, Mods. Gonna need a link to uh, Gray Man. So that everyone in the chat can go raid him and share some love. Scoos me, scoos me, scoos. Gray man prepping. Looks like he's live, guys. Feel free. Don't wait for me. Go on in and hammer down on the left. Go on. You know, Hutch is a smart dude, and I'm, I'm sure his son is, is, you know, being taught the right way. I mean, I saw that video of the property and stuff, man. Mm -hmm. That was awesome, dude. I mean, I was so proud of that young man. I was like, man, that's what that's. Man, if more of our kids were like that, we would we would be so much better off today, you know, seriously. I agree, brother. I think that's if our youth could follow that lead and, and get more people on board with that, man, it would be uh uh Hey Merrick, uh, guys. Uh, Share okay, down so the love I, heart. I guess I must have did something. Lots and lots and lots. See, we've got a saying. If you mention someone, they will come. And <laughs> you just was talking about running right now. Just you. talking about more sure, man. <laughs> oh God, Morris! Thank you so much, Morris. Sure. You, you know, I love you, brother. You've been, you've been, been doing this for a while, man. And you know, North, I, I say it over and over again. I probably said it a hundred times in different times in my channel, but North Shore helped build me to where I'm at today. He was one of the, I say, founding fathers of the Gray Man Prepping. You know, I started and I started hanging out in North Shore. We started doing raids together. Um, yeah, me too. Got, and got to got you know and got to know each other and it was pretty cool because North is an interesting cat man and uh, like I said he's been doing this for a while. Uh, I wish I could get a hold of North sometimes easier. You know what I mean? Because uh, he doesn't check his email. Right. <laughs> well, North, they, awesome. Yeah, North. What what they're doing, North Shore and and Monster Draft and them. That that's really good stuff they're doing, man. I, I'm very appreciative that that North Shore and Monster Draft and them they. Man, that's that's just really cool what they're doing, you know, and it, it helps each other. Out. Hammer that button, guys! Hammer the like button. What they're doing, man. you know, and it, it's a love raid. Remember that whole gray man got merch uh, saying that was popping all over the place for a while. I yeah. Made, yeah, I made a shirt that had that on the back of it. I think it, I think it said "Uplift your brother and sister," and I told more sure I put that on the back of the shirt because I believe um, that was the uh, the right thing to say. You know what I mean? Because that's what it's about, man. Beautiful. You know. Keep uh, keep on it, guys. Really, you know, just keep driving the love. What, man? And I say keep driving the love. It's just because there's so much divisiveness in this world, and I think Patriot Three Percent, you've had this discussion as well. And uh, yeah, hold up your brother and your sister. Agreed, North Shore. That's right, North Shore. Um, and and you know, 
with all hey, the shit, I'm a moderator on here too. <laughs> nice. And keep that love going. You know what I mean. And uh, hopefully, when I, you know, when I, when I get big enough, and I have, you know, you know, let's say three or four hundred people watching me, maybe I can do this, man. And maybe I can bring you up to smaller channels because we're not those guys. I mean, everybody starts somewhere. You know, some of us have been doing it for a few months. Some of us have been doing it for, you know, ten years. You know what I mean? Um, I think that hold up your brother and your sister. Is, is, is awesome. Keep sending the love, guys. Love. Keep pounding it in there. How I think of the, the YouTube uh, verse is everybody has something to add. You know, we may have a difference of opinion on certain things, and having a discussion about it is cool. There's no need to get hot headed or any of that BS like that. But I think that what we need to do yeah, is it's, it's, it's therapeutic sometimes to get a little hot headed. I mean, yeah, I understand that, but you shouldn't. Uh, I, I say not disrespect anybody. You know what I mean? You, know, you, you have some sort of boundaries. You know what I mean? Because uh, it should be. Sure. Come on, guys. I, I, I practice hammer the love down. Patience, tolerance, and humility. Mercy, compassion, and understanding. If that doesn't work, kick their fucking ass. <laughs> right. Well, I, I'll tell you something that I that I really think that is really important um you know not everybody has the money to order you guys stay here a minute billy that drank my uh, you'll, beer you'll hear a lot of people say, be right back if you don't get a burkey then you're just you might as well not buy one and i'm thinking to myself well what about this buddy of mine over here that i that i personally know that he don't make much money, but he, he tries to prep the best he can. He, he's a prepper, you know, but he just, his family and just his conditions and, and his, his money, he just don't have the money to buy these more expensive products, you know. Right. And I'm like, man, I don't like discouragement. Instead, I'm like, well, if you can afford a zero, if you can afford a water filter, period, it's better than not having one at all. You know, <laughs> You know, and that's that's kind of that's, like, that's that's me. You're describing me. I, I have I have no money, uh, <laughs> but, yeah. but I, I have gear. I do. I got the Sawyer Mini. Thank you, G man. Uh, yeah, yeah. You you've got to make do. Uh, you got to make do with what you got. You know, and it's 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 funny that you guys say that. Um, so people have been asking me, you know, about the gear, some of the gear that I've been reviewing, and the reason I'm reviewing this is because I'm trying to find cheaper alternatives that are still functional and that could work for you like the stove that i did it's like six bucks for the stove huh? the machete was like 15 or 20 bucks you know because some of us can't afford you know a bench made knife that costs 200 dollars or something like that yes I have. It's, it's something well, we'd love to have but you know it's just sometimes it's not in the books for us you know i would i would rather see someone have uh ozark trail fold out a uh, multi-tool mm -hmm. and they if they're in a car accident and they're able to bust their window out and cut their seat belt and get, and get out of there safely i would rather see them have an ozark multi-tool than a you know 95 dollar letter leatherman you know what i'm saying right. if they, they might not can afford the 95 dollar leather so you know you can get a one of them ozark ones at, at wally world for you know, 10 bucks or something, you know, 12 bucks. And it's better than nothing, you know. And if it saves your life or it gets you out of a bind, how much is it really worth, you know? And right. I'll tell you, I've broken all that expensive stuff before. <laughs> <laughs> I have. <laughs> everything, everything. I should I should do reviews. I, I should, they should, I should be the tester. <laughs> I could break an anvil. Hey guys, yeah, keep hammering that love. Um, you know what I'm going to do? Is, uh, uh, Northern Girl, I want to apologize, but uh, you just have wrenched. I'm going to uh, see if I can jump up in the chat here because I am a moderator. So I'm going to look for the link. I, I'm trying to keep up with the chat because some, when, sometimes when you put a bunch of hearts and stuff on the screen, it keeps on having me uh, uh, click show, show, show because, you know, YouTube BS, you know what I mean? Yeah. Hey, uh, somebody, uh, somebody tell Gray Man to uh, put the link up. Somebody tell Gray Man to put the link up. I want to jump up. Just to say hi. You're doing fine, brother. You're doing fine, man. Pay attention to that chat, man. That's 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 what makes this. Otherwise, we're just a couple old dudes, a couple three old dudes <laughs> sitting on a sitting on a stream talking, you know. So if the chat's not here, you know. Um, yeah, that's, that's, that's awesome. 
Yeah, some somebody uh, and, uh, asked um, Gray Man you know, to I had, I, I had put the link great, up. Uh, a great lie the other night, man. I, you know, I got to really talk to to Alaska Prepper, man, and I really enjoyed it, man. Rudy is he's such an yeah. interesting, educated person on a lot of different topics, and it was, it was nice to actually have a conversation, a one on one with them in regards to. I'm cat, looking man. for it. I'm looking for it. Come on, guys. I mean, and he's got me really thinking about Bitcoin. He, he <laughs> makes some very good points. He really does. Oh, we, we I, love I'm, him I'm hard. Shit. I'm a diehard skeptic. And I Where's thought, the link? Well, you know, he's got a point. Linky he dinky really do. I mean, Bitcoin is kind of like that rebellious. I'm going to hang out here for a bit, guys. Nobody can Stay here and enjoy nobody it. Nobody can control. Uh, and Where's the kind fucking of, link? Uh, that's good. And, and you know what? I, I've heard everybody say that, well, what happens when the power goes out? It's not. Okay? It's not. <laughs> if your power goes out, somebody else is going to There it is. Out, and they're going to have bit. Okay. And I'm going to um, you know, silence it's, this. It's going to be. And I have an attempt to jump and up on the chat. I, I think it's. Hang it's, out, guys, or. or uh, take advantage of that. Excuse yeah, yourselves, or. Oh, wait a second. Got to show the doomsday clock. There we are. Doomsday! Oh no! All right. Uh, uh, is this working? Yes, is it working? States would have would would be overrun. You know what I mean? As as a as a whole, there would be there would be no way that that tell Gray Man to look uh, or, or the, the 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 government is going to shut down our power, man. They. They yeah. want us to have that bread and circus. Hey, North Shore. How you Hello. doing? What's up? It's all up. How you doing, brother? What's going on, man? I got one other person that wants to join the chat. So let me add him to the stream. I think I can add up to 10 people. Hopefully it doesn't get too chaotic. Hey, guys. I'm still on my live stream. And then I was, uh, you know, we came over to your live stream. And then I now I'm on the panel. So my live stream is still going. Um, everybody probably thinks I'm a dick or whatever, but I just wanted to uh, jump up and um, Got it. support what you guys are saying. No, I appreciate that, brother. Like I said, I always talk good about you because, like I said, you were part of this foundation of uh, Gray Man Prepping, man. Well, I can't do anything but hold up a good brother or sister. I'd be remiss. If I were to do otherwise, right? You know, we've we've all got a good message. So the people that do have a good message, I want to uplift them and support them. And <laughs> you know what? I want to support uh, uh, something that that uh, three percenter here was saying uh, just earlier. Yeah, um, about you don't need to have the most expensive uh, Leatherman and shit like that. Like part of my shtick is. Um, like when I got in, into this uh, this whole prepping deal, I'm like, "Holy crap! I need a hundred grand to be a to be a prepper." You know, so so my whole deal is how to show um, people that are new to prepping how to take the intimidation out of it, just to help include them in the community because you don't need a hundred grand to start prepping. You need two dollars to start prepping, and it's a bag of pasta, right? Yeah, start with one bag of pasta, or or bag of beans, whichever it is, or or a cheap uh, a, a cheap uh, multi tool from the dollar store. You know, you get one, you throw that in your car, and then you're better prepared. Whoa. <laughs> Matter of fact, North Shore, I'm thinking about doing one of those challenges where you take 20 bucks and go to the Dollar Tree, buy a bunch of stuff, and, and go apply it out in, the, out in the wild. You know what I mean? It, it seems like it'd be fun. Something to, to show people that, you know, there are pennies on the dollar where you can do some of this stuff. You know what, Gray Man? Um, that's uh, freaking cool. Uh, like I did do at one point, like a $21 uh, prepper throwdown challenge. At one point, and do you know what? If you want to see a really, really good video on it, go look at um, Rip Curl's submission 
for that. Look at look for Rip Curl's video submission to that. It was freaking fantastic. He covered wicked awesome bases with um, uh, his $21 uh, for that challenge. Um, now, of course, that challenge is we were just kind of all having them on the table and such. But if you want to take it to another level and take it into the bush, you know, I'll hold you up on props for that for sure. I'll shout that out all, all day long. Yeah, I think, I think it would be entertaining. Sean, I, I meant to ask you, I, sometimes I don't get to talk to you in chat. Is there any way other than your email to get a hold of you? Yeah, you can call me or, or uh, text. But I'm sure I'll find a way to get you that information. Because I know you don't check your email that often. Well, you can, all right, Gray. You can send it to my email and t uh, trust I need, okay, this is part of my winter break. I've been taking a break, guys. You know, you all know this. And it's a much-needed break. I was just way overloaded with just modding too much and being everywhere too much all the time and trying to support everybody too much. And there becomes a, a, a line where uh, there becomes imbalance, right? So I'm just taking a break to try and find a balance. And part of that balance is I'm going to be checking my email. So, yes, Mr. Grayman, please... Do send it to my email. Um, I can, okay, as far as my abilities go, I can text to the United States. Um, I can't call without cost. You can call me without cost if that's on your package. You yeah, know what you know, I, mean? um, I speak to Northern Girl a lot as well. We chat and talk sometimes, and she's in Canada, so. All right, well, part of my uh, winter break is expanding my techie stuff, and <laughs> communications is part of it. That's awesome, brother. So, uh, yeah, if you would like to, please feel free to leave something in my um, email, and I will get to it. it. Don't be offended if it doesn't happen for a few days. It's not no, because I, I don't I, like you. I'll make, I'll, put, I'll put in all caps, this is great name. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I, it doesn't matter if that email is at the top. I start at the bottom and work my way up. <laughs> right. hey, I, wanted to, I wanted to give you a shout out there in North Shore, man. What a great catch the other day. Oh, uh, dude, we we had a fantastic time out on the ice. I'm telling you, man. I was like, man, look at this guy. Gosh dang it. Making me want to go fishing. It's the the problem is is cause we we get cold winters here, but we don't get we don't get a normal cold winter. You know what I'm saying? It it'll it, it's normally, you know, when it gets cold here, the fish really shut down. And, I mean, you catch fish, but you got to go all day long and catch two or three. You know, I mean, you really got to be dedicated. So, you know, I don't fish as much during the winter. And I was sitting there, and I was like, man, look at this dude catching on. <laughs> all these fish, man. Like, if, I catch, if I could just go catch one, man. <laughs> but, oh. Great, great haul, man. Dude, great we haul. Ha we hammered them, and I'll tell you what. I will tell you what, okay? So, um, for the first little while, once we got the whole, we used a saw to uh, saw a big uh, square out of the ice, and we slid the, it's like a little toboggan with a canopy over it, and you fold that over, and you sit in there, and you, you know, it's got windows and zippers and doors and stuff in it. So we just sat in there, and it was it was nice and warm in there. Outdoors, it was freaking cold, though, I'll tell you that. Um, but inside there, it was like you, you could take your jacket off, and it was T-shirt weather. And you could see right down inside the hole. Hmm. We were in uh, 14 feet of clear-ass water. You could see the sand bottom and all the fish coming in. And they were very active and aggressive. So we fished for the first little while um, with minnows on, on our little jig heads, right? Um, and, of course, every fish you get, it... it knocks the minnow off or whatever or eats it or you lose it and after sort of half hour of busying myself with that i was like screw this i ain't even reaching into the minnow bucket i'll just drop the jig down naked and i caught fish all afternoon just on a naked jig now dan did outfish me by double because he kept using the uh the minnows but um you know we we caught some real big lunker fat perches which we all put back and the little ones of course we put all those back too you know your brute breeding stock and your youngins for future wow. fishing but it was just a fantastic day 
I, I know you made me hungry. I was at work watching your video where you're cooking up that fish, and I was like, so I'm bitch. Now I'm starving. I know. <laughs> I know. And nothing better than some fresh fish. Man. I'll make that, man. And if anybody on you uh, loves a tartar sauce, if you make an English style or whatever, and you like a tartar sauce with it, check out that tartar sauce recipe, too. I've never bought yeah, tartar it's sauce. It's, in it's, it's on that video where you released. I hadn't got, I've, I've been kind of busy kind of doing a little family thing for a couple of, the, you know, for, for oh, a day or so. Take your time. That video will still be there. But yeah, uh, okay. my, my cooking, uh, the perch video, there's a right. tartar sauce recipe on there later in it. Go check it out. Sweet, sweet. Yeah, I, I love tartar sauce on there, but um, kind of a southern thing. I, I like to dip my fish in salsa as well. Oh, that's nice. Good, some good medium salsa. Boy. Mm. But I love tartar sauce too, so I have tartar sauce. And salsa. Now, some of the fish I'll eat, you know, with the tartar sauce and some with the salsa. But, yeah, I'm going to check that out, man. I saw the video. I just hadn't had a chance to watch it yet. I could have used a bit of that, actually, with, this, uh, with the uh, the tartar sauce on it and a little uh, shake of hot sauce. That would have been nice, too. Yeah, sounds great. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm getting hungry. <laughs> yeah, Lord, I have a question for you. You, you do canning, right? Uh, yes, sir. Um, Somebody was telling me another option uh, for canning is, is pickling stuff. What do you think about pickling stuff? They say it's a lot safer and easier to do. Oh, yeah. Well. I just want your opinion because I'm curious. I, I'd like to get information from everybody. Just because I hear one thing, I want to hear other opinions on it. All right. Well, to be to be quite frank with you, I'm not a veteran on uh, canning. Uh, mm -hmm. But I'm better with canning than I am with pickling. All right. Okay. Now, now I saw all my uh, my moms and my aunties, you know, all the old women. They were pickling stuff uh, in the house when I was a little kid. Over, you know, like back on the farmhouse, and uh, you know, when all the aunties were around, when all that was going on, because that, you know, that happened when all the cucumbers, all the little cucumbers, are coming in. It's a big gathering to make pickles, right? Right. So all the families get together. And the women are inside the house making up the pickles. Well, when I went inside the house as a, as a child, because I'd be outside playing with uh, all my cousins, I'd come inside to get, you know, get a drink or whatever and smell this vinegar in the air. And it's like, ugh, what is that stank? Right? So I never did, uh, holy crap, Mad Shad has morphed. <laughs> That's so, my dog. So I haven't done a whole lot of pickling. I did do some this year. Like, dude, holy crap. Over the last year, I learned gardening, uh, water bass canning, pressure canning, uh, pickling, how to make sauerkraut, all kinds of shit, man. Uh, like, I, I've had a big brain year this year. And not to mention, I only started my channel uh, less than a year ago. And uh, I don't even know how to work a computer. <laughs> hey, I mean, it's, 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 we're learning something every day, man. We're learning something every day. Uh, you know, but, that's, that's what's good about the community. It's we can follow a lot of different people that have a lot of different uh, specialties. But pickling is good for sure. Um, and I'm learning more and more about that. Um. I'm going to be making uh, some uh, sauerkraut here in the near future. Again, not like I've made sauerkraut in the past and uh, like nice sauerkraut with carrot and fennel in it. Um, doing that, but I'm, I'm learning a new style of doing that. Uh, as far as fermenting, I'm not there. My, I'm, my brain just isn't there and the storage options aren't really there. That's going to be very important. Fermenting... That, that kind of fermenting, getting that fermenting in our diets is very, very beneficial. I mean, we, it, it's, you know, there's something to it. Fermenting, you know, the, the, the kimchi, the uh, malted vinegar, you know, all that stuff. That's that's why they did it, because you need that. That's that's the original probiotic. He makes a, a great point. Mad Chad makes a great point, because uh, it's uh, good for your gut health, the health of your stomach. Yeah, that's, that's what I want to ask you guys. You know, Freaking Ontario Homestead again. Okay, hang on a second. <laughs> I 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Billy? Uh, it's really me this time and not the girls. Okay, Billy. So what do you want? <laughs> um, you on a live? Yep, I'm on somebody else's. I just left your live. I'm on, I'm on the panel on somebody else's live stream, and they're listening to you. You're on uh, speaker mode. Oh, well, then I'll, I will be classy. <laughs> as best as I can do. Okay, so what's up, Billy? Uh, I was calling to, uh, to uh, ask you about uh, uh, a live panel stream for Sunday. I'm pretty sure it'll work because I'm going to put my much smarter wife involved in this. So, Okay, Billy, what time on Sunday? Does 8 work for you? No, it does not. Well, give me a time then. 7. What are we doing, uh, one hour? Yeah, seven, one hour max, yep. That works for me. Does that work for everyone else in this panel? I'm, I'm assuming that I know most of you on this panel, but I can't see any of your comments. Sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> well, someone steam yard me up to this, because I'm just sitting here on my porch smoking. I'm trying to smoke, I can't work a lighter. Is it is it cold? Oh yeah, it's cold. He's here near me. Oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> it's definitely cold. I'm in Canada. Uh, oh. so, so what are you talking about, it's Billy? For crying out loud. What are you talking about, Billy? You want to jump up on the panel here uh, with Gray Man? Is that what you're talking about? I will if he sends me a thing. Um, yeah, Gray Man, if you could uh, bust up the link, maybe Billy can join us. Uh, if, uh, you know, that's uh, up to the host. Oh, I don't mind, man. I, I, let me get that uh, link. I have it saved down here. That, that way I don't have to hold up the phone and you can you guys can actually see his ugly mug. Well, I put, I put the girls to bed, so I'll, uh, I'll hop off the text with you and then I'll pull up. All right. Okay, Billy. Um. I think Gray Man's going to bust up the link so you can grab it. Um, and if that's the case, cool. And if not, that's also who cool. Who do I got to go to, But I'm, um, eh? Who do I got to go through to find the link? We'll look in the chat, bro. Okay, I'll get on to you and... No, no, on uh, Gray, Gray Man prepping. <laughs> or if somebody's still in my chat, uh, put the link to Gray Man prepping, please. I left my own I will, chat. Uh, I will hop that over. I will try to figure it out. If I'm not there in 10 minutes, go on without me. <laughs> we most certainly will. We don't, we don't like to leave any man behind. I can, oh, no, I'm not a mod here. I can, I can I go to I'm going to try to find it through the internet. Bye, guys. No, you just find it in the chat here, bro. Great. I can't do two things at once, Sean. I'm on the phone. Oh, all right. Gray man, one word, capital G on the gray, capital M on the man. All right, we'll just click on it, and then he's got a link in there, I think. All right, I'll get on to it now. Okay, Billy. Bye-bye. 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 As soon as Bill comes on, don't anybody say anything. Just As soon as he comes on, just all of us jump down. Just, yeah, leave the chat. Leave, leave the <laughs> leave the panel. <laughs> yeah, Billy's good Eric people. Hey, Eric, how are you doing, man? Pretty good. We got a new person in North Carolina. Ghost Prepper. All right. Yeah, he's starting him a channel, and he's pretty smart. I've seen Ghost around. Yeah, yeah I've seen him too. Yeah. yeah, check him out. I'll check him out. What? Well, what y'all was talking about a while ago about prepping and starting out with basic gear and stuff. First thing you need to think about is what you got in your house is a kitchen thing. Four, knife, you don't need any more knives. You just got to do that knife right there in the kitchen. You move up slowly. And then, like, uh, survival uh, living, Mike, Michael, he was actually showing people how you can take $5 each week and build up your own 
supply slowly. Survival living, yeah, I did see that. And you know what? That's a fantastic thing. Like, that's what I try and share with people, too, is you don't have to go in on the expensive. You can you can do it cheap. You don't have to be rich to, to be a prepper. That's true. I made a point, too, that, you know, yeah. it, there's a lot of folks that, you know, when they go to work, they stop by the convenience store and they buy, you know, a coffee and they buy the lattes and the candy bars and, you know, and they, they spend, you know, five, six, seven dollars at the convenience store. And I'm like, man, you know, you can actually um, make coffee at home, get up a, just a few minutes early and make some coffee at home and you can do it without the candy bar or or go to a, a dollar type store where they sell a big package of the candy bars and then you've already got one, you save you four or five bucks, then go buy some extra cans of food. Exactly. Yeah. Because when things go bad and and you're gonna need the preps that you're wanting, you're not gonna be able to go to the convenience store and buy your lattes and your candy bars. You know, if you don't have them in your house, you're not gonna you're not gonna get to have them. So you know, if you make that sacrifice now and, and start, you know, man, I mean, what, what is more important, you know, and that's the things that I keep saying is what is more important to you? Is it having food when things go bad? Cause maybe it's just a, maybe it's just a, a, a bad tornado comes through like it did here in my community. And it tore up a lot of stuff and shut a lot of stuff down for about a week before we were able to, you know, look at the, oh my goodness. Now I know where all the dad gum toilet paper smells and stuff went. That's why I can't find any. That's me. Those, those are those are all napkins, like like you know, just napkins. But no, I got water. Uh, I've had that water for I don't know maybe a year because of hurricanes, you know. And so uh, yeah, and, and and the paper towels, just you know, they grab they're. They were kind of free at work, so I stocked up on them right. and toilet paper. So <laughs> that's that. One year yeah. of toilet paper. How much would that be? You give them I'm sorry. fourteen and twenties. How many packs would it be for one year supply of toilet paper? Well, it depends on how much you wipe. <laughs> Three hundred twenty-five most of the time. <laughs> That's a lot of cases in there in toilet paper, boy. Billy. I, I got a lot of toilet paper, too, but, you know, uh, if we're going to talk about that, I mean, well, you know, most people use about four squares. Billy, yeah. just click on the link, Billy. Is it, <laughs> yeah, Billy. Is the link yeah, there? Yeah, Billy. <laughs> Come on, Billy. Well, I think, that, I think that the toilet paper thing, I think a lot of people... If you have any kind of skills at all, um, mechanically, or if you have someone in, you know, around you and your family or whatever that have skills, I know this is going to sound funny, but this actually is true and it will work. You can take and install a T onto your little water stop that comes out of the wall, and you off of that T, you can actually get one of them little sprayer nozzles that you got in your kitchen sink, you actually can buy, you can actually buy the extra sprayer nozzle for a few dollars. You buy the T for a few dollars. You screw it on there. You screw the nozzle on there. You still hook your water supply up. You've got a bidet now. To wash your butt. Yeah. 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 Butt. I'm being serious. No, totally. <laughs> and you don't have, yeah, you don't, and then you don't need any paper. You just get you just get your um, you, how many of y'all have empty shirts? Shirts are too small, tore up or whatever. There's your foot paper. I mean, all the, you think about it. All the shirts you got, you'll still find some small shirts, small <laughs> socks that you don't wear no more. There's your toilet paper. Hey, every, every shirt I'm wearing is empty. Uh, every shirt I'm not wearing is empty. See these things right here? Yeah, these things are super handy. These uh, little towelettes, and they're cheap, man. They come in really handy as well. Yeah, yeah that looks like that would probably store pretty nicely, too, as far as it goes for not taking up a lot of room. Yeah, it's great for, like, bug-out bags and, and get-home bags. But also, like you said, 
um, it stores a lot easier because, like I said, it, it's each sheet and, and they're reusable. I guess you can reuse them. I think some people do some reviews on them, but they're very durable. You know what I mean? Compared to just like right. your toilet paper, so you can get a good, uh, I guess, get a good wipe on it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> get some purchase on there. Uh, yeah, I know in the ring corner we would go out for the uh, we would go out in the woods. You know, we call it the field, but we would go to the field for you know the longest time was maybe three months, and so your your gear list would be like three shirts, and uh, well that's what we would do is, is we would just keep tearing off ribbons off our shirt to wash ourselves and go. Because that little that little strip of toilet paper they give you at the MRE just doesn't last. So by, by yeah. the end of by the end of the training uh, training up, you would you'd, you'd you'd have like shirts up to here, you know, just you know, half shirts. <laughs> well, I got to give uh, Robert Tribe a little thing to think about. You got five gallon buckets, two hundred twenty five is a year. Your width and height. 225 it's one year supply of food. Look at the rooms in your house to see how many you can actually put in your room of your house. Yeah, think about that. <laughs> a lot of room. But then yeah. you go to the grocery store and you spend five thousand dollars for a year of supply. Pump up or <laughs> did you leave a link, Gray Man? Uh I have I'm back on your channel and Nose Picking has put my link there one, two, three times. Oh wait a second, no no, no. put it on your channel. Is Billy in chat? Is he under Billy? Billy? Yeah, Billy uh, Billy's Ontario Homestead here. He's in chat. Ontario. Okay, there he is. Alright, I'm gonna put I'll put it I'll re-put it in the chat. Yeah, yeah, uh, uh Billy uh Gray Man's okay. gonna put the link up. Just click on the link and you should be able to uh jump up, but if you're uh, if you got your voice on some other shit, shut your uh, mute your other shit. Hey, we got my friends starting to now really kind of figure out what prepping was. I said, you really want to know what prepping is? I just took out an old book that started everything. <laughs> that gives you everything you need to know for three months. That's it. <laughs> You know it's outdated if you think about it. It's well, there, there's the link again, Billy. Give it a shot. Um, and I'm, um, I guess I'm going to use your uh, room, Gray Man, to apologize to everyone who's still on my stream, which I should probably shut down. I'm kind of remiss because you got, you got 19 people in there. All right. Well, uh, God bless you all. Thank you very much. Uh, they're probably watching here too, or they're probably watching me watching you. <laughs> I don't know. Whichever, it's all good. Long was my mind. It's great. Hey, Matt, Shay, well, here we go. We can do the middle bucket. There we go. <laughs> There's Billy. We'll put you guys side by side. Hold on, let me. How you doing, brother? Put my pretty side of my face. <laughs> Oh, my phone is so messed up. I got all you ugly people in, next to my ugly face. <laughs> Who are you calling ugly, bro? You, North. What? <laughs> Shut up, you're Canadian. You can take it. Well, yeah. <laughs> it is a kind of love. I've been, tr I've been trying to get Kincaid and, uh, and Mallory over here every once in a while, too. <laughs> Okay. Oh, yeah, awesome. I like him too. Uh, great, uh, great man. Yes, sir. Did you, did you see what Dustin's putting up on for Sunday? Oh, the uh, the pepper. Uh, what is it called? Pepper, damn it! The hell is it called? It's a game, right? Yeah. Pepper, damn it! That sounds like a that sounds like a every prepper's dream. Pepper, <laughs> damn it! I I had a plan and damn it. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> He's going to pull stuff from all yeah. our videos that he watched and then his with them. That oh, it's like Jeopardy, right? You're not going to be talking about I can't keep up for everybody's videos. <laughs> hey, Bonnie. Hello, everyone in the chat. I haven't said anyone. Uh, I haven't said hello. I'm hello, sorry everybody. to everyone in my I chat. I can't see the chat, so 
Everyone that's Okay. One way to handle the chat. It's it's just like females. Yes, no, and yes. <laughs> uh, hey, Billy. Listen. No. Okay. No, no Sean. But, no, no, seriously, Billy. I, I, I want to have a word with you. Come on now. Come on. Pull it together. Okay. okay, Sean. I'm totally good with having a word with you. Is this one that we should have in a text later? No. No, it's not. Okay. No, I... I I just want you to, uh, Billy, look at me. Look at me. Thank you. Thank you, Billy. Fuck. Both crazy eyes or just the one crazy eye? <laughs> uh, if you could pull out both, I'd appreciate it. <laughs> my, my eye doctor can't pull off both, so. No, Billy, why don't you just uh, please uh, do us a favor and uh, go ahead and introduce yourself and, and uh, let us know what your homestead's all about. Uh, just a quick, uh, a quick brief on to introduce yourself uh, to the, the the community. All right. Well, I will say I've been around for a bit, and yes, I do you know have. some stuff. Yes, he does. Although I only get so deep into certain situations. If you need to know certain things about livestock, I can probably teach you a lot of stuff about livestock. Um, I have done a lot of stuff. Um, this is really weird because I can't really see what my camera's seeing. It's your right face. Now. It's your ugly mug. <laughs> it is ugly. I'll give you that. So I'm just going to turn. Oh, that's better. So thank you, Sean. You click. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have turned my implement shed into... The world's best man cavern, only because I say cavern because my walls are too high. It's 14 feet high to the ceiling. I've built a second level and a se and I will say to any of the subscribe and you guys, I don't have the chat up, but I will show you this because most people don't have this. I am probably one of the only people anyone will ever see. With a claw foot tub in their shop. Nice. <laughs> it's not just nice. It, it had a lot of. I've got the stall with the chalk board. Chalk wall. Now, as to all the preppers out there, the reason I have three sinks. And I will give bonus points to anyone who knows why I have three sinks. But I also have the hot water heater and the, I have a pressure tank here. And, and watch my channel. I can show you if you if you do have any questions about water stuff. I actually do know a lot about that. I unfortunately know a lot about wells and and water pressure and stuff like that. I actually have a cistern that was built and I have a whole second level with a base. I basically turned my entire shop into a fun house and another apartment. I have, um, and I hate to repeat myself, but cause Sean, you know all this stuff, but I have a whole pantry room. Hey Billy, is your freezer near you? Yeah, I can go see it right now. We're pulling it right now. All right, yeah, roll in there and show them your freezer, bro. Check okay, check out how he stores his frozen thing. food. This is the one thing I will show to all you preppers and survivalists and this, this all is, you just regular organizational people out there. This is fantastic storage. Watch this. Make your freezer this way. Oh, that is can awesome. everyone see that? Sean, I can hear you. Can someone... Uh, lower your camera a little bit. I got meat all in my own. All right. I uh, see meat. <laughs> Extraordinary organized. I think that's awesome. Yeah, wicked, well, wicked way of organizing your freezer. Big time. Yeah, now I wish I wouldn't have to say that I literally have four freezers on my property set up that way. They're, like, I'm leaning, as I'm telling you that, I'm leaning on another freezer right now. There it is right there. That's just the little one. And this this freezer was a panic buy. 
due to no one has a freezer right now, no one has deep freezers, and we're just going to shut this light off because I'm not made of money. <laughs> but uh, I did that for the simple fact that I had to buy whatever freezer I could get a hold of because you couldn't get a freezer for a while there with this whole woo flu and I, I'm hey. not going to get into, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to get into dirty words cause I don't need anyone pulled off the inner interweb, but we've had to do stuff, but my shop is set up that it can, it, it is set up. It has a stove. It has two fridges and freezers. It has, Two deep freezes. It has set up for another full-size stove. It's got a wood stove. It's got another wood stove up in my mini apartment up here. And I also have a cistern with... Hey, hey, Billy. Four. Yep, go ahead, Sean. Yeah, shut up for a minute, would you? I can do that. <laughs> All right, okay, hang on a second. Uh, Gray Man, uh, would you... Uh, like, I, I don't want to impose or step on toes, so I thought it appropriate to ask. Uh, would you mind if I uh, led this interview here for a, a minute? No, no, go ahead, brother. I appreciate that. Are you down with that, Billy? Oh, are you going to ask me questions? Yes, sir. Yes. As long as you're not too personal, I'm good with it. <laughs> no, no, it's, it's not about anything personal. And anyone uh, in the chat that doesn't know uh, Ontario Homestead, go check him out. Uh, he's a small channel. Well, when I started as a channel, he was a big channel, and he's still the same channel he was. And I'm so, I saw him and all the things that he was doing. And I'm thinking, I'm thinking he should be a bigger channel. So this is a brother we need to hold up. Okay, guys. Um, well, you got you can say that, Sean, and I appreciate it. But I'm going to be honest with you. I don't give two craps. If you're going to watch me, watch me. I have information. I I know a lot of stuff about a lot of specific things. I don't know a lot of stuff about a lot of other things. I'm not fancy, and I'm going to tell you how it is. Hey, Billy, didn't I ask you to shut up? Sorry. All right, that's okay. And you know what? That's what I love about you. You, you don't give a crap about your. You're not. Uh, you're, you're not there to impress, but you do have a lot of things that would be educational to a lot of people. So, um, I mean, that's one of the reasons why I kind of wanted to interview you a little bit here just for the other folks to know. Okay. Um, so, so could you tell, do you, want you want to talk with my water system, my air system, my, uh, hang on a second. Where are you right now? What are you doing? Show your camera around. What are you doing? I am standing in the hunting slash air room. Okay, uh, we'll talk about that in a minute then. No, we'll talk about that in a minute. Okay. okay. Uh, you want to go in the water room in the shop? No, no, bro. Just hang out wherever you're comfortable and warm. Um, I just want to ask you some I questions, I okay? I didn't put the heat on anywhere. It's cold everywhere. <laughs> All right. Well, you're not going to get pissed off if I ask you some questions, are you? Probably not. Uh, you might. Uh, anyways, listen, you know, so you just introduced yourself. Why don't you, uh, can you share with people what sort of um, parcel of, uh, size of parcel of property you're on and what you do there? Like, I know you have a greenhouse that's got a wood stove in it, and I know you keep some livestock, and I know you've kept a running rabbit farm at one time, and I know you got bees. So if you could just take a little bit of time and describe to people what sort of uh, property you're on and what you're doing on there. And like, don't, we're not looking for your address, bro. We don't want to know where you are because I know all about that shit. That's not, well, you know where I live. Words, North, so yeah, that's not so words for anybody's ears. I, um, this room is going to sound kind of echoey. I am currently standing and because I didn't run my well. Oh, just get on with it. I have a sister in room. In my in my shop, and this is uh, let's see, thousand gallon tank, Bigfoot, and I have it built up so it's not going to freeze. 
it's got to be Calgary weather. And any Canadian will understand Calgary weather. Negative 40. And before I have to worry about anything. But I, I fill this up literally by garden hoses. And I will say I have done a lot of work with a well guy. And my well guy literally pull, calls me when he's got a difficult well and a difficult problem because he went, well, you spend a lot of time thinking about this screwed up stuff because you're crazy. You figured it out for me. All right. Hey, Bill, enough about the well stuff. Uh, could you just, uh, describe for the people, uh, please, what sort of uh, parcel of property you're on and what you're doing there, livestock you're raising? Um, I am on... I know you got a greenhouse. I am on 48 acres. I so, own 40 acres. Here we go. Thank you. Only took two I times. I have a certain percentage of it soaked up in land. and Or not land, but I mean property like buildings and everything else. And I also have a certain percentage of it soaked up in pasture. And then I, because of how things work here in Canada, I have a certain percentage of it work, soaked up into... Uh, shared crops now the problem is here in Canada we can only do so much we're not allowed to do private killing or private slaughtering is a better way to term it out as long as you're only going in for yourself now that being said if anyone noticed how messed up the sound just got is because I'm literally standing in a dead room and I'm going to give you a little bit of a shine around. I don't know how good this camera is. So I'm just going to do a slow walk, but I'm in a room that's about 12 by 10 by 12. And it is my private room for doing private slaughter. I have deer hunters, uh, Look at my channel. I have a really close friend of mine that's a native, and he harvests deer, but quite literally because that's how bad things are changed in our society that he was never taught how to properly harvest an animal. So I do all the harvesting for him, and it's a horrible experience that – a native doesn't know how to prop. I mean, let's get crazy here. When a native doesn't know how to properly harvest an animal to take care of everything and do everything for that animal, most people would be concerned or questioning. Whereas I go, well, brother, I'm here for you, and I can show you the pieces that you're missing. And hey, Bill, it's, it's worked out great for us. Hey, Bill, I, I mm -hmm. saw the uh, rail above your head. Just uh, go back in there and oh. uh, point at, uh, point your camera at the ceiling. He's already got yep. the rail built in uh, to uh, yep. hang the meat from, right? If you didn't These happen to rails, notice, I'm going to try to show that I got I got one car hanging. I'm sorry, you're getting light blinded. Uh, point the light. One car hanging. Point the light at designing. the rails. There we go. Yeah, he's got rails there to hang meat. These rails are designed to hang three carcasses a time, and I have two of them. And I got the drain in the floor. This was all custom built, all poured by hand. You need, you need that finished properly inside there, Billy. You, you need a vapor barrier and uh, some kind of. Uh, Wallboard, probably uh, preferably uh, styrofoam and aluminum on the walls. Well, actually, that's the funniest thing because, because and I'll show you all this. Like I could do it for you in drywall and vapor barrier and shit like that, but I mean, you know, we could talk about hey, stuff. Hey, no swearing on YouTube. I'm sorry. I've been doing. I've been doing good. Now I will show you guys this. There was one problem that happened when I rebuilt this shop. Originally. 
the bathroom was not supposed to be connected to the killing room because the killing room is going to be the hottest room or the coldest room in my shop. The bathroom is going to be the hottest room in my shop when you think about things. Big so brain. So I ended up having brain. to do because, and that's another reason why it sounds dead in here. Um, because I had to do all this extra work and insulation. So I'm going to pull this one by four insulation out of the way and everyone's going to see I've got silver back insulation. It's a one inch silver back insulation there behind that silver back insulation is another two by six wall, which is two by six insulation followed by half inch drywall. That wall is over 10 inches thick. Now, most people would not have to do that, but if you're going to put your cold room beside your hot room, guys, try to try to get past your aggravation and situations before it. I, I spend a lot of time thinking about problems. Hey, Billy. I have dealt with more problems. Go ahead, Sean. You're keeping me on track, I guess, so go ahead. Yeah, I'm trying to. Uh, you know what? You're doing a fantastic job. And if anyone doesn't know uh, Billy uh, over at Ontario Homestead, seriously go check him out. He's He's got his shit high and tight. Uh, he's a cool dude. I've known him for a long time. And, uh, you know, I would consider him circle, right? So. Now, he's trying to say I... I what Sean's trying to say is he's trying to get me to say oh, enough stuff about the fact that... Oh, shut up, I'm Billy. I'm not done yet. My... Sorry, go ahead. Okay, so while I got your attention, um, could you tell us a little bit about, uh, like, uh, your greenhouse? Your greenhouse is freaking fantastic. I've seen it a ton uh, of times. Not in person, in the flesh, but, like, pictures yeah. and videos. and. Well, so it, it is kind of froze up at the moment. It is about to get... I do have a greenhouse, and I have a wood stove in my greenhouse. And you have waterworks in it, so go on, like there's yeah. a lot of knowledge and uh, information. There, there's a lot of stuff going on there, and I will say it's not easy. Why don't you start it with is, the basics? It is a little bit more complex. No, no, start with the basics. Don't go to the water. Just go to the wood stove and and what your uh, your setup is. Well, I have uh, I have a very simple wood stove. It's just the arc. And it works great, but I am in the breadbasket of Canada. I'm in southwestern Ontario. Most of the um, seed crop for corn is grown within an hour of my area, which might shock you, Sean, but quite literally, most of the seed crop is grown here. No, it doesn't. Uh, that, that, that doesn't shock me, Billy. Uh, we have back we have on the farm. We used to buy it. Unit. We have an amazing heat unit here, and I do have a great growing area. Although I will say, I am on. If my grandparents would have spent a little more money or a little bit more time to go five minutes down the road, one way or the other, I'd be on much better ground. Ah. I'm on hard play. I'm not complaining. I love my area. I love, I love where I'm at. But I know what I'm dealing with, so that's why I don't deal with a lot of these great berry videos. That's why I do with my greenhouse. For my greenhouse, I have a 50 gallon tank. Everyone knows what a 50 gallon tank is. We're all preppers and crazy people here, so we know what a 50-gallon steel tank is. I have it literally pressed up against the wood stove, and because I live in a northern climate that's cold, when I fire it up, I get my wood stove cooking, and I get that water so nice you would just beg to bathe in it. It's beautiful. It's warm. It's not boiling. It's just steaming, but that... If you get the wood stove going at late at night, and that heat bleeds out. And if you're going to do a, 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 a greenhouse in a northern climate, you need to have 
solar heat sink or not necessarily solar, but you need to have a heat sink that will bleed out heat into your area and your plants, which is why I use water. It's the easiest, most simple one to use. So hence putting a steel 50 gallon tank right up against a wood stove. I'm easy. I am basically lazy is the best way to put it because why go through extra effort, run a gas line, run of this, run of that. I can just fire up my wood stove for a good three hours and I can keep my greenhouse hot or warm enough to start cooler weather crops by running wood for three hours a day wood and hot water wood and hot water it's inside it's a greenhouse wood, guys the wood is an important point but it's really the water yeah if you can get if you can get your water listen listen warm, listen here guys for sure this is this is a channel we need to hold up he's got fantastic base of knowledge he used to breed thousands of rabbits at a time seriously <laughs> He's got a. a I, I, I actually I did do a lot. Great with base of knowledge in livestock, and I do have a I do have a really large um, background in livestock. I I grew up raising pork. I I raised cattle. I have raised pigs. I have raised rab. I actually did a. I made uh, I made a lot of money for a lot of years raising rabbits. I used to I used to breed. I had over three hundred and fifty breeding females. I know rabbits, and for the most part, a lot of us want to deal with animals that we can understand. the The reason I was big into rabbits was I was uh, fascinated with genetics. And in actuality, um, everyone can see this. Let me just try to tip my phone. If anybody's watching, go sub to Ontario Homestead. That stack is all the exact same book. I don't know if anyone can see it. I don't know where my phone's pointing. It's pointing at the I book. I do have one of, those, one of those blue books is getting sent to Broussard Homestead. And it's a it's one of the best books for raising rabbits, and it's one of the easiest, stupidest things to ever read. It's broke down very simply, and it's great for dealing with a lot of rabbit stuff. There, there's another uh, homestead to uh, uplift and support Bruce, Broussard Homestead. I was I knew I wasn't saying it right. Broussard or Broussard? Broussard. And they're down in Louisiana, just outside of Lake Charles. Um, Brett over there uh, works as a fireman in Lake Charles. So he's seen all the shit of the shit from all the storms this year. Now, now, Sean, I will say I, I, I appreciate you guys pulling me up for this live. But as Canadians, uh, it, it will be – I am in remiss to – We've taken up everyone's time. I would like to hear from everyone else. If someone wants to talk to me, feel free to hit me up. But okay, hang on a second. Of, I got a lot. Of, I, I don't know what the what's going on in the chat, but I got a lot of googly eyes looking at me. No, no, that, that's okay. that's okay, Billy. Hang on a second. Uh, let me just uh, you know, um, Gray Man Prepping was nice enough to hand me the microphone to do the interview with you. So. I'm just going to keep asking you questions if that's okay. And because you got all the googly eyes in the chats, is because you're I, saying really interesting things. I'm just asking, is everyone okay with that? I, that's all. Uh, As a nice Canadian, I can't take over everything. I'm good with <laughs> I'm good with explaining where I'm at, but well, I don't want to take over the chat. I I was given the con insofar as interviewing you and. Um, if, if that con is taken away, I'm happy to, uh, relinquish it. However, if I retain it, is it okay if I continue to ask you questions? Because I'm good with it. Well, you know, gray man, are you good with everything? Yeah. I'm going to say if anybody else wants to speak, cause I'm going to run it probably another 15 minutes. Cause I got to get to work early in the morning. 
All right, cool. So we should get right to the questions then, yeah? All right. Okay, Bill. Okay, so um, it's cool as hell that you uh, run a Northern Girl. Really? Are you pointing at me, girl? Are you pointing at me? Um, I think she was telling me to wait one second. <laughs> and I, just, I wanted to have three Canadians on the bottom. Ooh, 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 that hurts. Dude, <laughs> ouch. That was dry. <laughs> I gotta keep it that way. Okay, so, on next one? so so let's just get right back to the questioning, Billy. Um, yep. About, uh, like, you know, where you are and uh, not where you are, but. I, I will say I did raise rabbits as an actual financial thing. And I, I did send I did send my genetics to Montreal, Trinidad. I sent my genetics multiple miles away from me. You see, guys. I understand rabbits. You I need to hold them, them up. I don't raise them to a, a large extent like I used to, but I do understand them, and I can explain a lot of stuff. And one of the reasons when I got asked was. It's literally, I've gotten, I have three kids. I have three kids. I have members that also have kids. And rabbits are great, but I need to take care of my kids and my members' kids. That's why I'm not big into rabbits anymore. So I just do the larger livestock that I can do everything with. But oh, all right, if Billy. anyone has a question with that smaller livestock, I probably can answer a lot of questions just I don't have a great email address, mostly because I don't look at it. So just <laughs> email. <laughs> yeah. email? Email me, Billy. Don't email him. He does not. Uh, yeah. Hang on, not hang on a second. Hang on a second. Okay, Billy. Well, who was that? Hang, hang on a second, Billy. Well, I got your attention here. Okay, speaking about uh, like livestock on on the homestead, do you have uh, livestock on the homestead now? I do. I have a whole bunch of, I have about eight geriatric sheep that I made a deal with them that don't die when the inspector's here and you're allowed to die later. I used to raise a lot of sheep and the reason I had sheep was due to my father. Uh, we grew up here as a hog farm and my dad with his health before he passed away, hey. I bought a lot of sheep just so he could, because he, he couldn't move around very well. So it was it was a nice animal that he could drive and see. Okay, so you have a few sheep there. But they're... What, what else do you I have? Know, I know a lot about sheep and goats, but there, if you ever see sheep and goats in my video, it's by accident. Hey, Billy, do you got any uh, chickens there? I have whew, somewhere in the neighborhood of 50. All right. What's the uh, layers? How, I did buy due to this crazy. How's your daily egg count? Right now it's low. Well, yeah, uh, but it's probably bouncing back from shitty to it is, a little it bit. Is kind of, it's I am impressed with me, Sean, that I'm not swearing and you're swearing like a freaking sailor. I said it's, shit. Um, $50 chicken egg. No, they're, they're <laughs> doing better than that. Not by much some days. Northern but, girl, look at you. <laughs> Fifty dollar chicken. I, I, I had bought specific <laughs> chicken. This guy talks way too much. <laughs> Which one, Sean or me? You. <laughs> I you said I wanted to shut up. Sean keeps asking me questions. Okay, um, hang on a second, just to clarify things, so uh, NGH understands. Hey. Uh, Northern girl, um, gray man kind of gave me the reins to interview uh, Billy at um, Ontario Homestead here. So that's cool, cool. so that's basically what we're doing, and that's why he's talking so much and I'm talking so much. Uh, because Ontario Homestead is new to all of us, right? Not new to me. I, I know Billy for a long time, but he's new uh, to the larger community. Okay, so. Um, we're trying to introduce him, and I know him well, and he just happened to come on to uh, Gray Man's one, so I'm just interviewing him. I'm, I'm small. Now I, get, 
I can speed some other stuff up. I have a I have a bunch of layer hens. The reason I bought the specific layer hens is because of everything going on in the world. I bought specific layer hens that I am going to be hopefully this spring hatching out certain breeds because I don't know if I could I couldn't guarantee getting meat chickens, layer chickens. So I bought something specific that was kind of mid-range, middle of the pendulum, because I'm sure everyone is sitting there going, I don't know what I'm allowed to get. Because at one point, I remember Michigan's uh, person was saying, you're not allowed to buy seeds. Same reason why I buy a lot of heirloom seeds. I also have bees here, which I will honestly say, anyone who wants to know a lot of information about bees, do not watch my channel. Okay. If you want to watch someone get stung every once in a while and screw up, watch my channel. Yeah, he he has those videos. Hey, Billy, uh, while you're talking about your bees, uh, can you just describe um, how many bees you keep or uh, things like that? I can tell you I went into the late fall with 15 hives. And I really hope I have 15 hives, but I'm also a realist. And I also understand that livestock equals dead stock. And therefore, if I walk out of, if I get into the spring with eight hives, I'm going to be super, super, super happy. I was about I to, also, I was about to say it, uh, it would be kind of expected to experience a one third loss. Uh, you know, it wouldn't be shocking as far as bees yeah, no, go. It's, it's not. And that's why I got really mad with this. I'm I'm going to go against the grain here, but you got so many people that say the, the whole worldwide bee thing. And I understand where they're coming from, but I will point out to everyone a very simple thing. The first year I raised bees and I bought some hives and... The problem was where they took the numbers and how they took them because percentage and numbers are a totally different thing. Now, if they would have came to me and said, well, how much did you lose as a beekeeper this year? And I would have went, I lost 50%, which sounds horrible. And it was. That being said, I had two hives. I lost one. All of a sudden, when I say one out of two isn't that bad, but 50% sounds horrible. Well, I depend. I, I wonder how it, uh, you know, depends how you look at that, uh, Billy. Uh, because, I mean, like, you know, you could look at it as 50% uh, failure, or you could look at it the uh, same direction as a 50% success. Well, that's, that's one way to put it. But when they're trying to do their numbers... It's horrible for the simple fact that they just don't seem that honest. Uh, Sorry, everyone. I know I got a little bit of background noise. I'll shut that heater off. I just... That sucks. There's a couple of beekeepers that I actually watch. I know Obama Spike. I just uh, mentioned him in the in the chat. He is apparently a beekeeper. Who, Spike? As well... Uh, yeah, Spike, and also um, there's like a bigger YouTube channel that I watch. It is Simply Living Alaska. They also keep bees, and she is like spot on with her her info. Oh, yeah, and like I said, do not watch me for actual information. I just, I don't what? edit. I don't have any of the information. I just... I try to do my best, and I try to explain what I screwed up is the best way to put it. That's cool. That's cool, too. I'm just, uh, you know, directing to some other beekeeper people, too, that people can follow as well. Yeah. I, um, I can't uh, post in the chat because I'd have to do it on my iPad, and I'm trying to concentrate in our live stream right now. I apologize. Doesn't that uh, suck? Yeah. Sometimes you don't even want to multitask, like me when I'm on a panel. You know, uh, are you really able to? Honestly, Sean, you're a male Canadian. Are you? How well are you able to multitask to begin with? 
Well, I hope he's not a female Canadian because he sure doesn't look like one. Do you want to count on that, Bill? Well, I was going to say, you are a damn ugly female, Sean, but we're... Okay, hang on a second. Let's look in the mirror here now, bro. No, I don't need to. Well, I, 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 am looking, I am looking at my goofy-ass face. There we go. We're, there we go. You would be a very handsome. Yeah. You would be a very I handsome know, lady. This work with, a, with a cell phone, I can barely find myself in the camera. So, I appreciate everyone dealing with my horrible camera skills. And again, I'm just working with a Android phone. Billy makes and terrible videos. Say, he really does. I got dealing with the, the smaller livestock, mid mid range livestock before cattle. I can probably help. A lot of people out if you have some questions but yeah once you get into cattle I am NOT your man and uh, once you get into really fancy greenhouse and really fancy propagating and growing not your guy but as a guy who sits here and goes I have done some woodwork I have built a lot of stuff myself Butchering, raising livestock. I I I'm good with raising a lot of livestock, but I will be the first one to say I'm not an expert on a lot of stuff. Hey, not, neither are any of us. We've all we've all got our own skills, right? Which is one of the reasons well, why I, I have seen your cannon. I have seen your cannon videos, and I will say you're pretty up there, just like my grandma. Thank you, Billy. You, you, you and I are going to have to talk about that. You have done well. I'm just doing, man. Holding up my brother. I'm holding up my brother. That's why I have you here, Ontario. Come on. Well, I, I will say that's the best thing, because that's how I got the game, too. Was it literally came down to <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing and I just started doing it. Seriously, That's guys. Do, seriously, guys. This guy over here, he makes the worst videos, and like I they're can... they're terrible. <laughs> I thought I made bad videos, but Billy's are bad. They suck. Um, I but don't want to watch bad videos. They're, well, they're they're as true as day, though. You know what I mean? Like they're raw, uncut. Just Billy uh, doing Billy, you know what I mean? And he's he's smart as a weapon, has all kinds of good information, which is why I wanted to hold him up. You know, dude, I, he, I will, I, he, he's I got will, a lot to I teach people. With a certain portion of what you're saying, North. Yes, I do make crappy videos. Terrible. Yes, occasionally I make, I do put out some good content. They're the worst. But, oh yeah, yeah. No, my 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 my. <laughs> What do you call that? Listen. Intelligence? I was raised by very old parents. I don't understand any of this. I barely understand how my phone works. I barely understand how a rubbery dial phone works. And I'm only 40 years old. But you're full of fantastic information, Billy. But full, I can't tell it. you the stuff I know. Well, you could just, you know, make words. I can make words. I don't edit. Everything I put out is very raw. I tried to do one of those uh, editing things before, and I went, nope. North Shore doesn't edit his shit either. No, it's just, you know, you get what He's you get. He's tried. Don't, don't let him bullshit you. He's tried. We've Try talked. That. Okay, don't shout, please. Wow, you're loud. Sorry. Sorry. That's actually, I need to just hold my phone further away. I, it's it's mostly because I'm loud to begin with. But oh, he's I know. I'm loud too. I'm French, but <laughs> I've worked with a lot of your people, but that deals with Sean will get a giggle out of that statement. Two minute warning. All right. Anyways, really, I'm I'm sick of talking. Can someone else say something? <laughs> actually, or... actually, yeah, I'll say something. Okay, so uh, Billy, as long as we got two minutes here, or a minute and thirty here now, um, <laughs> what would you say is your uh, favorite thing to do on your homestead? 
as far as Build. Ho homesteading? Build. I personally love building and playing with new projects, working with wood, trying to do new things. I've got a lot of projects going that, and I will say that's the one big thing is uh, if you go back into my, some of my videos, you're going to see that I've started projects. More quickly, please. Sorry? More quickly, please. I'm, well, shut up and I'll talk quicker. Y'all got to um, let a gray man finish off his chat here, too, folks. Well, I would say I just love building stuff to make sure stuff, everything works. But, gray man, please, I appreciate and I thank you for apparently spotlighting me that I didn't know was going to happen. But <laughs> finish, this, finish this chat out for me, gray man. You never know what's going to happen on late night chats. Put it that way. You never know who's going to show up. You never know what's going to happen. Uh, you know, kind of any direct. I mean, it was good to to get to know you, Billy. Um, if you don't mind me calling you Billy. No, I'm I'm good with it. Um, and um, I'm glad. I mean, we've held a lot of people. Surprisingly, I mean, we're still at 40 in chat, so people were interested in what you guys had to say. Yeah, absolutely. And you know what? Um, I don't mean to uh, interrupt you, uh, Gray Man. Um, uh, you know. Uh, I apologize, uh, a gracious host. Um, but yeah, that's one of the reasons why I wanted to shout out Billy, and uh, because he's a, he's a great community member. He doesn't put anything into YouTube at all. He just puts up the odd video, and uh, you know he he's kind of like me. He I I don't do any editing. I don't even know that. I barely know how to use my phone and shit like that. I only kept uh, started keeping money in the bank last year kind of deal you know what i mean right. um but uh i thought he had a, a lot of value to add to the table so i would read out we may have to do something down the road with him uh, on my channel like where it's just me and billy you know kind of shooting the breeze on a on an interview or something like that yeah that'd be cool i'm about to chat with you sometime but don't listen to sean he's he's over talking to me i'm not that smart but I do want to give everybody at least, uh, we'll start with Patriot 3 Percenter, if you can hear me, brother. I want to give everybody just a minute to, uh, if they want to add anything or shout out anything, any of that kind of fun stuff like that. Oh, man, I was just uh, appreciative that you uh, brought me up on the panel. And, um, man, I just wanted to say that um, I know this got old real quick and everything, but this man over here does have merch and um, <laughs> I bought one of his shirts and I'm going to tell you, it's a really nice shirt. Um, I actually had someone stop me and ask me the other day. <clears throat> He's like, great man, Preston, what's that? You know? And I was, and so I actually got to have a conversation with them about some prepping stuff. And, and I don't know if they came to your channel or not, but I told them about your channel and stuff. So, Gray man got merch. This stuff, this stuff works, man. Um, I appreciate awesome. that. Support, awesome. Support our brother, support our brothers and sisters, man. Um, I yield. All right, Cherokee. Uh, me. Well, I gave you about sixty-three people from my area that lives down there in your area on a different area. On the we just say Facebook thing. It ain't really a Facebook. We look you up, and they already started watching you. Awesome. I appreciate and that. You got merch. <laughs> <laughs> and also, Northern Girl Hobbies has been hit by five or ten times by my friends. They watch her automatic for some reason. Really? Think about it, Northern Girl. What you've been doing, you must be doing something right. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Cherokee Survival, James. And, and me and Patriot, three, we're head on a lot of stuff. <laughs> I'll, I'll be checking you out more. Cause you got some, you know something about hogs. And I, I got friends that does raise hogs. They have problems. I can ask you the questions when they ask me. North Shore, you're great. I love your raids, man. Well, thanks, man. Every time I go to some place, the raid pops up. And I'm like, everybody's starting to ask questions. I don't know if it's you or the other guy. And I'm going like, I have to check. Notice it's yours. <laughs> That's cool, man. You know what? There, there's a lot of raiding uh, been happening lately, and to be honest with you, 
I'm st I still haven't shut off my live stream that I was on earlier because I jumped onto this one. So my live stream is still running, and we got raided over there this evening by 101. Hmm. I can live it bigger. I probably will try. If I try a live stream, this could be a while before I try that because I still don't understand that crap. Yeah, me too. I, <laughs> I got like 10 people on a match. I'll be asking, come on, all right, I'm trying to figure out how you, I'll get 10 people on there. I've been seeing nine. I want to see the 10. <laughs> Roger that. All right, Northern Girl, how about you? Okay, what am I doing? Shouting, shout, shout you, no channel? Anything you want to add, you can say anything you want. I figured I could kind of give everybody at least one minute. I don't even remember how I got connected with North Shore. Maybe I searched up like prepping Canada or something like that. And then we all got kind of linked together. So thank you, North Shore. You know, um, I watch a couple of smaller YouTubers. I'm a small YouTuber, like, but I'm up to like 600 and I think 20 now. And this is within like a month, which is crazy awesome. You see so how that shit works? Yeah, so now I still have to do like an actual shout out video, but I think it's going to be kind of like a quick snippet of everybody that has shouted out kind of deal and not so like personal, mm -hmm. you know, because like uh, Prepper Tribe was on the Angry Prepper and that was like a huge shout out for me because Angry Prepper said, uh, I'm going to get you to 500 by the end of the week and it actually happened. So that was that was really cool. You know, and then I have my beef right now with the Canadian prepper, too. He keeps making fun of me. But really? Yes. Yes. Yeah, he keeps hurt. making fun of my dog in the pink jacket. <clears throat> Do you know what? Let him. Let him. And, oh. go, and goad him. Keep doing it. Do you know what? That's going to be positive uh, attention your way. I, I'm telling you. I keep doing it, but I'm like, dude, I'm just trying to connect with you so I can buy some communication devices. Like, it, why can't you email me back? It could be a boring game, but it could also uh, work to your advantage to advertise your channel. So just saying. Yeah, I'm not too worried about it at this point. I had a major nightmare last night about my beef with the Canadian breakfast. Oh, no! <laughs> Northern, don't worry about Nate. He's still Canadian, so he's not going to be that big of a prick. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know about that, but fire starting. Arc Wildman Survival. I, I'm I love have to, him. He's good. I'm have to look that up. I love him. <clears throat> he he's like my favorite fire starting dude, and I can't wait to uh, upload my fire starting cupcake fire starter thingy that I have to do. Thank th thank you, Gray Man. Not a problem. Billy, you want to add anything else in there? You know what? I talked enough, Gray Man. I really appreciate you guys letting me spill out way too much, and I'm really going to look up that channel. And if anything else, I will say I really want to look up that channel because fire starting is an amazingly important skill that we all need to have. And I'm just going to yield everything over to North. All right, North. Um, I have the uh, I have the platform. Yeah, you got one minute, brother. <laughs> All right. Okay, thanks, don't man. Don't that much. All right. You know, I, I don't need that much. Uh, I can say uh, enough in just a few words. And I'd like to use those words to uh, thank our host, Gray Man Prepping, for having us up here. Very much appreciated. And I want to thank you again uh, a second time uh, for allowing me the con to interview uh, Billy. And I want to thank you a third time for having Billy up in here. <clears throat> because I, I really think he's a, a channel that needs some uh, shout-out because the knowledge base over there is incredible, and uh, he, he has a lot to share with the community. Um, and with that, uh, aside from that, I'd like everyone to take the chance to hold up their brother and sister every chance you get. All righty. Well, again, I want to thank all you guys on the panel for being here. I appreciate you guys taking out the time. I know, you know, we all have lives and, and, and we're busy doing our own stuff on our own channels. I uh, really appreciate you guys taking the time to be here. Um, I also want to say thank you to everybody in the chat, my mods. Thank you so much for uh, what you guys do. Thanks for being here. You guys are the backbone of this community. Without our subs, we wouldn't be anything. Um, other than that, man, uh, I think that wraps it up. I'm going to... 
probably sign off here and need to get some sleep before I go to work tomorrow. And uh, I look forward to seeing you guys more often. And uh, God bless, man. God bless. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Good evening. Thank you, man. Thank you, folks. Bye, Greg. Have a good night. You too. Thank you. Good night, all. There's nobody here by that name. Matt Johnson. Yes, I am taking the train back to New York. Shut your whole fucking pie hole. I saw your face while the video got shut down, and you were looking at your phone dialing my number, you cunt. Do you have, like, loyalty with... Yeah, fuck you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Whatever. Oh, my goodness gracious. Well, I'm older than you are, and, and trust me, uh, I take shorter steps. You're a bigger dude, so... You know, when you extend one of your fucking hams and take a step, you're taking a bigger step than I am. What's going on, Billy? Oh, no, 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 dude. See, I've been telling you this, okay? And it was actually a perfect opportunity uh, when it came around. Fucking awesome. And you're more than welcome because you've got tons of knowledge to share, buddy. Like, I, I had 40 fucking subs when I noticed your channel that had like 500. I'm thinking, holy fuck, okay, he's doing good. So I looked into you and I investigated and shit like that. And, and well, guess what? We're talking on the fucking phone here. Um, that you need you need to explain your or ask your question differently. I, I'm not sure where you're getting that, Billy. You know what? It was fucking awesome that they phoned in while my live stream was going in. You know what? Actually, yeah. to be honest with you, Billy, my live stream is still going. I haven't shut it off yet. Fuck. Well, oh, I haven't had a chance. I've been on the chat and this, and then you called me. I just haven't had a fucking chance to put uh, my hand on a mouse.
Uh, just keep going with the story there, bro. I guess I can shut this live stream down while you're uh, still orating because, well, I think they can see me still. I'm, I'm going to go look on there and see if uh, anyone's watching it. Huh. <laughs> oh, crap. Holy. Si wow. This has been going on five hours. Somebody's getting sleepy. Uh, yeah. Okay. Hang on a second. Uh, sweet uh, dreaming, everyone. Hope uh, like me too. And uh, typing badly. Stuart North, somehow you managed uh, to make me chat tonight, even uh, when I wasn't going on to. I uh, wasn't going to. Uh, Canadian, uh, Canadian Billy is a real treasure of knowledge. Look at this. This is it. This is in my uh, chat. Canadian Billy is a real treasure of knowledge. Okay, guys, I'm on the phone with Billy right now. Uh, came back online swinging for uh, it's Stuart W. Uh, I do not have them. Hey, look at this. The secret prepper says, Billy is cool. This is happening in my live chat. Oh. Oh. I'm, I'm glad you guys are coming here. Uh, well, Billy is saying he's glad uh, that you enjoyed uh, hearing uh, from him. And listen, guys, I wouldn't... Like, Billy's my buddy for a, a good long while here now, right? Um, and I wouldn't shout out someone who I didn't think have uh, you, you guys know I speak the truth and I wouldn't hold up a, a bad brother or a bad sister I'd hold up everyone but uh, Billy's good man yeah I'm the same way if if I don't know what's going on somebody asks me a question and I don't know the answer I'll say oh well I don't know the answer to that I, I, I can either find it for you or if uh, I don't know it or can't find it. I can direct you to somebody who can. And that's, that's a win-win. Like, I love that you showed me out for the B stuff and things, but it's like, I'm literally just bubbling my way along with bees, and I'm, I'm slowly building a business with bees, and I'm doing decent, and I'm getting stuff done, but I'm the first person to say, I barely know what the hell I'm doing. Yeah, I hardly know what I'm doing as well. Um, yeah, I'm just trying to make sure all my stuff is shut down. And this is pretty much all that's going on. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Hey, uh, Secret Prepper saying hello, Billy, uh, from Texas. Oh, in the fucking God's country right there. Down in God's country. Yeah, um... Homestead Oss, uh, now you've got words from Australia. It, this has gone international, bro. Okay. Uh, hang on. Wait, wait. Shh. Shh. You can just uh, let a brother orate. Okay. Hang on a second. Okay. So Homestead Oss, uh, if you don't know them, go check out uh, Homestead Oss. Wonderful people. Uh, so uh, they're saying... Uh, Billy, great, great job on Gray Man. Oh, well, thank you. I yeah. Tried, but I felt kinda... Well, which probably worked out for the best because it was uh, the accident. Billy, I I have you on speakerphone on live stream, okay? Oh, okay. Just so you know. Yeah. I didn't break the internet. I wish I could break the internet, but you know, I don't think that's 
going to be had for a while. No, I, I, I got homestead off in my, in my sir. Hey, so Billy. Sure. Yeah. How, how did you enjoy being on that uh, live panel uh, with Gray Man? Uh, was that a new experience for you? And did you, uh, did you, did you enjoy participating in it? It was fairly new to me. And I will say I did enjoy it. But um, I'm still, oh, uh, Sean, you word, because I know you're still on YouTube. Um, I felt a little, uh, all of a sudden, and I didn't mean to, you did take over their chat, which I appreciate why you did it, but I'm never one to, um, what do you call that? Be the center of attention, and I appreciate why you did it, but son of a bitch, <laughs> you kind of threw that on me. <laughs> it was fun, and I wish I would have been a little bit more, um, even-minded, like, a little bit better, like, hey, this is this, this is this, this is this, like, and... I just literally didn't have uh, everything laid out very nice to go and explain it. Hey, hey, listen, listen, Billy. Yeah. Uh, don't, don't, don't give that a second thought, okay? Because, I mean, like, you know, if it was a planned interview or something like that, um, you know, if, if I'm planning to make a video, there's certain props that I do or certain things that I put in place to make the video easier to make or whatever, you know what I mean? So, um, because this is entirely impromptu, I mean, you know, don't, don't give it a second thought. Like, you know, what you're doing, it doesn't matter if the installation's hanging out the wall or not, or if it's not sealed up yet or anything like that. It's just, you know, people enjoy seeing and I, you know, I, you and I know each other. Oh, yeah. So, like, I know that you know enough stuff that you're a brother that should be held up. Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah, well, so I, and so I hold you up. So that's this evening, basically. And um, you know what? I didn't mean to take over uh, my other brother's uh, chat over at Gray Man there. I didn't mean to do that, but I did ask him if I could. And he said, yes, I could. So I use that as an opportunity to interview you so that other so that other people could get the idea of what you're about. Because I do believe you're a brother that has a bunch of knowledge to share with people. Right? We need to hold you up and bring you in. On that note, you have a lot more subs than me and you got a little bit more reach. And I love I love to use that as my advantage to help smaller yeah. channels. I love that. And awesome, and it's wonderful because I've seen you do it multiple times. But if we get this all set up for Sunday around seven o'clock, that was the theory. Seven o'clock, yeah, Roger that. Um, I don't want it to be like. I'll give a little five-minute fucking blurb, all right, about I know how to raise rabbits, and I know how to do this, and I know, but I don't want it about that. It's literally because my girl's going to be here, and she's going to be feeling good. Are you still on a live chat? Yep. Yeah. Okay, and, and, well, and, and you're on speakerphone. Okay, well... Um, this is the one you know about that has got some issues medically. Roger that. Okay. That's as far as I'm going to go. And that's as far as I'm going to go. Um, I'm just meaning she knows a lot of medical stuff and yes, I can, I can teach people about raising rabbits, I can teach people about raising livestock, I can show people shit they didn't even understand, like I remember my wife helping me move hogs and I went, stop doing that she went, what? 
And I went, your shadow's scaring him. She goes, how do I stop that? Stop having a shadow. It just threw her off so completely, which is stuff I will talk about, but I don't want Sunday to be anything about me. This is about a person that's here that will talk and can help people out with basic shit. Hey, Billy, listen. If, if yep. you think you won't get together on Sunday and it's going to be a big Valentine's Day kiss, no, 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 no. Saddle? Saddle? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, we should call it that, the Valentine's Day kiss. Oh, my goodness. No, I'm out. out. Like, it's all the Valentine's Day hug? You, no, you're cute, Billy, but uh, I'm out. Oh, you'd fucking kiss me. You know it. Yeah, I probably and would. I, you know, I wish I could get on a screen to see what the live chat says after I just said that. Goodness <laughs> gracious, I have no idea. Let me look. Um, that's pretty slow. Somebody's saying Valentine's Day Sunday. Oh, Northern Girl. Oh, yeah, okay. Secret <laughs> Pepper saying, uh, yes, ma'am. Well, there ain't no ma'am in the chatter screen here. There's going to be a ma'am come Sunday, and she knows her stuff, and... And I really appreciate everything you've done for me and my channel, but I'm just saying, come Sunday, it has nothing to do with what, if someone asks me something specific, I'll be sitting here with her. If someone asks me something specific, I'll fill in. Oh, okay, so but, hang on a second, Billy. What are, so what, what are we talking about here? Um, are you going to, uh, like, uh, email me a link to a... Uh, uh, StreamYard, so I can just uh, jump on it, and it's going to be a and a or what are we talking okay. about for Sunday? Let's, let's go with something like that. Um, I don't know exactly how it's going to work. I'm going to have Amanda look into it tomorrow, because I'm, I'm, I'm going out into the bush and gun wood tomorrow with the kids. So, I don't know. I'm going to put her on it. The girls had a blast. Shooting, shooting out tonight on your earlier live stream. They had a blast. But Crystal is super smart with, like, wound care and just, she knows the stuff that no one ever wants. Like, no one ever wants to talk about this guy needs his bedpan changed. This guy needs his diaper changed. She knows the stuff that no one wants to talk about. Everyone... For lack of a better term, everyone's all fancy with the, I know how to deal with a gunshot wound. Yeah, okay, great. How about he's been shot, but now he's pissing himself for the past two weeks. How do we deal with that? She's really good with the unsexy <laughs> problems. Well, you know what, Billy? Um, that's going to be... Just that's that's going to be an interesting um, interview slash conversation. Yeah, and she's she's Sean. It's like talking to a female version of me. Oh, she, oh no! Gonna, I'm I'm going to try, but you need to pull in every moderator you have. Oh my goodness! Oh my eye mods, sharpen your toenails. More language than me. And I'm going to talk to her because every time she took my phone for me tonight, I'm like, I'm a moderator on that channel. You need to not swear and you give me my phone back. <laughs> so I'm just saying if you could contact your moderators if we get this working right, you might need them on not just for, for me. The moderators are listening. Yeah. Yeah, well, Billy, I can feel that, no problem. Uh, but I think maybe, uh, you know, on Sunday, 
we should maybe have a more clearly defined idea of you know what we want to talk about. I'm going to call you long before we set that up. All right. But I will say, um, there's about a four-hour gap. Perfect. Perfect. Don't don't call me before noon. Yeah. Well, it's definitely not going to be before noon. Thank you very much. There, there's a section that I got to take care of Valentine's Day. Let's go with that. Yeah, Roger that. <laughs> yeah, you no. Know yeah, yeah, yeah. Take your time to, uh, you know, do all that and, uh, you know, stay in contact through text and uh, let me know when you uh, want to go up or, yeah, I'm gonna, or I'm gonna, how, uh, how you figured it out. Like I said, StreamYard, there's a free version. Get with Broussard Homestead. They might be able to link you up with it. Um, oh, and I still got to send Broussard that book. Because I promised them a book. So I'm going to send them a book. Hey, I gotta get on. are you just talking to me right now? Or are you watching my live stream? I can only talk to you. I can't do both. It's just the cell phone shot. That's, uh, ah, okay. I got to get her out here with the cell phone or the, the phone the laptop, all that stuff. I can't do multiple things. No, I hear you on that. I was just uh, going to show you uh, a painting that Amy Broussard, young Amy, uh, like she oh. she paints and stuff, right? So I sent yeah. some money down there for uh, to get them canvases and such. And she, she sent me a uh, Christmas theme uh, painting. So I was going to show you if you were on the uh, live stream. But seeing no, as that, I'm not, I'm not, but you can, you can shop me a, share me a pic. Um, yeah, actually I can do that. Uh, but I think while I'm thinking about it right now, I'm just going to set the phone down. I'll keep talking to you, but I'm going to show it to the other people in the chat that might not have seen it. Yeah. Um, uh, and it's just like, a, it's, so you can get sort of a visual mental image belly. It's kind of, um, just like, uh. Sort of a candy cane image. Oh, I like that. Yep. I like the brass of two colors and just the power behind it. Yeah, it, uh, and this was painted for me and sent from Louisiana. Oh, and that's the other, like, uh, well, you're, you're a moderator for Ed. Uh, yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And that painting that's behind him is got to be one of the most god awful toddler level of paintings. Like it's better than what I could do, but still a toddler level of painting. But where it's the, the picture of him shirtless, you know, like you know what, I'm, what painting I'm talking about? With a six pack and all that. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. It is. It is god awful toddlerish, but. Oh, I would rock it out, too, just for the simple fact that someone spent the time and cared enough. To make that of you. And, and he does a shit to, Like, I, I watch probably every seventh video he puts out, and I never watch his live streams. That's, like, I caught you the other night on one of his live streams, but I never watch a live stream just because I'm horrible to get on live streams because... It's hard for me to do live streams. Hey, hey, Billy, where did we find you tonight? Whose live stream did I find you on tonight? No, I found you on yours. Oh, uh, okay, that's how it happened. All right. Well, I've got... Because I, I was going to bed, and I was like, you know what? I'm going to go to bed, but the girls are really going to laugh if I all of a sudden switch my phone over and, and have it say, good night, Crystal and Amanda, and you guys did it. And then the whole freaking the chat blew up with night crystal and I had a night <laughs> Well, I, I asked them to do it, and you know what? To be to be quite honest with you, Billy, I mean, the people that come into my chat and my moderators are freaking fantastic. Like when there's a suggestion from someone and it's agreed upon by me, like on a raid, 
we all just go over there and hammer the love. We just it's like okay, it's like okay, one, two, three, let's go. And then one, once we're done over there, I just make the rally cry, you know, just to circle the wagons or whatever. And yeah, uh, I've had a couple of your raids, like uh, get back home. About a month ago, I was better at hitting raids, but I'm just I'm trying to go to bed on time, and I'm trying to. I'm trying to get my own stuff done, and that's why I even say that in my own videos where I'm like, listen, I am not necessarily great at answering. Like email, I, like me? I put up a video, and then two days later, I started responding to messages, and I, I really try, because I'm sitting there going, if you guys spend the time to watch my video and make a comment... I really think I should try to respond to you. And that's one of the reasons I'm kind of glad that I'm still a small channel because I, I legitimately think yeah. you spend the time to respond to me, I should spend the time to respond to you. That being said, I got a lot of shit going on and it might take me a week, two weeks, three weeks, but I'm going to fucking do it. Um, you know what? Uh, okay, I, I agree with you 100%. And, you know, you know me. That's kind of oh, yeah. what I I do. I, I, I try and respond to every single comment. And the, But do you know what that means when you have a video that has a thousand comments on it? And I agree with that. It's, it, it becomes impossible after a point. And that's why I say... I understand when people don't respond to me when it's a bigger channel because I'm like, oh, I made a comment. I don't expect fuck all from that. But I don't respond on most channels. I respond on smaller channels. I respond on your channel. If, if nothing else, I got the like and I'll give you the thumbs up or something. Or, or you usually tell me how you hate me. Yeah, no. And I'm pretty sure we had a conversation in, which is funny because I know your fucking name and number, why I had a conversation with you on YouTube about how I was pissed off about you should not be able to downvote without making a comment. Oh yeah, we did have a, I think we had two discussions about that, Billy. Probably at least two. It just, it annoys the crap out of me. And it's not that my channel gets downvoted, because, in all honesty, I don't make any money off it. I don't care. Legitimately. I well, don't care. Well, it doesn't matter. Uh, we're going to uh, uphold you, uh, because I think you have fantastic knowledge to share with the community. Um, otherwise, I mean, you know, we've known each, uh, we've known each other a good long while, Billy, and there's a, a good, good pile of trust built up there, right? So... I mean, if you weren't a brother I thought yeah, worthy I of holding up, I wouldn't hold you up. Longer. We've had enough conversations that I've known you longer than I should. We've had highs and low conversations. I've talked to you about stuff, and I've asked you about stuff, and you've talked to me about stuff, and you've talk, asked me about stuff, and we have never... Broke Which it. is my big problem. We have never broke bread. We have never I'm broken sure. bread. Yes, we do need to break bread. Indeed. I could not agree with you uh, any stronger. I, I, I'm old school. I, I got a thing about sitting down and eating with a person. Because... Hey, we, we, we should break bread and then go shoot something. Well, both of those can happen. All right, Plus, well... We don't have to worry about Ford or Trudeau effing us over. Um, just take that as a given, um, and we'll just go out and do whatever we want anyways. Not, not necessarily a bad plan. I mean, um, that's how I've lived my entire life. Well, we've got a certain period of time, and then I'm way too busy. Hey, Persian Prepper. Reese's Resources, I wanted to say hi. Sorry, I'm just addressing a bit of chat here. 
No, that's fine. Is everyone having a good time on the chat? Um, they seem to be enjoying your uh, interjections. Well, as I said, I can answer questions about a lot of messed up stuff, livestock, that kind of stuff, but there are certain things I can't. I can answer stuff about construction, carpentry. If you want fancy carpentry, find another guy. If you want... <laughs> There's brutal honesty. Billy will always say it how it is. Always. Dude, I can get it done. I can get it done. But if you want it fancy, you want it pretty, you need to look at a different channel. <laughs> you want to get it done, I can show you how to get it done. That's the best I can say about my channel. It's the best I can say about me in general. Okay. Um, hey, Billy, let me ask you yes. this. Mm -hmm. All right, you got that wicked awesome uh, greenhouse there with the wood stove in it and the hot water system. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so it's not so much a system as a as a plan, but yeah, may I do I have a hot water system in it. But okay, um, so seeing as you have that, um, I'm just kind of wondering, in so far as what kind of way you use it, um, like a, in the early season, to get a jump on growing, if like, or if that's in your, or or if that's in your plan and what your, you know, next coming plan for that is. Within this week, I'm going to start firing up the greenhouse, and I will say I apologize to anyone listening and anyone who watches my channel. There is only about a 50% chance you will see it. Sorry, because I'm busy. I'm doing stuff. I do so much crap here on the farm that I don't videotape. Why? Because one, I'm busy. Two, you don't need to see it. Three, I'm freaking busy. Oh, so Billy. I will, I will try to show when I fire up the wood stove in the greenhouse. And the big thing with the, the greenhouse, in all honesty, it's not the wood stove that eats it up. It's having the water tanks. Because the water bleeds the heat out over the day. It's the heat over the day. It's not the intense heat while the wood stove's running. It helps with some stuff, but... It's the retention of the water. It's the retain... Well, the, the water retains the heat. Yeah. So I've got a 50-gallon tank pressed up right up against that wood stove, and I've got it so warm that my little baby girl was sitting there going, can I... And this is before I put the, the clock. Which, I don't care what anyone says. Screw everybody. I am rocking out the simple fact that I have a clawfoot tub in my shop. <laughs> but before I had my clawfoot tub in my shop, my little baby girl wanted to jump in the, in the 50 gallon water tank because it was bathtub warm. Night nosing girl. And like it was I just got it that warm, right? But that's that's the key to having that kind of kind of greenhouse. Wait, wait, wait. Hang on a second. There's something here in the chat I want to ask. Sorry. <clears throat> um Stuart, what's going on? Uh can you uh, please describe it? Yeah, night northern girl. I uh, I'm sorry. I, I missed a bunch of chat. What, Billy? Oh, I just mean, hey, Northern, she was out in that other chat. And oh, very good. Yeah, she's off to bed. Yeah, no, sounds like Stuart W. has something going on. Uh, no, nah, she's awesome, man. Oh, no, she, I, I've watched a bunch of her videos. She's, she's pretty cool. I, I just think she didn't expect your impromptu interview. Uh, 
Um, I, I think, uh, yeah, I'll definitely agree with that. She probably didn't know that I had the con doing an interview with you at the time. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, I, yeah, I, I would support that 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Stuart is uh, trying to find his balance. You know what? Yeah, we need to take time to do that, which I've been doing, and it's important to do that because, um, you know, like, well, if you don't have balance, you don't have anything, right? You know what? I yep. will agree, Stuart, and I also had, you know what? I don't even know if I'm allowed to say this about a person being here because I don't know how legalities work right now but I had a young girl pretty upset pretty and again you gotta sit there and realize that a young girl is still a young girl it doesn't matter what else is going on in the world a young girl is still a young girl she's still going to have the problems. She's still going to have the problems about her family talking, her friends talking, and everything else. And I had, and this is a girl who has a little bit of history of hurting herself. And I pulled her aside. And I, she trusts me and she knows me. And it's going to be really funny when her father sees my, my name in her phone. Probably not so much to say on YouTube, but it's going to be funny, Sean, because if her father says anything, I will break him in half. All right. Okay. Hang on a second there, Billy. <laughs> um, yeah, no, no I, I understand what you're saying, and I don't disagree at all. But this, this young girl just wanted to talk to me, and that's the one thing that I have a problem with this whole situation. They're forgetting the mental problems that people are having right now oh dude and this whole lockdown thing what are we uh day uh hang on a second today is the 13th so we must be day 335 into the freaking lockdown you know what i mean yeah it's, it's messed up for me because i i paid attention to this stuff it's drawn out hard and yeah we're in canada Andrew. Yeah, I, I paid attention to stuff long before it got mainstream, so I was already paying attention to it before we got. Roger that. But I've got a young girl that already had enough of an issue long before you even bring any of this bullshit stuff in. And I love this little girl. And Persian prepper, what you do? You did something. And yeah, they didn't like it. So you must be on the right track. Uh, you can type it here in the in the chat. What'd you do? Share us share with us what got you banned. Carry on, Billy. Well anyway, like uh not to not to try to, the thing is, this is, this is a girl that means a lot to me, and the worst part is, is be, trying to be a white male my age and go, I love kids. Everyone looks at you like you're creepy, which is horrible considering <laughs> how much I just love kids. I'm sorry, I got one of my best friends. It's I not, listen, Billy, that's not weird. It's, uh, people make it weird. People make it weird. But I got a friend of mine, Beard, that my wife has known him for years. Years upon years. And I literally go, one word, explain Beard. She goes, weird. If she didn't know him, she would not let him on the property close to small children but great guy wonderful person just literally he's a child for lack of a better term he just wants to play with kids like 
because he's like, I, I want to play kickball too. He's he's on the Asperger's scale, and he's got some other stuff going on with him. But I mean, if you look at him, he's got a beard down to his friggin' nipples. He's five foot five, bulky as shit. Looks like a creepy pedophile, but Good night, literally the nicest guy you ever met in your life. And I mean, it's great that I've got a guy that this guy is scary as hell to look at, but would rip someone's skull off if they ever got too close to my kids. <laughs> and I sit there and go, great. My problem is my daughters love guys that look like him and my biker friends. There's a reason I have guns. Well, it sounds like you got some soul searching to do, Billy. Uh, you know, okay, hang on a second. All right, I've got a daughter. She was here in my live chat much earlier this evening. Um, so I, I understand about having daughters, okay? So yeah, no, I know you do. I, I feel where you're coming from. Totally, uh, totally get it. However, you know what? As a father... Just release some of that. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. And you know what? I, I have and I have. But on another note, if it wasn't for how I was able to release it to the people I've released these issues to, mm -hmm. I would be in a different place. Well, I, I understand that. Yep. I have released my anger dad issues to guys that to the average person would be scary but that being said these are guys that would stand in front of and everyone says this and, and Sean you know me and you know my history Yes, yes. I am literally I sure do. the people that are saying this will stand in front of a bullet for my kids. And these are the creepy looking dudes. Yeah, there'd be a wall of people in front of there. Yeah. And I don't know if you're still on your live, and you can... I am, and, and you're uh, still on uh, voice, uh, uh, speakerphone. Oh, okay. Well, you can... Within reason, explain what I mean, and I mean within reason, you're not allowed to, to a point. I don't think it needs much uh, explanation, Billy. I think you've done a fine job explaining it yourself. Well, I'm, I'm just saying i got a history with groups and stuff and things, and... And understand how important it is to protect the people in the family. Yeah, there is there is a huge a huge score on family for every every group I've been involved in. And if it wasn't a big thing about protecting my kids and my family and their kids and their family, then I wouldn't be involved in it. Yeah, exactly. You know. That's probably one of the reasons why you and I have gotten along right from the hop. I don't know how that happened, why we got along so good. No You're idea. Canadian. That's a big start. You're Canadian. But I like it. Well, I guess, yeah. We don't. We at least don't have that to hold against the other, you know what I mean? Oh, hang on a second. You're from somewhere else. I automatically don't like you. It's like, what? I had a guy chirp on me to YouTube about a whole bunch of stuff, and I went, listen. I'm probably the easiest person to get along with. One of my favorite people to talk to on YouTube is a socialist vegan. If I can get along with him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure I can get along with you. And they literally went, wait, what? Because they were trying to troll me. And I went, no, I can understand a lot of different viewpoints. And I will respect and listen. As long as you're going to do that, too. Because uh, John, or, sorry, Hooples, 
I don't mean to say his name. Oh, you didn't. Don't worry about it. Uh, yeah, don't. Uh, I just flashy thing to you. You don't. You won't remember. You will not remember a thing. But and it was really funny because I, I ran into a, a video and Goofles had made a comment on this video. And I made a snarky comment to him. And it was snarky. I'm the first person to admit it. It was snarky because it was a game for me and him. And this other person made a comment about how bitchy I was about this comment. And I went, oh, no, 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 wait. You don't understand. This is a game for me and him. We find each other in other people's videos and try to be snarky to each other. Like, well, that, that's no reason to tell him that veganism is a bad life choice. And I went, okay, thank you for supporting my friend. First off, veganism is a horrible life choice. Also, I've had, I've literally had beers with the guy. This isn't a YouTube thing. I've literally had beers with the guy. We know each other. <laughs> he invited me to his house. Thanks for defending my friend, but I'm going to be, whatever you say, I'm still going to be a prick to him because that's our game. And he went, oh. Really? Yeah, no, seriously, I know the guy. He's like, oh, well, that's kind of fun. And I went, yeah, it is. To randomly find your buddy on YouTube? Fucking hilarious. And I'll do the same thing to you if I fucking come across a YouTube video that I've never watched before and I see North Shore preparedness. I am going to rip you over the coals for whatever you say. <laughs> Don't be like that, Billy. Let people have their say. I mean... You know, if if it's a troll, it's a troll. If uh, oh, yeah. if it's an a hole, it's an a hole. And you know, well, some... he, he was he was literally just trying to defend my friend, which I appreciated because so you're defending my friend. I'm not. I can't give you a hard time about that. But I, I explained. I went, okay, thanks, but quite literally, I'm picking on him because I literally know him. And this is just something we do. We pick on each other. He goes, what do you mean you know him? I've freaking drank with him. <laughs> well, he goes, it, it, it would be rude to pick on someone you don't know. Suc <laughs> like, successfully. You, you wouldn't, it would be rude to try and successfully pick on someone you don't know. Or like. I tell my kids and they're like, why are you, why are you teasing me? Now? And if I stop teasing you, it means I'm actually mad at you. Yeah, okay, all right. Everyone has different relationships. I totally get that. Yeah, no, and I don't I don't sit there and go, you're fat. <laughs> like, I don't say that stuff to my kids, but, like, the hee hee tickle their nose or something. They're like, why are you teasing me? I'm like, because I love you. I grew up with a messed up childhood. This is the best I can do. Hey, right, these things happen, right? Yeah. Well, it's the same like what I was talking about earlier with my my spare daughter. Twelve year old girl. Billy, can I talk to you? And I said, Yes, we are. Let's let's go out and talk. And I'm putting my boots on and she's putting her shoes on and her mother says, What are you doing? She says, I'm going outside for a walk. With Uncle Bill. So why are you going out for a walk with Uncle Bill? And I looked at her mother and I went, shut up. And her mother looked at me and went, mm, okay. I don't know what this is involved. And I looked at her and I went, I'll, I gave her the wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Like, I'm going to give you the information I can give you within confidence, but she's a 12 year old girl. She's looking for someone to talk to. That's not her damn mother. Oh, yeah. Okay. 12, 12 year old people need that. Yeah, and she told me some stuff that concerns me, and which I did bring up with her mother, and I went, I got problems saying this to you because she's told me stuff. But I'm sure you know a bunch of stuff, but this is the best I can tell you within confidence because she was talking to me, not 
not you, not her counselor, not, and she's, my spirit comes from a broken home. Her mom and dad are split up years ago and all this other stuff. And she's had a, she's had a good heart run, which sucks. No kids should have to deal with that. No. But when she says certain things to me, I went, okay, well, sweetheart, you have your phone, and I'm going to go talk to your mom, and I'm going to tell your mom you're allowed to have my number in your phone. And you are allowed to call me or text me anytime you want. And if your mother or father has a problem with that... Nice lifeline. Nice lifeline there. Sorry? I said that's a nice lifeline. Well, I, I don't exactly know what you mean. No. I, I, can, I can tell you what I mean by it. I know it sounds creepy that a fucking 40-year-old dude is talking to a 12-year-old girl, but... My version of it is different than other people's, and I will say that if we were having a different conversation, considering some of the stuff I know, this would not be allowed on YouTube for my reaction. And I'm pretty sure you can figure out my reaction on a few steps there, Sean. Yeah, probably one uh, step and a half, maybe. I got a buddy that can drill a deep hole. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, yeah, if doing that was a job, I'd show up for free on Saturdays and early on Sundays. Yeah, yeah, no, it was, and, and then when you figure out, and you find out other stuff, you go, okay, well, they're only going to be this perfectly honest, and you still sit there and go, well, that's still not cool, and you still try to figure stuff out, and then you... Every, every aspect of every portion of your life you take in with your own history, your own knowledge, your own understanding. And all that being said, and you know I've got a messed up history, I was still a very angry person and it really did take me a second not to show it on my face because I'm just trying to be supportive of this 12-year-old girl. Well, you know what? There's a lot of reasons I love you, Bill, and that's kind of one of them, you know? No, no, I get that. And so, you know, we didn't really seek each other out this evening. However, you know, yeah. us, us having bumped into each other is cool because, I, like, I like that um, because we weren't looking for each other. But, boom, hey, whoa, look, there's Billy. And, uh, you know, I'm... Uh, I was glad to have this uh, opportunity to uh, spend it with you well, and, uh, and hold you up, you know? Thing. We have never, as I say, we have never broken bread. We have not. And we have not. Doesn't mean, I'm pretty sure, that doesn't mean I don't consider you my brother. Oh, but I'm pretty sure it, with the subtext you've got... Because I'll hold you up. Yeah, I know you will, but with the subtext you've got in that limited conversation... You're still going, nah, i never seen shit. We had a conversation like, oh, no, did this happen? Nope, never seen shit. No, I didn't, I didn't see a thing, man. Yeah. And which would really sit there and make you wonder about the whole legal system with being honest, but at the same time, if it's people like me and you being bracket, bracket, honest... How bad is the legal system? Okay, hang on a second. Let's just ad address that real quick here. Uh, it's a pretty freaking large well, genre. You're still on YouTube, so I'm trying to be my best. Billy, you've had your uh, one minute of fame here. Give me mine, okay? Okay, so, so, so my idea of the penal system is that it is a penal system. It's there to whack you. Okay. And you know what? The, the, I call it the meat mill. The meat mill. That's what I call prisons. 
you know, the because the whole government and police are put in place or, or are there in place, and their only agenda is to attempt to incriminate you, you know, and it, it's not that anything you say can and will be used against you, it's everything you say will be used against you. And they say that to you as part of your Miranda rights. Do you understand that? It's not called Miranda rights here in Canada. I found that out. On it, a different note. Is Miranda rights not a global thing? Ah, well, it's not called Miranda rights here in Canada, which I did find out in a different situation. That we're not going to... Yeah, but yeah, what you're saying is true. They will use everything and anything against you. Exactly. They're not here to protect you. They're here to incriminate you. That is the difference that people need to understand. They're not they're they're not obliged to protect you in any way. Nope. And that's coming from my brother-in-law was a cop. I originally went through for policing. And I totally understand. Shut your goddamn mouth. Yeah, don't say a thing. Yeah, a, a cop shows up on my door and starts asking me a, a question. I, You know, my uh, reaction is, oh, well, why do you want to know? Where's your warrant? No, I don't even ask them that. I, ju I just pussyfoot around. It's like, oh, well, why do you, why do you want to know? Well, it's because, uh, do, you, do you have, and then it'll go into another question. I'm like, well, I don't know. Like, what's your license plate number? If my car's not here, if, you know, uh, some girl was driving it or whatever, wasn't there. What's your license plate number? I don't know, man. It's on the bumper. You have the information? Feel free to look it up. You know what? They've already got the information. That's what I mean. You have the information. Yeah. Yeah. Like, did you? You're you're not here on my porch to bring me a freaking cake, right? What do you want? So so I never just ask them what they want. But finally, when I do get pissed off, I'll say, "All right, you're at least polite enough to introduce yourself. What do you want?" And when you ask them. They'll rarely tell you. They don't know either. Nope. Just, Which is sad. Just fishing. And actually, that's my one argument when people say, well, you can't say that they're going to take this and that away from you because these cops and these soldiers, they're your brothers and they're your sisters. Yeah, they are. But it's increments. Yeah. Everyone can do something small. I can kick you in the ankle. Knowing you or not, I can just walk up to a person and kick them in the ankle because I got told, listen, you're going to keep your $80,000 a year job if you just walk over to this person and kick them in the ankle. Yep. Yeah, pretty much. Well, that's my argument when people say, well, they're not going to take your guns because it's your brothers and it's your sisters and it's your aunts and your uncles and your cousins. Well, okay, right up until you think about the fact that it's peace by peace. Stuart, okay, we'll see you. So, yeah. No, my, like, if you ask my uncle to come out to my place and say, I'm going to take away his this, that, the other thing, and his gun, and his fucking right. No, my uncle would never do that. But my uncle possibly would come out and go, could you show me where your guns are? Step by step. Hmm. Well. And that's my problem with a lot of this stuff. All right, let's, um... Let's rewind in history a little bit, Bill. Uh, see what you remember. Uh, I am a student of history, and my wife was a history major, mostly because I made her become one. <laughs>
do you know what? I think you're going to probably field yourself well here anyways. So, uh, like, don't give it a second thought, all right? Um, That's good because most of my thoughts aren't second. They're, well, they're first. <laughs> what's, the, uh, what's your take on um, how Bill C, was it C-78, was addressed? Do, uh, do you do you remember that? That was the. Um, uh, you need to tell me the exact parameters of C seventy eight. I'm pretty sure it was a mandatory yeah. uh, long gun registry here in Canada. Now we've got some American viewers here, so I want them to understand what our take was on uh, the mandatory long gun registry. Now that when that when you're talking about the original bill, which came out. Over 15 years ago. Keep talking while I make a drink, Bill. Okay. Bill drank all my drink. If it's the bill that I'm thinking of, it came out well over 20 years ago. Yeah. And I was a liberal child raised by conservative parents. And when you lash out and try to not not be your parents' child, you're just going to do everything separate from your parents. And... Now, being older, I love sitting there going, did you vote today? And they went, no, I didn't vote, but I wouldn't have voted for who you told me to vote for. And I'm like, I didn't tell you to vote for anyone. I think you should vote because it's very important that you should vote. Uh, well, I wouldn't have voted for who you think I should vote for. And I looked at the kid and I went, you would have voted liberal, right? And they said, yeah. I said, it's okay. Age and experience will cure that and I was just like any other small child big into liberalism thinking everything needs to be this way because of this and we need to take care of everything and then when you all of a sudden pay 65% tax before you just go out and do anything well all of a sudden that kind of hurts so, a little bit of not caring for the everyman, but also a lot of all of a sudden realizing that I've been fixing your problems for this long and it's still not fixed? Why am I still paying for this crap? No goddamn self-respecting self business would pay for the same problem for 25, 35, 45, 55 years. Obviously, whatever you're doing is not working. <laughs> Pick something new. So, when you sit there and try to say, oh, this is going to fix the problem, yeah. Uh, the definition of insanity is trying the same, is doing the same thing over and over and over and over and over again. Hmm. Yeah, Einstein said that. I don't have the time or the money to deal with. Hey, Dutch. Yeah. Ahead, well, you know what? You you see, the thing is, like, exactly. Like, you know, I, I kind of want to reinforce what you were saying. There is. You know, you repeat the same thing and the same thing and the same thing and expect a different answer. It's never going to happen. And that is an Einstein move right there. Like, that's a, you know, one of his more famous quotes, right? I was going to say, you didn't know where the quote comes from. That's kind of impressive. Well, <laughs> you know, I may be dumb, Bill, but I'm not extraordinarily uneducated. I'm slightly refined. Slightly. You know, I, I I don't have any burrs. Well, I may have some, I may have a, a burr or two, but I don't have many burrs on my skin. Yeah. But it's ridiculous in the simple fact that you sit there and go, okay, how hard is this for you to figure out? Every time, and I love saying this because people are like, we need more socialism, we need more this, that, and the other. You know, and I look at people and go. Socialism ends in starvation and genocide every time. And they look at me and go, what? Look it up. Socialism, historically, every time ends in starvation and genocide. And every time they say, well, that's not socialism. How many times do we have to say, 
Oh, All right, you know what? All of a sudden, go, hey, maybe, maybe it's the problem with the whole system, not how it's being. Because everyone says they're not doing it right, and I'm going to do it right. Well, this time it's this time it's socialized socialism. This time it's democratic socialism. F that. I'm the first person to want to take care of someone else. You know what, Billy? Mm -hmm. Do you know what the grand illusion is? Mm -hmm. Do you know what the... I have, I have different issues, but go ahead. Say your... Say well, your piece. All right, yes, you do have issues. <laughs> I, won't, I won't disagree, um, and I'm not harping on you about it either. No, um, but... But... Uh, what the big illusion is, is everyone's looking left and everyone's looking right. That same fucking bird. Well, <laughs> see, the thing about it is, yeah, people are looking left and people are looking right because the bird is flapping the wing left and flapping the wing right, okay? Now, the big illusion, the big illusion is that people think they actually have a choice. There isn't any choice. Look at how much, like, the Americans want a third party. We have multiple parties here in Canada, and really, how many choices do we really have? We don't have any choices. Even the conservative party is so fucking far left, comparatively to 20 years ago, Billy? All right. I'm going to give you the meat and potatoes of uh, my beliefs, all right? And, and just how I view things and, and my, my approach uh, toward it, okay? All right. So, um, I was following uh, a political campaign one time, and it was for the... Uh, the, the the run for the prime minister race or what kind of whatever kind of competition you call it yeah all right so it's for that and we're we're talking probably 12 15 12 no 12 so post Gretchen. 10 10 12 years ago maybe nine nine to t to 11 years ago Okay, so there was somebody on the platform there, and their whole frickin' um, MO, their whole campaign was, I will not raise taxes. Okay, so... And, and I considered voting for that guy, to be honest with you, and that would have been the first time I'd ever voted. And as it turned out, I didn't end up voting. And I'm glad, because that rotten bastard... That lying, bald-faced motherfucker ra raised taxes within two weeks of his freaking internship. Like you, you, you want to create uh, create freaking uh, barriers and mistrust? Wow, building blocks right there. Now I will say. As a hardcore conservative, because that's my only choice right now for my personal views, I'm pretty sure that was Harper. I I don't believe uh, that to be incorrect. And I get it on a lot of views. And 
personally, Harper had issues. I actually did vote to get him out because personally, I had a problem with someone running the country for fucking 12 years. All right. Well, well do, you know, do you know what? I'm... I would have voted Trudeau in at that point. Because you have locked up the country for 12 years, and I got an issue with that. Because I have an issue with you running stuff for that long. Because it's my same problem with... And I made a video, and I had a lot of comments. And we, a lot of people didn't really understand. We should it, we should be able to if we don't like what they're doing, we should be able to march up to their office and say, "Hey, get the hell out of there! You're doing the wrong thing." Yeah, no, I, I understand that, but the only problem is to be a orange man bad syndrome. People would march every week, and we'd never have a leader. Sometimes we just need a leader, and even if it's going to be, and that's coming from me where who's been an unhappy All right. person, sometimes we just need a leader that just does stuff, and I get it, and I've been super unhappy, super unhappy. Hey, R.D. And I was super unhappy with our conservative hey, leader Steve. Yeah, yeah, we're up late. Yeah, I'm um, just on the phone with my uh, my buddy Bill here. If anyone in the chat doesn't know Bill from Ontario Homestead, uh, go check him out. Sorry, buddy, I'm plugging your channel. Shut up. <laughs> You're asking. I don't know if I'm going to raise numbers or lose them when you ask me political comments, but. Yeah, well, to, you know what? To be honest with you, Bill, this is a rare occasion because I never talk about political things because I strongly dislike politics and politicians. Strongly dislike them. Like, you want to shake my hand? Uh, shit, if I shook your hand, I'd have to, like, go wash it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Greasy things. I mean, what are you in? Purple, green, fuchsia? I don't even know anymore. What are you talking about? I'm in red, so you definitely have to wash your hands. What are you in, purple, green, fuchsia? I don't know. This is like day uh, 334 of uh, lockdown. I don't know. Yeah. Or 300. Well, well, actually, next week I get to go up to Toronto. And it's going to be really funny because i got to go to a hospital. And... They're going to tell me that I can come in after I do my, my words and my thing, and they're going to tell my wife that she can't come in, same as they always do, and I'm going to look at them and go, um... WTF. Eyeballs. I might not be able to see to get out of the hospital. And they go, oh, well, that's different. Because they've tried that a couple times. Well, you know what? If you're going in for eye surgery, they should already know that. Uh, like, they're failing on their jobs. Massive fail. Great big frickin' F. I don't, I'm not sure how you make it on the uh, screen here, but big, I, massive I, fail. I'm not going for eye surgery. I'm not. This is just literally a checkup, but it's by checkups by the world's top. Yeah, well, they put drops in your eyes sometimes to, to, to make things. Stuff my eyeballs. And I'm not sure how I'm going to react. And I can guarantee, because I'm a six foot two, three hundred pound pussy. Say, uh, safety protocol. You need my wife there, because there is a great big chance that I need her there, because I'm either going to freak out or cry. <laughs> <laughs> I can see that, Bill. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, 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 you need your support system there. You can't drive after that. You don't know if you're going to be able to. Responsibly. I can't find my way to the hospital with the blurry drops. Even if I can see properly, I'm going to be honest with you, separate me from my wife and I will rip tombstones in half. <laughs> I know, Bill. I know. I 
football puzzle. Yeah. Yep. Stab me in the eye. And I don't know how well I'm going to see you after they get done that. I am good enough that I can get out of the hospital. Because I've gone there that many times. Even if they really mess me up. <laughs> that being said, I am not, like, for lack of a better term, I'm physically imposing to most people. I am probably one of the gentlest people you've ever met in your life, but I'm physically imposing to most people. Well, you, you are pretty ugly. Yeah, I am ugly. Just saying. You know what, that's... I'm not trying to be an aggressive person, but I don't deal with certain situations well, and now you're going to take my fucking safety blanket away from me? That's a bad plan. And that's the other, like, and how bad can this be when most people have this disease, need to get a test, to get told they have the disease? Uh, as bad as you can. Do you know what, man? I'm good. And, and I'm going to say that for the tests. And I'm going to say that for the... Uh, like, if I, if I feel ill, sure, I'll announce it, but... Uh, well, who goes around... I don't... I, feel, like I, I feel good. Who goes around like doorknobs? Doorknob lickers, um... You need to go over to. When you had a flu, did you run around licking doorknobs? You you need to go over to Grim Survival for that. They'll be licking on the like button. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, man, that's a thing. And I mean, cool. God bless them. That's what I'm saying. Like, when you feel like crap, how much often do you run around and? Like, talk to your elderly mother, like... Or anybody. Or leave me alone. Give me a bowl of soup and leave me alone. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure I had Norwalk virus a few years ago, and I, my, I had a young, young, young kid, and my wife, and I went, you need to move to your parents. And I was sick, and I was sick, sick, and it was bad, but... Like, the way I felt then was way worse than anyone has mentioned any of the horrible symptoms of this thing we're going through now. Yes, I know people have problems with it, and it's not something to joke about. It is something. But that being said, it's not something we need to shut down our entire economy over. Well, yeah, well, we sure don't, um, in my opinion. It's... I'm gonna, gonna I'm, I'm gonna come. I'm gonna come out. I'm, All right, go ahead, Bill. Well, like my my father's passed away, but I do have. Well, my my father-in-law just turned sixty-five. I think my father, my mother-in-law is sixty-four. My mom is over seventy-five. Who is half? And I don't know my in-laws. I mean, I know enough, but my my personal, like my mom, she's had a lot of health issues, and like I've had health issues, so like I'm I'm actually in the the this will kill you level of stuff, and I'm sitting there going, when it first came out, I paid attention to the numbers and I looked at them, and I was kind of freaked out. And then I realized that the numbers were coming from Italy where everyone was dead at 80. I'm like, wait a minute. All right. Um, do you know what? Um, as far as my understanding goes, uh, you know, there's like a... Uh, oh, it's dangerous to the people. It's dangerous, too. Well, there, there's like a... Uh, 
five percent survival rate even among those um, who are ill. Recover rate under eighty without severe comorbidities. Yeah. But that be, even that being said, I've got stuff. My mom's prone to fucking. Uh, well, the evidence says. Evidence says that uh, even if the inoculation is 97.5% or you'll have a 4% chance of having a side effect from it, you know, de depending on how the, uh, you know, how you want to work out the, uh, the ratios there, um, I mean, stats can say you you have a a larger chance of getting sick from the vaccine than you did, and you know than you know your chances of surviving from the virus without the vaccine. No, and it's ridiculous, and I hate the fact that I have tried to not be the conspiracy guy. And my government is turning me into a conspiracy guy. You, you know what, bro? Um, your government is my government, and I've been trying not to be a conspiracy guy, too. Um, however, uh, the, the current situation dictates that... It's not even a fucking conspiracy. Look what they're doing. All we need to do is say it. We're not lying or twisting any words. Just fucking say it. It's and a large level of disappointment is what it's being. I am disappointed in both my elected government and my fellow population. Now, that being said, I sit there and don't stand up for certain things because I've got young kids. Roger that. I am trying, but you guys, you know what? I'm past the point of taking the front line bullets. Well, uh, Billy, I'll, uh, every day of the week, I'll be happy to guard your back gate. I thank you for that. And you know what, John? I'm going to be honest with you. Or, might, or your you front gate. Uh, or your front gate. I know how to uh, set it up and orchestrate it. So, whichever. I am. I am sad to say that you are at best three hours away from me, and it's sad to say that it might come down to one day a very short text message of everything's fucked. You're safe here. Get down here. You roger that. And I hate the fact that I live in apparently one of the most democratic nations on the planet that I have that thought. Isn't it wonderful? I shouldn't have to have that thought. I should sit there and go, these people are crazy. None of that shit would ever happen here because we have all this Stuff to stop that, but we don't, and it's sad. Yeah, because y yeah, again, you served in our military. You're older than me, and me saying that to you, and you went, "Yeah, thanks, Roger that, got it." I'll run down there if it happens to happen. That should not even be a remote possibility in your head under a stable, proper, democratic nation. You just go, well, you need to talk to your therapist. Nah, all right, listen, Billy. I think, uh, I think, uh, all right, now these, for, for you, Billy, and for anyone in the chat, these are just my own personal thoughts regarding the matter. Um, I'm not a political scientist. I'm not trying to uh, sway any way that you uh, think politically. I'm not trying to give you political advice, okay? 
because I know nothing about it. However, my my input is um, yeah, big sigh for sure. My my input is there's not a lot of choice going on there. You know, you you can um, you know we could have an election one year that doesn't have any faces to it, just the uh, you know the uh, banner. Or whatever yeah. it is that theirs is, a banner and and no face and 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 choose side. No, that's that that that's uh, small potatoes, guys. You know, those people running for the office and this and that and like, don't get me wrong, I I don't blame them one little bit for running for office. <laughs> The, the, yeah, it's a solid job, and they do it for four years. They'll get a pension for life and maybe protection and all that kind of shit. Who knows? But, um, you know, I support them so far as that I've never voted. Well, I understand that. Uh, yeah, and I will say I, I did light a cigarette, and if it's anything super important, you got three minutes because it's cold in my shop, and there is warm bodies in my house that I, I can go curl up to. All right, well, piss off then, Bill. <laughs> I was giving you three minutes. It's all good, man. I'm just messing with you Are a little you bit. Still off right now, Sean? What's that, Bill? You still off? Like taking a break, you mean, or no? Like your uh, speakerphone uh, on live. Oh, what I mean, are you still off work right now? Yes, I am. For what? You know what? Um, the thing I was gonna say, I'm not gonna say because the internet's forever, and we'll talk about something tomorrow, late in the day. Just me and you. Hey, hit me up on text anytime you want, bro. No, we'll talk. Well, I, yeah, but I mean, shoot me a text first. Don't, don't just cold yeah. call me. Like, have some etiquette in your uh, lifestyle. Really? Come on. Are, now, here's my my first problem. Are you are you assuming that a Canadian wouldn't have etiquette? Oh, for shit's oh. sakes, we're we're so polite. We're going to have an a talk about etiquette regarding etiquette. All right. Have at you, Bill. Go on ahead. What would no. you like? Um, pardon me, by the way. I, I didn't mean to interrupt. Uh, please, please <laughs> take the uh, please take the floor. Now, you still have a thing? I'm, I'm assuming I'm still on your YouTube. Now, this is the funniest thing that I can ask any of your American viewers to look up. I actually deleted you last week. You probably should have. I think um, I blocked you too. I'm not sure how how this is happening. Now I will say, which your American viewers will get a kick out of, in the court of law in Canada, you are allowed to say I am sorry, and it is not an admission of guilt because it is known that Canadians are apologetic, regardless of if it's our fault or not. I agree with that, Bill, and I'm and I'm sorry about it. <laughs> but it was one of my funniest fucking things I ever learned in law class, and I went, I'm gonna hold on to that one. Yeah, you know what? Isn't it interesting? Uh, you know, as you go through life, and there's just these little nuggets you pick up here and there through life. You know. And you know what? In all honesty. I have been in a situation that was bad, and I've said to a person, I'm sorry for that. Not, like I just showed up in the situation, so I can understand where it's coming from, but when you actually look up the actual legal case, you're like, oh no, he fucking did it. That was, that was totally that guy. Um, Northern Girl Hobbies in the chat is asking 
what this has to do with anything. Well, we had a conversation earlier. Sorry to keep the, you up. The, the only thing it has to do with anything is, um, you know, sharing a mental perspective on how to deal with things in life. That's all. Yeah, that's kind of the best way to put it. Um, and, and, you know, if anyone can get... And, and it's really, it's just me and Bill having a conversation. And you guys... Yeah, are, if she wants, you, if she you, wants some hardcore... You guys are kind of watching. Stuff, I can show her how to break down a freezer, how to this, how to that. Ask a question. Not tonight, I'm going to bed. But if she has specific hardcore questions about a lot of different stuff... I can answer point by point the answer, but I've just been having a, conver a random funny conversation that has made me laugh. So, and you know what? If nothing else, I don't care how bad your life is. You need to laugh and you need to smile. It's the same reason. It's the same thing I talked to my spare daughter tonight was. You hear that shit, guys? You need to laugh and you need to smile and. If everything, if anything gets too bad, you need to look to another person that can make you laugh or make you smile because it's never the right answer to hurt yourself. That is fact as, as long as the day is. Well, on that note, it makes me sound smart. I'm going to let everyone go. And I'm going to go curl up in bed with something warm. Roger that then, bro. Thanks, brother. Have a good night. Yeah, nice talking to you, Billy. Love talking to you too, Sean. All right, yeah, yeah we'll uh, hook up this weekend, all right? Sounds good. Okay, ciao. Yep, yeah, ciao. Bye. Yeah, that's fine. All right. Sorry about that, guys, a little bit. Kind of sorry, kind of not sorry. Um, you know. When Billy and I get uh, talking on the phone, we talk for hours and hours and hours. And it doesn't, it won't always make sense to everyone. And that's okay. Um, because everyone has to do what's right for them, right? Which is way important. However, I, I believe there's uh, many good channels out there that have many good things to share. So that's, um, you know, that's kind of where I want to uphold uh, the community, right? Not, not to put the other down, but to hold them up, right? Five degrees in Boston. Well, push it five more degrees up. RD, and hold up your brother and your sister. No, oh, good goodness gracious, no, um, no, uh, Phoebe, not not uh, tomorrow, no. Maybe Sunday. I can't believe all you guys are still here in the chat. I left, I abandoned my own chat earlier and went and hung out on Gray Man. I can't believe all of you hadn't unsubscribe to me now for that. Um, and I apologize, but I mean, uh, you know, it, it was a, a really good opportunity to introduce Ontario Homestead to the uh, community because I believe he has a lot of value to share. Seriously, he's, he's very, very smart in a lot of ways. He might portray himself like, uh, you know, he's a dum-dum or whatever. But me and Billy, we're both dum-dums when it comes to computers. Like, um, okay. See this? This is my phone. 
You know what I use it for? I use it for making telephone calls and texts and maybe uh, take a picture and send it to somebody else. That's it. And that's about, when it comes to techie stuff, that's about how smart Billy and I are. So when I take a winter break here and I try and learn some techie stuff to make videos better or, or freaking um, ham radio or anything like that, uh, you know, I, I'm actually trying to learn. You know, I'm, I'm trying to progress my technology knowledge forward. CB, did you see my uh, t-shirt? Polite as, yep, yeah. yep, yeah. extraordinarily polite. So, I mean, you know, like that's, that's my whole MO is it, when I see a, a person, and I've known Billy for a long time, long time. I think I had 30 subscribers when I met uh, uh, Billy's channel, and he had like 500. I'm like, wow, okay, that's a good channel. You, you got to be doing good stuff and just not check out his stuff. And he's, do, he's doing great stuff. He makes horrible videos, but um, he's a good guy and doing good stuff. And um, it's definitely a channel to be held up by our brothers and sisters and included in our family, Billy's family. Yeah, Jennifer, you know, we can have an open chat and talk about anything, any questions at all, right? Random things, whichever. If somebody's got something that's bothering them, you know, it's not just me, but we've got a whole community in the chat to help answer the questions, right? Which is amazing because there's so many people that have so much more experience or different experience than you have. And, you know, you can have a nice interaction that way, right? Yep, food prices are up and there are some limitations as well, RD. Hey, Lori, how you doing? No, I'll always keep uh, trying to learn. Thank you. I will. Yep. The more you know. Do you know what? Go to culinary school. Seriously. Go to culinary school anybody who's prepping should have a course a whole full course in culinary school why watch some of my videos and you'll know why don't just survive on those beans and rice is plain and blah and every day all right I'll show you how to prep. I'll show you how to prep your gardens, how to grow, what to grow, you know? It's got to be 12 o'clock somewhere. Uh, no, no, it's not quite 12 here. No, no, no. We are deep into the 11th hour, but it is not 12. Yeah, there's culinary learning is, is endless. And you know what? So that lends itself to your preps, you know? There, there can be people out there who, if they make a lot of money and say, okay, boom, I've got two years of freeze-dried foods stored away in my bunker. Now I'm a prepper and I'm good. I'm done. I'm good. I'm covered. Well... There's a little more to it than that, isn't there? 
right? It's 418 here. Where are you at, Dutch? Holland, Denmark. Hey, Samantha. Oh my goodness gracious, uh, Samantha, that is a question that is above my station. Um, I can't answer that. However, if there is uh, possibly someone here in the chat that could answer the question from Samantha Huge. That would be uh, that would be OK. Yeah, I've never checked email by a phone. Never. Not once. I don't do anything from my phone. You know how to fry spam? That's a good thing. Check my spam uh, and uh, mushroom fried rice video. Seriously. Learn how to cook your preps, guys. Um, already, yes, the dollar store does have good buys, um, but up here, there aren't any sales ever, you know, they're a dollar, that's it, they don't go on sale one week to the other, that's it, they're just a dollar, and they're always there, so, you go there and you get them, right? Because when it's a dollar twenty nine or a dollar forty nine across the road at the grocery store and you want ten cans, you start thinking about savings, right? And what else you can do with that money that you saved? Yeah, Phoebe. Yep. Agreed. Yeah, it's kind of one of those arts that's never completely ever mastered. A hundred percent. Samantha, really? R roughly, where are you at? Like, I, I don't want your address. Well, Artie Franklin, happy Valentine's to you as well. Is it not tomorrow? Yeah, it doesn't matter. Yep, yeah, share with the love, guys. Hammer it up. Anybody got hurt for the happy Valentine's Day? Yeah, perhaps indeed, baby. You know what? It's getting pretty late, guys. It's like 4.30 here, and I, I need to, uh, like, hit the rack. You know what I'm saying? So I'm, uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and do that.
So I hope you guys all still, uh, stay well and safe. Don't forget to hold up your brother and sister. Keep prepping, man, because uncertain things ahead. Uncertain things ahead. One verse. One verse. One verse. All right, you going to make me change out my glasses? These are even busted, too, these glasses. All right, hang on a second. Ugh. Really? All right. Maybe one little one. These glasses suck. I'm just going to grab some random place, okay? Um, all right. You can figure out where it comes from. Now it came to pass on the third day that Esther put on her royal apron and stood in the inner court of the king's house. over against the king's house and the king sat upon his royal throne in the royal house over against the gate of the house and it was so when the king saw Esther the queen standing in the court that she obtained favor in his sight And the king held out to Esther the golden scepter that was in his hand. So Esther drew near and touched the top of the scepter, then said, uh, then said the king unto her, What wilt thou, Queen Esther? And what is thy request shall be even given thee to the half of the kingdom. And Esther answered, If it seems good unto the king, let the king and Haman uh, Come this day unto the banquet that I have prepared for him. Then the king said, Cause a man uh, to make haste that he may do as Esther hath said. So the king and Haman came to the banquet that Esther had prepared. And the king said unto Esther, at the banquet of wine, what is thy petition? And it shall be granted thee. And what is thy request granted thee? And what is thy request? Even to the half of the kingdom it shall be performed. Then answered Esther and said, My petition is my, uh, and my request is, If I have found favor, in the sight of the king, and if it please the king to grant my petition and to perform my request, let the king and Haman 
come to the banquet that I shall prepare for them and I will uh, do to uh, do tomorrow as the king hath said then when Hamas went forth uh, that day joyful and with a glad heart but was those pages are folded here I'm not gonna keep reading any more of that guys take it for what it's worth think about it look into it it's not hard to understand Be nice if somebody else could get a, a Bible and read for me. Maybe I'll just read in it by myself privately because that's a good place to do it, honestly. I don't mind doing it on camera, but I get more sense out of it when I do it by myself. So with that, guys, I'm going to go ahead and jump off. Y'all stay well and safe. Hold up your brother and your sister. All right. This is going to be North. Out for now.